screw it, I'll tell the Walls of Jericho story. Walls of Jericho is a canyon in northern Alabama, located right on the state line between Alabama and Tennessee, and is formed from a river that turns into a waterfall at the top of the canyon. It's a beautiful place, but you have to hike down into the canyon to then hike up to the waterfall. It's honestly a mild hike, going down isn't too hard, but with a lot of gear, and lazy females, it's pretty tiring. Before we hiked down, we decided to sleep near the cliff edge that drops off onto another cliff face onto another cliff face, etc. We find a great spot that already had a fire pit dug out and a lot of good wood still in the pit, like someone had collected way more firewood than they needed and just left it there. This spot is barely off the road, and it took probably 10 minutes walking there so we assumed they just packed up and left. It's not super pertinent but there was also a whole change of clothes, female, that we found in the fire pit. Anyway, spooky starts at night. We're sitting around the fire, drinking, smoking, talking, when we hear a scuffle in the little valley below us. Girls get scared when Josh starts talking about the wild animals and how this and that totally lives in these woods. Whatever man, we're people with weapons and tents, nothing will mess with us, and that night it was like everything was just messing with us. Sleeping arrangements leave Chris, previous story, sleeping in my tent, no homo, and we're just talking about what we would do if X showed up or we got attacked by Y then we'd do this when this really weird ass howl goes off in the valley below. It was like a mix between a person angrily crying out of frustration and a straight up wolf howl. That was spooky, but the quiet afterwards was deafening. No more little yips from foxes, no more bugs chirping, no hoots, just dead silence. We're waiting when it howls again, as an onomatopoeia it sounds like aioyagru. Chris just says, man that coyote sounds weird, but I've heard plenty of coyotes in my time and that did not sound like a simple coyote. When I tell him this, he just says fuck it, grabs the flashlight, and goes out into the darkness leaving me to fumble around for my knife when that same howl goes off again and I hear Chris yell what the hell is that. I rolled out the tent to see Chris standing at the edge of the cliff looking down into the valley with the light. As I'm walking up to him, he turns off the light and says, look down into the canyon and keep looking until I turn on the light. I did as he said, and when he turned on the light all you could see were dozens upon dozens sets of reflective eyes looking back at us. Now I know animals will watch you in the dark, and it's not uncommon to see this with spiders in tall grass, but this was a cliff face with a clearing beneath it. And dear god it got quiet. I'm saying so quiet we could hear one of the couples trying to bang at the other end of camp. So quiet that when the next howl went off we almost fell backwards off the cliff. See before the howl was down in the canyon but each one was getting progressively louder until the last one sounded like it was at the edge of camp. It was so loud that the rest of the group either woke up or stopped fucking and started to pour out asking who was yelling like a complete tart. I remember that question echoing in my head. Who the hell is yelling, not, what the hell is that? Everyone's gathered around the smoldering fire, asking WTF is going on. Josh's dumb ass says, it's probably a coyote. Like, mmhmmm, sure Josh. It's a coyote that sounds like a married man of 10 years found out his wife had been cheating on him for 11 years, gtfo here with that shit. Tell them about the progression, how the last sounded right behind our camp inside a field of chest high grass. Everyone starts getting freaked out when Chris swings the flashlight over towards the grass, just like before. The edge of the darkness is full of reflective eyes much larger than down the cliff except these are moving in and out of the light as if they were fading back to pop out at another spot. Everyone collectively WTF is that shit when Josh gets the fantastic idea to throw a rock into the brush. All the eyes go back and the howl returns, this time right on top of us, all around us, and we all instinctively got back to back brandishing our variety of weapons, mainly machetes, but everything just stops and the normal sounds of nature return. We immediately rearranged our camp so all tents were next to each other and as close as they could possibly be, 
but it didn't seem like anyone wanted to sleep. Everyone was sort of wired from the noise, but we all went back to our tents and tried to sleep. It wasn't until later that it got weird again. I had fallen asleep and had a dream about this creature attacking our camp, messing shit up generally, but I never saw the creature in my dream since it was always just barely out of sight. I get shaken awake by Chris whose face was inches away from mine, but before I could say anything he put his hand over my mouth and pointed to outside the tent and cupped his ears. I really wish he hadn't woken me up. Outside it sounded like something with heavy feet was dragging something else, all around the perimeter of our tents, sighing and wheezing. It would stop at each tent and make a light scratching noise on each one. For those who don't know, light scratching on a tent door is directly the same as knocking on someone's door. It's a sign that says hey, someone's out here. Open up. And whatever was out there was doing it on each tent, circling around and around, still making those wheezing noises and knocking on everyone's tent. Chris motions towards me, pantomiming a slash across the back part of my tent and I knew what he was trying to do, cut through the tent instead of fumbling with the zipper to surprise whatever was out there. Being in a situation like that really makes you feel like drastic action is your best bet, I don't know why, but we tore through the back of my tent like it was butter. This time, instead of a howl, there was a lot of wheezing like someone constantly out of breath. We both hit the two exits to camp, down the cliff and in towards the brush, and to this day I still don't believe the shit I saw and I only saw the back half. It was like a hunched over old lady, covered with tattered black cloth, one arm was out and looked like bone wrapped in paper skin. Behind it appeared to be either really dirty trash bags or some kind of tail it just dragged along behind it. We both started screaming as loud as we could, and something seemed to match our voices as the howling started up again, this time in the direction of the brush, right where the hag had been. Shit was piercing and long this time, extend the human aiao yig part more and that's pretty on point, forcing us to cover our ears. And then it was over. Everyone woke up again, scared again, and the decision to go home at dawn was quickly reached. We left that morning but returned the next day with more, stronger weapons and no females. Man, we thought the night had been scary, and they say hindsight is 20 twentieths, but when we returned to the same campsite we found the whole place destroyed. The fire pit had been dug out and thrown over the cliff, solid slab of concrete, all the firewood was splintered, and the burnt change of clothes was gone. The weirdest part was you could see where our tents had been, you could see all our footprints, but there was a long ass groove in the dirt that went around the tent clearing and led directly into the brush. Yeah, comp died so had to switch to phone. There's not much left, but there was one last thing that felt very scary movie tier and legit creepy so I'll share that. When we were talking to other campers, there was one couple who was in the same horse pasture as us. They had been down in the valley when we were camping at the cliff's edge, and they had heard the same shit we did, but the super creepy thing was what they said about the one night in between when we left and came back. That night they said they heard an animal limping around the edge of their camp, and while they said they didn't think much of it, there was one huge detail that stood out. They said it must have been really windy because branches kept bumping into the tent and scratching it. I'm a proud father of two boys. Oldest one recently turned 14. It's time I should take him hunting. We've been going out shooting almost every weekend. I'm sure he's ready for his first deer. He's excited. Go to bed early, wake up early. Grab a couple cups of coffee, let the boy have a soda. Get our gear, and out we go. Drive to a remote location I've scouted out before. Sunlight burning off the morning mist. God I love it out here. Tell him to stay close and mind his steps. Gotta be somewhat quiet. After about a quarter mile hike into the woods I hear something. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I stop and listen. The sound stops as well. Did you hear something dad? He's beaming thinking there's a buck close by. Not sure, sounded like something heavy. 
stay close. My words made him worry a little. But we're still focused on getting him that deer. Continue on our hike. Carefully surveying the surrounding. I hear it again. Crunch, crunch, crunch. It's matching our stride. Turn around quick enough to see someone dip behind a tree. I pull the rifle off my shoulder. Who's there? I'm assuming it might be another hunter, but I'm cautious. A man's head peeks out behind the tree and pulls back real quick. Just barely caught a glimpse of his scraggly hair. My boy responds. Who is it? Does someone else know your favorite spot dad? He's still timid at his age. Probably, might be a homeless man. There could be a camp around here with a few more of them. My boy is defiantly calmer than I am. Not knowing how dangerous a man or group of people can be when you're alone in the woods. I'm now more worried about my kid's safety than getting his first kill. We should head back. This made him upset, but he seemed to understand. Oh alright, I guess. He defiantly had some attitude though. Too much like his mom. We walked in loop back to the car to avoid any contact with the stranger. As we're nearing the road, I hear the crunching steps again. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Then, a loud thud. I give a quick peek over my shoulder not stopping to look. There's the head of the man I saw laying on the forest floor next to a tree. My heart sinks into my stomach. I rush my boy along quicker. Come on we have to get back to the car right now. I grabbed him by the back of his neck. Literally pushing him as fast as I can through the trees. Oh you're hurting me. I was in full panic mode. Didn't mean to hurt or startle him, but I didn't want him to turn around either. We make it to car and I quickly turn around. Rifle in my hand my eyes are darting around the tree lean. As if at any moment whatever killed that man and used his head like a puppet would jump out. I toss the keys to my boy. Unlock the car and start it. He's now visibly frightened at how I'm reacting. Car fires up, and I hop in as quickly as I humanly could. Put the car in reverse and I hear my boy jump. Dad. Dad. Look. It's the man. My eyes lift up to the tree lean. There's that man's head peeking out behind a tree. An arm extends out from behind it. He's waving. It's not natural movement. It's flopping around like somebody's holding it. Nope the hell out of there. Drive home doing 80 mph the entire way. I'm sweating with fear. My boy sounds like he's having a panic attack. It's alright son, we're long gone now. His eyes are wide open, glued to the road. I felt horrible for him. We made it home and I phoned the police. Told them everything. They searched the area and found nothing. Just some trash left behind by campers. No matter what they tell me. No matter how many years have passed. I'll never return to those woods again. Got this one saved from a thread from I can only assume 2015. The year is 2009. Just graduated from high school. It's September now and me and my three best friends were all accepted into the same school school year starts on the 18th so we decide to go on a week long road trip from the 5th to the 12th from our shitty little town in Oregon to San Francisco and back. Friends are Eddie, Trevor and Marco. Everything's going fine on the first day moods are high, Eddie's high, we're all having fun. What could possibly go wrong? Well, announce reading this, here's what went wrong everything. Dramatic as that is, it's true. It started on day two when we were a little over halfway to SF. We stopped through a small town called Eureka to have lunch. After that we continued driving, and Trevor noticed Marco was looking a little ill. He said it was fine though, so we continued our drive. The trip was supposed to be a 13-hour drive spread over two days, but we never made it to SF. I started to get an unsettling feeling in my stomach when the sun was starting to set and we still weren't in SF. In fact, we weren't even close. 
We did stop earlier in the day to take a few photos of the ocean, but it didn't take that long. Eddie was the one in control of the will now and heaved a heavy sigh of relief when a sign finally read entering Santa Rosa. Great, we were almost there. Another four hours passed and we still weren't in SF. We were on the correct highway, going in the correct direction, but we weren't getting anywhere. What's more, looking back on it, I hadn't seen a single car on the highway after 7 p.m. Not a single one. We'd seen them in the towns, but not with us. It was 1 a.m. when we officially were freaking out. We stopped at this little hotel to stay in and asked where we were. Uh, this is Lakeport. Lakeport? Before we could start yelling at Eddie for messing up, Trevor was suddenly met with the weight of Marco collapsing on him, which wasn't much, considering Marco was a 5 feet 6 inches 102 pounds semi-anorexic guy. We contemplated calling 911 but he muttered I'm fine, just sleepy, and then thoroughly passed out. It was about 3 a.m. when I heard absolutely awful noises coming from our room's bathroom. Like a cat being strangled. I remembered Marco looking ill and assumed he was just puking from food poisoning, but being the person I am I had to go give him comfort. I opened the door, and nothing. Marco wasn't there, the light was on, but all there was was blood. Why was there blood on the floor? Was Marco alright? Am I hallucinating? Well, turns out, I wasn't, but I made the grave mistake of assuming I was and going back to sleep. Was awakened by Eddie three hours later, asking why there was blood on the bathroom floor and where the hell Marco was. We all got up and asked the receptionist if he'd seen him, but to no avail. Panic was rising as fast as Eddie's blood pressure was. We called the cops and they said they'd send someone over, but no one ever came. We called again an hour later, and nothing. So, we went back to sleep. Marco was there in the morning, looking like shit but he was alive and that's what mattered. But something was, off. He was crying into Trevor's shoulder, talking about the Anga that tried to struggle snuggle and murder him. He claimed he was taken suddenly after getting up to go to the bathroom. One could have easily assumed he was just on drugs, but Marco was straight edge to the T. He was a pranker though, but even more than that, he wasn't lying. We could tell by the fear in his eyes. It may sound kind of gay but when he clung tightly to Trevor all that day, physically holding his hand while looking like an abandoned kitten, we knew something had happened. After double checking that yes, we were going in the right direction, we set off for SF and told Marco to forget his worries, he couldn't. He kept his eyes closed the entire time because he was terrified of looking at the forest. An hour in and he suddenly opened the car door while the car was in motion to puke out black and red bile. And it was a lot. More than what I thought could fit in that tiny body of his. An hour after that, we read a sign that said Saratoga Springs. Eddie sighed and handed the will over to me. We turned the car around. Another hour and the sign read Upper Lake. We were getting increasingly frustrated. Marco was shivering violently in the back seat with his head rested on Trevor's lap. Every 10 minutes or so he would vomit into one of the many plastic bags kept there. Another hour, another headache. Saratoga Springs was the sign, and so this time we decided to not turn around. Another hour, Upper Lake. No matter what direction we drove in, we were stuck between these two towns. And going by the Google Maps calculations of today, this shouldn't have taken us an hour to drive that road. For reference, it should have taken us six minutes. Six. Minutes. Marco was looking increasingly worse as we drove, and it all came crashing down when he suddenly demanded I pull over, and so I did. Marco threw himself at the ground and vomited up what seemed to be an endless stream of blood. Then came pieces of meat. Flesh. And then came nothing. We called 911. Nobody came. We called over and over. Someone finally picked up. Nobody came. 
Marco began bleeding from his fingernails, eyeballs, nose, ears, and belly button. He was unresponsive so Trevor tried CPR. It didn't work. The smell was rancid. Nobody came. No cars were around. Marco died that day. We watched in tears as the last breath exited his lungs. We piled him into the car and drove to Upper Lake. An autopsy was performed and we told his parents. We went back home the next day, all convinced the road would lead us to Saratoga Springs. It didn't. There were cars on the road. We were making proper time. We arrived home. Greater than four years later and his grave was dug up by an unidentified person slash animal. His skull was found on the grounds of Upper Lake Elementary School, but the rest of his body wasn't. A triangle had been carved into it. I had to go to SF this year for a job opportunity. Trevor and Eddie went with me. We never stopped in that diner, never looked back, never looked at the street signs. We got there when we prayed we would. I don't remember Eddie having heterochromia. I don't recall Trevor's voice sounding that way. All I know is that when I saw fresh blood of a dead doe on the side of the road, I screamed for an hour straight. End. Be me. Sometimes I feel like I'm being watched when sleeping. Sometimes there are three knocks at the door in the middle of night. Always ignore. Be last night. Turn off lights to go to sleep. Feeling of being watched. Tell myself it's not real, just spooks. Feel warm breeze on my face. Very warm, weird warm. Feels like someone is breathing directly at my face. Throw blankets off, probably just a warm breeze, blames the fan. Falls sleep. What the hell does a warm breeze mean? I have a feeling there's some kid's ghost living here and that I likes to cuddle when sleeping but I'm afraid is something scarier. When first reading up on the topic, I only knew of sleep paralysis, but not all hypnagogic experiences leave you paralyzed as I would find out. I had a curious and very pleasant one a year or so ago. Wake up in bed and sit up. Dim, warm, yellow light spreads from middle of room. Greater than three transparent humanoid forms appear to be the source of the light. They speak to me, but not in a language I understand. Instead I feel their message to me. They wish the best for me, and will continue to watch over me, and hope that I will do good in life. This lasts, I believe, for 10 or AO minutes, but I have no real way of knowing. They fade out, the light dims and I am left with a feeling of pure bliss. I just sit there for 20 minutes or so before I get up for a glass of water. Lay down again and sleep like a baby. The feeling lasted for a few days, and long after, just remembering the feeling would be enough to partly bring it back. I'm not much of a believer in the paranormal, although always curious. I won't deny how nice an experience it was though. My first experience was sleep paralysis, and to this day, I only recall these two instances hypnagogic experiences, although I am an active dreamer. Many false awakenings and dreams within dreams though. I was already aware of the SP phenomenon, so I recognized it immediately when it happened, and might better have been able to appreciate it as such. Be me. Wake up in bed, can't move body. Only eyes. My room is lit up, but no lamps on. Shadowy figures stand above me, and like the light with no source, I hear sounds coming from nowhere. I have a case of needles and pins, but the grey translucent figures do not appear malevolent. After a while the light fades, and as my room is dark once more, I wake up. My mother enters my room, asking why the light is on at this time. I am as confused as her as I didn't turn it on. Proceed to tell about sleep paralysis. I wake up in my bed, the light is off. To ND year uni, about 10 years ago. Sleep was super shitty, get sleep paralysis a lot. Started getting dreams within dreams. Boring stuff, wake up, get dressed, walk to uni. Wake up again. Go knock on flatmate's door, tell him how weird it was. 
Wake up again. This happens about six to seven times. Feel like losing mind, no idea if truly awake or not, start pinching self but just feels rubbery. Wake up again, except this time it's horrible sleep paralysis. Can't open eyes, can hardly breathe, the weight of even my eyelids feels like deep sea pressure. All can hear is a deep breathing. Not this again. GIF. Use all energy to turn on side so doesn't feel like my own chest is pressing me down. Noise gets louder. Manage to force eyes open slightly, cannot see anything other than floor in between wall and bed. Suddenly, a piece of what looks like a white fabric, almost like a ribbon or something, floats into eyesight. What is happening? WEBM. Overcome with the most acute sense of dread slash fear ever felt. Eardrums feel like going to burst, try to get out of bed but body is noping out. White fabric touches face and feels as real as anything. Every part of body and mind is screaming to force myself out of this shitty sleep paralysis slash hallucination shit. Exhaust all force to turn head towards bed and try and sit up. Hit with a huge smell kinda like eggs and begin screaming uncontrollably. Windows has shut down. PNG. Come round to flat mate shaking me, white as a sheet, shouting if I'm okay. Was apparently making the most horrific shrieking sounds like he's never heard, found me on the floor of my room thrashing uncontrollably like I was having a fit or something. To this day have no idea what I saw. Have no memory other than that eerie white fabric then waking up when tried to sit up. It's never happened again but was easily the scariest moment of my life, I can't really put into words the primal sense of fear I felt. In the building above, there was a storage area in the loft, 15 foot up estimate, you could only get to via a ladder we kept outside. One Saturday, like most Saturdays, we had a wedding, some dumbass boot 19 year old marine most likely, they almost always were. Anyways, service is over, everyone is in the next building over for the reception except me, the priest, and the bride, I was the facility manager, waiting for them to GTFO so I could lock up, when they asked me to sign as a witness. Just about then we heard a baby crying. In a building I just cleared. Directly above our heads. The priest and the bride went white as a sheet. I probably did too. Priest, you hear that too? Me, nope. Let's GTFO. Bride, yeah, it's a baby. Me, no, it's not. Let's get out. Priest, we have to check on it. Me, no, I have to check on it. But you just volunteered to hold the ladder for me. I go out back bring in the ladder while the priest watches the only way in or out of the loft, a hole in the wall 15 feet up and the crying stops as I lean the ladder up on the way. I climb up, and. Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Just our plastic nativity scene storage, minus the camel. Baby Jesus was right there. I covered it up with a sheet and locked up. I didn't like working there. Weird shit was the regular thing out there. There were two buildings the actual chapel and the annex building next door, separated by ten of grass. I'd be going around closing up after an evening Buddhist or Jewish service and know for a fact that everyone had left, being certain that no one else was there, and I'd find lights on that I had turned off five minutes before. I'd hear talking in the same hallway almost every night I worked, and when you round the corner there was nobody. The talkers always bothered me because they were loud until you came into view. They they'd whisper. You could still hear them and it was the only experience that everyone who worked there consistently reported. Especially when in the chapel, I'd be locking up the back hallway and hear loud conversations from the balcony, then you'd come out and hear whispers in the hall you just locked. I left there, got attached to a marine unit out of 1st Marine Division and deployed with them to Okinawa, Japan, and Mount Fuji to Camp Fuji a USMC base on the slopes in Gotemba, Japan. Creepy shit in the woods thread. Creepy shit in the woods thread. Be about four years ago, I had just gotten my license. Drive up to barn party in the mountains. It's about 11 at night, I'd been drinking when my friends talk about trying to find the old Miller cabin. It's this old cabin where some hermit lived, apparently he would steal people's pets and sacrifice them to Satan. I decide to go. I grab my knife and what remains of the vodka and skip along into the woods. We walk for about 30 minutes before we realize how lost we are. That's what we get for letting my drunk friend Brian lead us. We start to retrace our steps when a rabbit bursts out from the undergrowth. B 
Being the manly gentleman I am I try to distract what I though was a serial rapist by running away. Everyone had split off and I was with my friends Brian, Steve, and Cam, along with my ex Claire and her friend Dana. We wander through the woods hearing people yelling, but the yells are coming from every direction. Everyone ran as soon as the serial rapist rabbit jumped out, we all got split up. We head towards a big hill so we can at least get our bearings when we stumble upon the creepiest thing I have ever seen. A goddamn shrine to Aaron Carter. He was little brother of a backstreet boy, and was the equivalent of Justin Bieber before when he was just a bundle of sticks. I shit you not, there are pictures of him nailed to the trees, and not just posters, but like pictures taken during his daily life, like him drinking coffee or driving a car. The pics ranged from his childhood as a star to his present status as a burnout. There must have been at least 40 pics and some were too weathered to make out. We begin to slowly back away until I bump into something. There is an altar of some sort, complete with halfway burnt candles, and a picture of him smeared with what looked like blood. All of this was seen from the light of Claire's keychain light, so it may have been mud or shit. Brian rips down a photo of AC to show everyone. We nope the hell out of there and literally run into another group. They were on top of the hill and had seen where the fire was burning and were heading that way. We make it back to the party and tell everyone. Brian leads an expedition to wreck the shrine. I'm decide to chill and get shit faced, this was before I discovered I had a set of balls, and as such I was fine not going along. The rest is all from Brian and his brother Chad. They said they went back out looking for the shrine with 12 other people, they were only 100 yards away when they heard someone scream from the direction of the church of Aaron Carter. Everyone but Brian, Chad, and two others stay back while they investigate. They claim they saw someone standing in the clearing rampaging around and staring at the now Aaron carter tree. Suddenly they stopped and stared in the direction of Brian. The person, Brian said it looked like a girl, screams and starts running after them, so they book it back to safety. After that we all kind of went our separate ways back home. We kind of forgot about it but a few people looked at the area on Google, and it looks like that area was property of a Baptist church, so we figure it was just an overly insane Aaron Carter fan who went to that church. Please feel free to share your creepy shit in the woods stories, I will bump for a little bit with some classics. Not really a woods story, but a creepy one nonetheless. Be me, last year, 19. Go on road trip with friends into French country, I'm a Canadian maritimer. Get to campsite about 11.30 pm, June. Try to set up tents, only me and other friend know how to. Entire time, feel weird about the spot, very thick feeling of dread. At 2 am we go out to the beach to find shells, because we're smart like that. Going on, acting like deeply challenged individuals, get shells go back to campsite. Feel like something is very off, but I can't figure it out, everyone is as normal. Feel like we were followed in the dark. Don't sleep at all, lay there awake from 2 to 7 all the while hearing the normal stuff you do while in the woods. I think around 4 am, I hear something outside the tent, sounds human. Make weird noise. I don't know I was very overtired, to try and scare it off, seemed to have worked. Next day, don't tell anyone about it, go back to beach, see our footprints, shoes, and then bare footprints along with ours. They brush it off, we go into the dunes, there was a biohazard sign for blue green algae but whatever, we were feeling edgy. Find creepy as shit little campsite, a makeshift shelter and what clunked my bunkers the most were the footprints. Seven toed footprints leading from the dunes all the way into the woods that come out to our campsite. Goddamn Dunemon. Going to post one I've posted here before and then one I'm pretty sure I haven't. Both 100% real. I used to live outside of a small town about an hour north of where I live now. I spent all of the childhood I can remember living there and moved here sometime in 2009 or 2010, can't recall pick related, my old property. Note the length of the driveway relative to the length of the grey rectangle which is the roof of my old house. It's important. This happened not long before we moved, in 2009 or so. 
I was around 17. So it's the night before trash is being picked up and typically I've been a lazy blam, all day and haven't put the trash cans on the road yet, and my mom is getting pissy about it so I stop what I'm doing and go to get the trash cans in the garage to walk them down our driveway, which is about one tenth of a mile long or perhaps longer. I pull them to the end of the road, watching the stars the whole time because I like astronomy and it was a particularly clear night, and I'm deep in the woods, as you can tell by the pic, so no lights to mess up the view of the stars. It was also very quiet, although this wasn't unnerving because it was like 10 or 11 pm on a school night, and you can't hear much from my house anyway due to its isolation. The one or two houses you can see from the end of my driveway are dark and silent. So I put the trash cans in the spot they go and start to walk back down our driveway still watching the stars. I get about halfway down the pothole filled road when I suddenly feel an ice cold chill run from my tailbone all the way up to my lower brain and immediately my head goes to the back tree line, that's the one to the far left in the picture, the one with infinite forest behind it. Scan, scan, scan. Nothing there, all the way down the length of our property. I then go to the tree line on the north side, see picture. Scan, scan, holy shit. I duck down into the nearest deep pothole because maybe it hasn't seen me yet, right? And I stare at it. What's about 100 yards from me is a figure about 7 feet tall, humanoid shape, with a bluish glow but only enough to be visible, that is, it wasn't bright. The light blue around its body is transparent, it was almost like a thick turquoise haze. Except for its head area where what seemed almost like a brain was glowing a deep dark blue, and wasn't transparent at all. I watched it silently for about 30 seconds. It didn't move, it didn't make a sound. It just watched me back. I was sort of afraid of what would happen if I took off running down the road to try to make it back to my house, although I never felt like whatever it was was there to hurt me. After 30 seconds, it just sort of fades back into the woods without turning, or moving any body parts. It just slides backwards. But the fun isn't over yet. After waiting about 10 seconds, I dashed down the road as fast as I could, burst through the garage door and grabbed the flashlight we kept over our fridge. I parkour across the house as mom is panicking behind me and get to the front door, leading out onto a porch which you can only barely see the area of in the pick, east side of house, runs the whole length of it. I run down to the end of the porch closest to where the thing was and shine the flashlight into the woods. Mom has made it to the door and is about to have a heart attack asking me what's wrong. I shush her and we both sit and listen and watch for a while. After maybe 20 to 30 seconds, the ice cold chill returns, runs up my spine to my head. I'm desperately scanning the tree line to get another look at this thing. Then curiosity inexplicably turns to fear as a rumbling starts in what seems like the back of my head. Almost like an earthquake or a rock slide or something. Lasted for about 10 seconds. And I suddenly felt like whatever it was was no longer interested in mutual study. I move back to the door and the cold and rumbling subside. After waiting a while longer, at the door, not the end of the porch, I go back inside and explain to mom. I'm not sure whether or not my mom felt the cold or heard anything that night, but she'll defend my story if you ask her, because she was so convinced by how real it felt at the time. She knew for a fact I wasn't faking shit. I still have no idea what that was. About a year before the last story, I was determined to beat out my family in our hunting championship that runs throughout hunting season. I had won it once but not for a while and so people were starting to make fun of me for my dry streak. Basically you get points with a value based on what you bring in. It became a big topic of smack talking over the years. I used to go back deep into those woods behind my house to the west, see pick from last post if you must, and sometimes walk for a long, long time to get to wherever I had decided to set up for the day. This was perhaps my 25th or 30th hunting trip of the season, and it was coming to an end so I was pretty much accepting defeat at this point. On this particular morning I woke up earlier than usual, 
perhaps around 4 am or earlier. C. When you're still hunting deer, you want to get to your spot before the deer wake up and catch them out on their morning stroll. This generally happens moments before the official time of sunrise. At about 30 minutes before sunrise is when the woods begin to wake up, you start to hear the squirrels chatter and the chickadees chirp. 4 am is obviously much earlier than this time, so trekking through the woods so early can be a very unnerving experience, not only for the paranormal paranoid but just because the forest has been known to hide mountain lions, black bears, and jaguars, and even a few skunks, had a pretty scary encounter with one of those earlier the same year but that's not relevant. I had maneuvered my way to my tree stand and scurried up quickly, always feel uncomfortable standing still in the middle of the pitch black woods, and hung my bow on the stand as I sat down. I was there for about 15 or 30 minutes when, in the direction of the thick woods further behind my house, a noise scared me to death. It was about a mile away, perhaps. I estimated it came from an entirely uninhabited area meaning the odds it was actually a dog are low. Odds were lower still because of the sound itself. What came out of the woods was a prolonged shriek unlike anything I had ever heard in my 16 years of living in those woods. The best way to describe it is as a mix of a large dog in great pain and Chobux's scream. Now, as I said, I'm very familiar with the woods, and I know what sounds animals make. I've seen pretty much all of them face to face and heard the rest multiple times. Hell, I know them well enough to use a deer call, and I know the difference between the sound of a male wanting to fight, a male wanting to mate, a female wanting to mate, a female in distress, and a fawn. What came from the deep woods was not a noise I had ever heard before, and it wasn't made by any creature I was familiar with. I knocked an arrow and clipped my release to the bowstring and waited. The ungodly shrieks continued for at least five minutes, long before anything in the woods was supposed to be awake. Eventually they stopped, the hunt was unsuccessful, and I never told anyone about the noise I heard in the woods. So around 2011 it was my senior year of high school, and we decided to throw a kick-ass Christmas party at my buddy Frank's house. We got enough alcohol to make Charlie Sheen blush, and invited everyone we could. Now the appeal of Frank's house is that he lives about 5 miles away from anyone else in the middle of the woods in this amazing cabin, his dad created some sort of more efficient solar powered lantern. I showed up to set shit up around 6 pm, the news said that there would be a chance of snow flurries that evening, we weren't too worried, and nobody said they planned on cancelling so we went along setting everything up. Sometime around 7 a couple close friends showed up, including Maggie, this girl I was talking to at the time, I helped them get some cases of beer out of the back of a truck when I got a strange feeling. Everything was really quiet, granted it was late fall slash early winter so not many animals were out, but it was still a strange feeling. I looked around and saw a large shadow move in the woods, I didn't get a good look, but I was pretty freaked. About 20 seconds later the feeling of dread left and I shrugged everything off and took the booze back into the house. The party was picking up around 10 and I was starting to feel a bit buzzed. We had the music pumping and everything, but there was a weird feeling going around, some people said they felt weird walking up Frank's driveway, you can only park 5 cars in his driveway, everyone else had to park in front of the horse stables at the bottom of a hill and walk about 1 fourth of a mile. Noon really paid much attention after a few drinks though, so it didn't ruin the party. I was sitting in the hot hub talking to Maggie, African American gentleman had a hot hub in his basement in a room surrounded by windows, when I saw snow starting to fall fairly heavily, there was already a fine dusting of snow on the ground, and a few sober people started thinking if it was time to head out. I didn't think much of it, I planned on getting hammered and staying the night anyways, so I leaned back and popped open another Sam Adams. At 10.45 the power cut off, this obviously put quite the damper on the party, however Frank had gas fireplaces for heat and light, some people left, but there must have been around 30 people still partying. The bad news was that the hot tub didn't hot tub when the power was off, so I climbed out. 
No sooner had my feet hit the ground, when I saw this figure through one of the windows, the solar lamp still worked and cast a bit of light around the house, it moved through the snow like a hunched over man but it had a strange loping walk, something like an ostrich. It suddenly stopped and looked at me through the window and I swear I could make out what looked like teeth before the thing turned away and bounded off on four legs. I looked over at Maggie but she was too busy trying giggling and trying to get her friend Lindsay out of the tub. I shook it off as nothing more than a bear that still hadn't gone in for hibernation, and downed my newly opened beer. The party was still going pretty strong upstairs despite the lack of music, but Frank wasn't satisfied. He asked me and our friend Jonah to help him get the backup generator outside up and running. I told him to let me grab another beer to help kill the stupid brain cells so I would be more use. I won't lie I was still a bit freaked out about the large thing I had seen, but without the generator there was no music, and without music I couldn't dance with my wiener pressed against Maggie's booty. So we set out for his dad's shed where the generator was, it was partially solar partially gas powered, and as such needed to be turned on manually. The shed was about 50 yards away from the house so that it could provide heating to the horse stables, about halfway there, this fresh chill came over me. It wasn't the wind or the cold or the snow, because the alcohol was making me feel warm until then, no this cold started at the base of my neck and worked its way down my spine. I looked around with the flashlight and I could swear I saw a set of eyes glowing near a bush next to the house. Jonah was looking around too, and seemed just as scared as I was, but Frank trudged on, probably too drunk to notice anything out of the ordinary. We were right next to the shed when I heard a sound that makes me get goosebumps thinking about it today, it sounded much like a rabbit screaming, but deeper, and with more of an edge to it if you know what I mean. It sounded like it came from our right side, the house was behind us, to our left was a downward sloping hill leading to the fenced in horse area, in front of us was the shed with trees behind it curving right and running parallel to the house and driveway. By the time I unfroze, Frank grabbed me and started dragging me towards the house. We made it up the steps, his house had a first level, with two floors above it, and a basement that was below ground facing the road, but above ground in the back, and back into the party. No one had heard the sound other than a couple making out on the porch, someone had plugged an iPod into a boombox so there was music bumping, and that combined with people talking and the massive amounts of alcohol had resulted in ignorance of the scream from outside. Our entrance however was not ignored, someone turned the music down and we explained what happened, the couple on the porch backed us up. Everyone just kind of blew it off, they hadn't heard the demon roar, so they weren't freaked out at all. It was around this time that I realized that Jonah was not in the house, I spun around and looked for him but I couldn't see him. I asked Frank, and he said he though he was right behind us. This asshole Colby, Maggie's ex, started making fun of us saying we were just afraid of the dark, or that we were too stupid to turn on the generator. Before I had a chance to defend myself, another scream pierced the night, the same demonic screech we heard outside this time coming from behind us towards the shed. This time we all heard it. A bunch of people turned white, and some bitch screamed, suddenly it was mass chaos, people were running everywhere, some upstairs, some out the front door. I just kind of stayed in the kitchen and tried to get my head together, but Mr. Sam Adams and his partner Admiral Nelson, we were young and it was cheap rum, made it pretty hard. The next five minutes seemed like an hour, we heard a car start, then a few more, but some people who ran outside streamed back into the house. Some cunt's Prius was stuck in the driveway and couldn't go up the hill, and someone else's truck got stuck in the grass a bit ahead of her, and the driveway was blocked, the other side had a creek running through it. After a few minutes another scream erupted sounding close by. Again everyone freaked, but this time they ran upstairs, and I followed. We congregated in the main room on the second floor which had a pool table, pinball machine, and other cool shit. There were around 15 people in the house at this time, but over the next few minutes about 10 more joined us, some people elected to stay in their cars and try to get out, but the snow was getting deep, 
and the driveway hadn't been salted. It was Derek a football teammate of mine who finally got everyone to shut up. We started trying to figure out what was making the sound, we all thought it was a rabbit that was hurt, or maybe a coyote, but we all were thinking that it was something else, something, beastly. I brought up the issue of Jonah, we had no idea where he was and he could be hurt and freezing. Derek and Frank elected to go with me to find him, I never volunteered but as soon as Maggie said it was too dangerous and we shouldn't go, I knew I had to. Colby said he would go with us, probably for the same reason as me, and his friend Blake agreed to go also. Frank led the four of us across the hall to his dad's man cave and handed us some gear. He handed me a Remington 798, I think, it was a Remington hunting rifle I know that and it shot .30, Colby a Mossberg shotgun of some sort, Derek the same shotgun, and he and Blake each had pistols. Looking back, it was a bad idea us drunk, scared, idiots guns, but it made sense in the moment. We made our way off his back porch and towards the shack, Frank led the way with the shotgun, Colby and I were right behind him, Blake was halfway up Colby's ass and Derek was guarding our rear. Frank led us up to the shed and called out softly for Jonah, we didn't hear anything so we started around to the other side of the shed. We heard a rustling to our right and before I knew what happened, Blake had unloaded his goddamn pistol. I immediately flipped my ever-loving shit and hit him in the face and gut. Colby grabbed me and told me to stop but even he looked pissed. Frank grabbed Blake's pistol, made sure it was emptied and on safety and put it in his waistband, Blake was pissed we took his gun but damn it he could have shot Jonah if it had been him. Another scream ripped across the darkness, this time coming from the direction of the house. We started moving back around the shed, but we didn't see anything once we had the house in sight. Blake started walking back towards the house when we heard a new noise. It sounded like someone crying. The sobbing was coming from the stables, and we began making our way down the hill carefully. Suddenly the crying changed to a cackling laugh, something almost like a cute giggle, but like it was coming from a dog or a bear. I have never been so unnerved, not even the first time I heard the scream. I clutched the rifle so hard my hands started to hurt, but made my way down the hill, closer to the stables, closer to the laugh. It was at the bottom of the hill, about 20 yards from the stable, that I almost lost my courage. This smell erupted in my nostrils, something similar to the time a raccoon died in the locker room at school over the weekend in the middle of August. Colby immediately doubled over and puked his brains out, I won't lie I got a smug feeling of satisfaction from it. In between wretches from Colby, I heard the sobbing again. I pointed it out to Frank, but his will had finally broken. He told me to go check it out, he would make sure whatever was out there didn't sneak up behind me. I pleaded with Derek to come with me, he finally conceded, and followed me. The way the stable is set out, there are four gates on each side for the horses to come in along with a main door that goes in between each row for the handler to feed them and shit like that. I made my way towards the main door, but once I got there it was already open. I shined my light inside, the only thing I could see was Jonah lying in the middle of the hallway between the stable's spread eagle, his head turned to the side. That was when I noticed movement to my left. Derek yelled, I probably did too I don't remember I turned towards the movement, and my light caught an arm covered in fur and snow, and what I am guessing is a leg. I didn't think I just pulled the trigger not even aiming. The boom brought me back to reality, I missed whatever that thing was, and immediately turned to run. However I was still half drunk and it was snowing, so I slipped and fell hard on my side. I heard something grunt and run towards me, but whatever it was leaped over me and chased after Derek. The thing screamed the scream of Satan, and hit Derek hard, now Derek is an all-conference linebacker, he went on to sit on the bench at UNC Chapel Hill, but he was a big motherfucker, this thing made him look small, it hit him and his feet left the ground. I gathered myself up and slid the bolt on my rifle back, and forward, chambering another round. 
the behemoth looked at me as the clack of the bolt resonated through the quiet snow-covered valley. This is the part of the story where Derek says I stood tall and shot the bastard twice center of mass and hit it with the butt of my rifle chasing it away, no problem. I let him tell that story, because it has gotten me laid, however he was knocked out, Blake was halfway up the hill, and Frank and Colby were too drunk and tired to move from the other side of the stable. In reality, my finger slipped on the trigger and I hit the beast in what would be the shoulder of a human, I am not familiar with beastology, but I am going to presume this is also its shoulder. The damn thing stopped and released that fucking cackle we heard earlier. It moved into the light and I got my only good look at it, however short, and panic slash drunk blinded that look was. It literally leaped the eight or so yards between me and it, however I threw myself at the ground and the damn thing soared over me. I heard it skid in the snow and I turned around. I slid the bolt again and put another round, however I didn't even get a chance to aim, this time the thing swept its, pop, and hit me in the side. All air left my lungs, and I just kind of lay there, I could smell the putrid stench radiating above me to the right. I sensed it reaching towards me, but I can't be sure, since I was about to pass out. I don't remember how, but I lifted the gun and just shot, yet another lucky hit, I don't know where it hit, but I heard the damn scream. I must have been lying there for a few minutes, because by the time Derek and Frank reached me I had a bit of snow covering me. They helped me up, Colby stood to the side, trying to look tough and proud despite puking earlier. My sides were hurt, and I would later find I had a few bruised ribs, Derek had quite the bump on his head and a concussion but he was fine. We slowly made our way back to the stable, to help Jonah. What I saw in the barn scars me, we usually leave this part out of the story, but I will tell you fellow slash x slash fills because I know you will want to know. Jonah was lying in the center of the aisle, his leg was turned in an awkward direction, he was knocked out, and covered in blood, and there was a bone lying next to him, and another next to it, and another leading into a stall. There we found the remains of a horse, ripped almost in half, blood lining the stall, bones thrown around, the other horses were silent, Frank was in tears as he ran to each stall. Of the eight horses I the stable, one had been eaten completely, another was the one we found next to Jonah, two more had died with no markings, possibly of fright or shock or whatever. We decided to get Jonah and get the hell out of there, back to the house. Colby and Frank lifted him between them as Derek and I led the way back. We arrived at the house, everyone was deathly quiet, fear had sobered us all up. The silence was broken as everyone asked us what was up. None of us could answer until Derek told the story. Someone grabbed a towel to clean us up, it was only then that I saw the filth on the side of my body the beast had hit, Derek was also covered, and Frank grabbed some clothes and we changed Jonah out of the blood-soaked rags he was wearing. Some people had called emergency services as soon as Blake went crazy with the gun, but we were quite a ways out, and the storm was insane, no one was prepared, it wasn't until 2 that afternoon that the police and ambulance showed up. The rest of the night slash morning, it was about 1 by the time we came back, and near 2 by the time we were cleaned and the story was told, was a blur, Blake never came back to the cabin apparently, but no one had the balls to go back out there, not even his girlfriend or Colby told us to. I drank a bit to numb my ribs, and also to gain some fucking courage. We heard sounds in the woods by the cabin all night, but no more screams. It was around 5 in the morning when Jonah awoke. He was shaking and jittery but he told us his story, told in the next post. After the scream by the shed, Jonah ran for the stable, it was the closest shelter he could see, and he was panicked, he thought Frank and I were right behind him, though we had made our way to the house. Halfway down the hill he slipped, breaking his leg. He had been knocked out in the fall, but was awakened, by something dragging him. He only got a few glimpses, but said it looked like Satan bred a gorilla though he said he saw a snout like a horse or dog, and its feet seemed too small for its body, and its ears went straight up from its head. 
The thing dragged him into the barn, the horses went nuts, and started kicking and neighing. But the beast roared and they fell silent. The thing leapt over the stall door and slaughtered a horse, the others merely kept as far away as possible. Jonah lay in the corner of the stable crying, every now and then he said the monster would look at him while eating, he couldn't really see much, the thing wouldn't really stay in direct light, and it would cry also, but much throatier and deeper however over the next few minutes it was almost a perfect imitation. Every now and then it would throw a bone at Jonah, and when it hit, the thing would do the cackle, each time sounding less like a demon and more like a girl. After it finished the first horse it went to the second and killed it as well, this time though it kept throwing the meat over to Jonah, but Jonah was freaking out, he heard gunshots and tried to crawl away but the damn thing jumped at him, and the next thing he remembers, is waking up on the couch. Hopefully I will finish in the next post. Everything about Jonah's story gives me chills, especially the part about it crying and laughing. We waited in the house, others streamed in throughout the morning as they abandoned their cars. It wasn't until 11 am that Blake finally showed up. He was literally blue, and shivering, he would be treated for hypothermia I think, but I didn't keep up with him much after that night. He wouldn't tell us what happened, but he kept saying it's still here or it talks like me or it knows my name I do know he was treated in a mental hospital, Colby said he went nuts, and is afraid of trees. The police showed up around too they were skeptical of our story, and accused us of doing drugs, however when we showed them the horses, they believed us partially. They ruled it out as a bear, and while we got a slap on the wrist for underage drinking, no one was charged. Derek, Jonah, Frank, Colby, Blake, and I were taken to the hospital. We talked to some forest rangers and a few other people, and while the rangers turned pale at our descriptions they stuttered out that it was probably a bear and then they left. I still don't know what was out there, it took me almost a year to work up the courage to go into the woods, but since then I have taken to hiking, camping, and a bit of urban exploration, I mean after that night, there can't be anything scarier than that right? That was pretty creepy. Got any images that could describe the thing you saw? I can find an image later of what it looked like but for now, I can give you an idea. It was around 7 to 8 feet tall. Black slash dark brown fur, could be wrong, I only really saw it in the dark. Very long arms like standing up its hands almost touched the ground. It had shortish legs, and Jonah describes its feet as too small for its body. It looked hunched over for the most part, so I couldn't get an outline of its head, but Jonah says it was something like a horse or dog snout. Jonah also said it had long ears on the top of its head, Frank says they were horns like the devil. Derek says it had a small tail like a bobcat or a rabbit but he isn't sure. B15 live in rural Oklahoma. Neighborhood is backed up to a 700 to 800 acre strip of dense woods. Dad always tells me that there's a witch that lived in the woods when it was still Indian territory. Go jogging every night at 9.30. I round the corner that goes past the a clearing next to the woods. Don't be a little baby just ignore it like it isn't there don't even look at the trees. Wind howling off the trees. Hear a scream far off in the distance. Run like a distinguished African gentleman. Eel, sounds like a young girl. Oh shit what do I do? Turn around and look at the woods. I don't see shit. Me is anyone in there? Are you okay? No response. Coyotes start yipping out of nowhere. Sprint the remaining half mile to my house. Never speak of it to anyone. When I was a kid 15 to 16 years old I swear I could hear music playing in a woods. Going with a friend to forest. Walking, exploring, went really far. He's gone other way and said we'll meet at the crossroads of old forest path that leads on our way home. Suddenly I feel a bit weird. Not in a bad way, like some state of bliss almost, in a moment. I look at the tree, 
a couple of branches were kinda weirdly put together to form something that almost looked like an arch, gateway, or something. Staring at it for a while. I heard music, soft and quiet coming from somewhere. I did my best to find any possible source, but we were really far and it wasn't playing anywhere else but close to me, like here but really quiet. Ten minutes passed like seconds, friend comes at that space where I stood, it was close to space we were supposed to meet. Music still playing quietly, he couldn't hear anything. I ask if he thinks branches are weird on that tree, he agrees that someone must have put them like that or tree just grew that way. Anyway, very nice experience. I could swear that even wind blew dramatically at one point of me standing there. I never found out what was that, but now I think I might have heard fairies or some similar forest creatures inhabiting the space slash realm I cannot perceive with my senses. I've heard of similar experiences people have had. Completely true paranormal happenings thread. No trolling. Personal stories, family stories, stories from friends, etc. Pick related. Family overly religious. Mother still has 18 Bibles. Stepfather works with his hands. Woman from church recently passed away, also very religious. Her daughter has this Bible-shaped box for storing Bibles. Old, kind of messed up. Stepfather takes it to fix it up. Sister 14 at the time wakes up early to watch MTV. Back when MTV played music. Turns off TV to go to school sees tall silhouette in reflection thinks it's me playing a prank on her goes and checks i'm apparently passed out follows the footsteps of when she saw it walk away in the reflection stained cement floors during winter usually balls cold she said she could feel the heat through her shoes checks bathroom nothing goes into her room at the end of the hall where the figure went Center of her room is like a kitchen freezer. Can we get a true ghost stories thread? I'll start. Be me. Greater than 24 and driving in an orchid at 4 a.m. with my GF. Orchid leads straight into town I live in a small town. Talking to my girlfriend but keeping my eyes on the road. I turn to talk to my GF and in the window I see us pass by a person walking on the side of the road. Almost hit the bastard and had to swerve. Didn't get the best look but I was able to see that he was wearing a navy blue hoodie, denim jeans with a hat, Mexican. But his face he didn't seem to have a face if that makes sense. It was all a blur but his clothes I was able to see perfectly which I thought was weird. Wondering why I didn't see him coming up but chalk it up to not paying attention or him just popping out from the trees last second but this is unlikely. Be me a few months later. Driving with GF on the same road home around the same time. Get to the spot where I saw the blurry faced man. My jaw drops exe. My car's lights are so bright they light the entire road and the sides of the road where you can see the trees. There is no way I shouldn't have been able to see this guy. I have more stories of my own and people I know if you want to hear more. Was driving through a labor intensive agricultural area and saw a Mexican. Shocking. Cursed camping expeditions. Not green texting, too old and CBA. As a preface, when people go through something traumatic at higher levels of severity it's not uncommon for them to power through it all and I guess bounce back really quickly in the eyes of others, but then years later, sometimes decades, they finally start to understand it all and actually deal with it mentally once their brains finally tell them you're okay now, you can do this, happens a lot with people who've been violated sexually and isn't uncommon for people who develop delayed PTSD. From wartime conflicts and stuff. Just wanted to explain that before the story starts, I don't know what's going on with my brain but I've repressed a bunch of stuff even though in hindsight this is more unusual as opposed to traumatic. So we begin, I lived in Scandinavia for a long time, I was always a fan of slash out slash and slash k slash for their inner wood stories and stuff, 
hoping to bag a skinwalker and all that shit but in general I've just had an affinity for the outdoors. Not sure why I never really thought about this before but maybe therapy is working or maybe mind rot is reaching critical levels so I figure I'd share it here in case someone here has some kind of explanation. When I lived in Norway I tried camping, had to rope friends and my partner into it they were kinda okay with the idea but would have preferred to just smoke and drink in a house setting instead as opposed to trekking out to somewhere remote and hunkering down, figured it was just their personal preference and goaded them a bit and we headed off, we ultimately decided to go camping on a small island near Kritro which was a previous Nazi holdout point of fake during WW2, the place is pretty. Deserted just beautiful forest and a bunker which was kinda spooky but even using torchlight kinda set you at ease. I checked the forecast fervently prior to planning, things were clear everything was cozy and it should have been a chill night, this was instance one that I'm not realizing might be some kind of pattern but when we got there things were kind of off somehow, not entirely sure how to describe the sensation but beyond it being quiet there is a pretty specific feeling for when you're in high winds and how it wicks heat and moisture from you in general but there was no wind, we were in a heavily wooded area and it was pretty calm and temperate in general, clear skies, normally nice temps due to it being summertime, wind was normally a cool breeze but this was almost like biting winds even though we didn't feel any actual breeze. No one really acknowledged it but you can sense when the group that there's a bit of uneasiness at play. We hunkered down near a cliff, there were a few birds and stuff but there aren't really any mammals on these islands due to them being pretty remote, we tried to drink, smoke, listen to music but being outside kinda resets your circadian rhythm so we probably fell asleep around 10 pm, I'd guess it was around 2 or 3 am that we heard the most guttural screaming all of a sudden, we had two tents, one for me and partner and one for my two buds, we didn't say anything but we were aware we all were hearing the same shit. Not sure about the others but I didn't sleep afterwards, and by the morning we were all visibly exhausted, we discussed it a bit but mostly guessed at foxes, other random critters that were doing some demonic sex act or something but it still kinda put everyone off going out for a while. Second time was maybe a year later, I'd got some cool camping gear, I was hoping to make it more of a pleasant experience so that me and my partner could go on some longer hikes at some point, again I needed to badger her a bit, I'd mostly forgotten about the weird screaming by this point but she seemed pretty unnerved still when I was asking, my bad in hindsight for pushing it so much but nevertheless we went out again. This time we were in Sweden, it was hard to find a good spot since we were living near the center of Stockholm, it's a beautiful place but very urbanist, we ended up driving to some kind of national park equivalent but I can't remember the name of the place, it was around 2 hrs to drive to from the city center regardless. We did the same thing, got there pretty early, it was cold and pretty remote as we were coming into the winter months at the time, we had both our dogs with us too which was nice, there was a check-in station that should have been manned but we ended up just camping out without informing anyone as no one was answering the phone, probably since it was getting colder and no one wanted to camp out in those conditions. We did the normal shit, fishing, made a fire, took a walk into the woods and found some cool shit like an imprint on the ground where a bull moose had been sleeping the previous night, no bears or lions in this area, checked prior, mostly just moose, maybe some deer, and a few critters so we were all set. This time for my partner's sake we took it easy, drank a little but not too much to drive if she got spooked, ate some easy food on a camping stove, sat around the fire until it started to get dark then watched some crap I'd downloaded on my phone in the tent. Dogs were fine, we had just gotten our younger dog at the time and she was super reactive and cunty towards any other animals but the older dog was pretty chill still barked at intruders but it is what it is. Younger dog was yappy and unpleasant usually, lunged at squirrels, birds, rabbits, anything she spotted but we were trying to get her to chill out a bit. Blah blah blah, we got to sleep, me and partner were in a raised cot to avoid ground chill, old dog was on a mini cot cos old and short haired, young dog was on a few quilts on the ground because she's half husky and loved the cold, we slept again around the same time, early-ish maybe 9 or 10 pm, and again we had the same really weird scream slash growl in the middle of the night, 
The only reason it stood out to me on this occasion was because my younger dog was dead silent, she looked completely petrified. I have checked various animal calls, mating sounds, all of the weird prompts I could think of over the past few years intermittently and I've never heard anything so blood curdling since, not sure how familiar you all are with foxes but when they mate the vixen screams like a banshee it almost sounds like a human woman, same goes for deer in a lesser extent but this was genuinely all encompassing, it strangled every fiber of my being and gave me an almost primal urge to flee as fast as I could. I managed to abate the partner and dogs, got them to chill out a bit and told them it was a mountain lion in the distance and shit and that I had weaponry and it wouldn't approach a campsite etc., didn't sleep that night either OFC but at around 4 am when the sun started to rise we were packing up and heading out because it was too unsettling, I'm debating describing the sound because I don't feel I can do it justice but it was almost ethereal albeit terrifying, on both occasions it sounded like some kind of large animal screaming in pain whilst also having its throat cut, a gurgling, desperate sound. Third attempt was perhaps more just general weirdness as opposed to something supernatural, we had to drive my partner's brother to an island near Stockholm for a friend's birthday, took a short ferry ride, not a long drive but we figured why not make a trip of it since we didn't have anything else going on, girl was kinda iffy about it again but I assured her it was cool and if anything was weird this time we could just go to the host of the party and crash there then drive her brother home in the morning. This one was super unusual, but more explainable, we went somewhere as remote as possible this time, parked in one of the few parking spots on the island, trekked out to essentially a tangential area of the island to where all the houses and stuff were so we were pretty deep in the woods, we were on an overlook near a tiny patch of beach, it was maybe 3 meters wide at best and pretty waterlogged on either side but it was cozy, not too many bugs, clear enough to start a small fire and set up camp. We did the same routine, started to chill, made a fire, cooked some grub, watched the clouds a bit and when it started to get dim out we headed to the tent to just watch some shows, talk, drink a bit, normal crap. We didn't sleep this time, the area over the mini beach had a bit of an overhang so we couldn't see the back facing area of the beach but from walking up and general observation it couldn't have had much more than around 1 meter of space that was unseeable from our position tiny space barely enough for one person realistically. As we got into our tent, gotta forgive me here since my Swedish is shitty but there was blaring music quite clearly from one of those shitty Bluetooth speakers and a bunch of random lyrics in some language I wasn't familiar with but just constant edgy black metal crap and solderness and crap being screeched over a wimpy sound system, thought it was a shock but we were both thinking WTF is that, assumed it was drunk kids or something but this was a pre ed long trek just to go out drinking in a tiny group, plus there was space for maybe two people on the beach area, I tried to peek over the overhang but couldn't see anything but the music was loud, way louder than it should have been given our distance, had young dog with us this time, she was dead silent again, she's pretty used to parties and shit at this point and usually assumed loud music equals attention from drunk people so is pretty interested, but this was super odd. We decided to sorta hunker down and stay quiet, I don't know why but it was an unspoken reaction, we both had to be absolutely dead quiet and hope they'd leave. This is the really insane part, those bastards were throwing grenades or something I swear to god I can't explain WTF was going on but these people just out of vision were lobbing some kind of explosives into the water and like scream laughing, it was genuinely a mix between just general uproarious laughter and screaming, sounded like it would genuinely hurt to make those kind of noises. We were basically dead silent there, the music was still blaring, the whatever the hell they were bomb things were piercingly loud, I think I have tinnitus or something from how loud it was, it felt like an eternity but in reality was maybe one hour or so but that's a real long time to just lie perfectly still staring at the ceiling trying not to breathe too hard. When it stopped it stopped, all sound, no splashing in the water of the people leaving, laughter and music and stuff stopped simultaneously and instantly, then it was dead silent, I slept that night, exhausted from lugging the gear for so long but we never went camping again afterwards. It just didn't feel right, sorta cursed and unsettling.
Kind of shitty stories I'm aware, but it feels like there's something going on there, not sure how much could be coincidence, if it were the weird animal noise 3x in a row I'd chalk it up to something spooky but it changed up on me on the last trip to something even weirder in its own way. Not sure what to make of it, I've camped a bunch before when I was younger and going solo in the UK, Germany, Belgium, etc. but I've never had anything noteworthy happen, they've always been relaxing, peaceful, great ways to remedy a poor sleep schedule. This stuff seemed malicious though, like I shouldn't have even made the attempt, not super familiar with folklore, nature calls, general weirdness in Scandinavia in general though, I don't live there anymore so stuff is pretty normal for me now, but those were all insanely vivid memories once they resurfaced, I feel almost as if I just pushed them down for no apparent reason. I don't recall being particularly terrified, it just felt that I was following some subconscious instruction when I went placid and stopped making sounds and stuff, same with suppressing it all, just an automatic response and it's blowing my mind that I am only starting to remember this stuff now. Every night, as soon as I would close my eyes, I would get this intense feeling that there was something at the bottom of my bed. Like the feeling that you're being watched slash not alone. It would keep me up at night, and I would stack pillows around myself to discourage me from looking. I didn't tell anyone about it, I just thought it was in my own head and was very annoying because it had gone on night after night. This was not long after the death of my grandfather, who I never met and my mother had no relationship with because he was abusive. But when he died, she felt a lot of guilt that he died alone and she never had one last conversation with him. She had started going to spiritualist churches, psychics, because of this. Which I used to tell her was a scam, made up nonsense etc. Anyway, usually it was my dad or sisters that went with my mom to the spiritualist church, but they were busy slash working, so I went along with her one night. Some part of the way through it the guy says, I feel like there's someone here that's very skeptical of this, doesn't really believe in it. And he picks me out of the group. I just nod and say yeah I'm not sure. He then says, have you been getting the feeling there's been something at the bottom of your bed recently? I was obviously pretty shocked. He said, don't worry, they're not bad spirits, they're good spirits, they just want you to acknowledge they're there. I left now convinced of the paranormal, and that spirits are real. And when I got to bed that night, that feeling was gone and I slept just fine. About a decade ago I tried to west fallen myself by excessive consumption of medicines. I didn't die, instead I fell asleep and dreamed about this feminine angelic figure who assured me everything was going to be okay. I woke up because someone was at my door, it was my mom who came across the country to my college dorm to see if everything was okay. Pretty spooky to me but maybe just a coincidence. Aside from that, I saw a ghost on the Gettysburg battlefield when I was like 12. Out in the woods at about 10 or 11 pm doing a nature reflection, hippie environmental school trip, I saw a man in full Union soldier get up appear out of nowhere about 30 feet in front of me and walk off into the distance. Also saw a bunch of ghost type things when I was an even littler child. Floating skulls and such as I recall. Maybe I chalked that stuff up to an overactive imagination, but I don't think so. Asked my dad about it a long time after and he thought that house was haunted too. I had an encounter with two ghosts one night while staying with my terminally ill father in the hospital. I was walking towards the exit of his room to use the built-in bathroom, when these two kids blasted down the hallway to the left outside the room. It was really sudden and almost made me piss myself. Once I was in the bathroom, it suddenly occurred to me that it was like 2 in the goddamn morning and there were no visitors allowed outside the rooms. My blood turned to ice as I also realized that there was actually nowhere for them to even go running that direction. Our room was the end of the hallway with nothing except a window looking down from the 14th floor or whatever we were on. And that's it. I remember it was vividly a boy and a girl holding foil balloons. No idea how the image was so seared into my mind like a memory, since it was so brief and dark. Never experienced anything like this again. I don't really believe in the supernatural, and am pretty sure it's somehow just the human mind being wacky, but yeah that 100% happened. Washing dishes at night. Approximately 11 pm. 
suddenly out of nowhere I experience what I can only describe as telepathy. A gentle thought, that I immediately knew was communication. A thought from elsewhere, I can describe it to you as similar to the difference between the sound of talking speech that you hear with your ears, and what you verbalize silently to yourself in your head your thoughts. You know there is a difference and that one is you and that one is external and that speech is communication, but this was internal from an external source and it was communication. And the difference was this telepathy was like verbal communication as we know it, but it completely skips both somatic and verbal apparatus and goes straight to your cognition. What I needed to know simply was in my head. It was not at all like hearing a voice in my head. If you want to understand, try, and discern the difference between a speaking voice and the message the voice delivers to you via speech, but forget the speech, and focus only on what was delivered via speech and how it arrives in your brain but without speech, it was like that. Instant and gentle. I instinctively knew it was foreign and not me. It was very gentle. Not angry. Not alarming. It spooked me because I immediately knew what it was and what was happening to me. And it was the first time it had happened to me. But I wasn't scared. I wasn't anxious. I just was like, oh. Go outside and look up. That's what it communicated. I knew immediately this was real and serious. So I did. I went outside. And I looked up. And I saw a UFO. I saw a UFO unmistakably. It flew over. And then it was out of sight. And that's how I know without a shadow of a doubt that something is up on this planet. This was not the first sighting of a UFO that I've had, but it was the first telepathic experience with a sighting. This happened about two years ago. And never since, or before. When I was like four years old, I was in a public pool that my parents' apartment was next to. It was a very busy summer day, and I was on one of those flotation noodles that drifted to the deep end. Through some bullshittery, probably some fat lard ass jumping around, I was spun to the underside of the noodle and started drowning because my weak kid body and stupid brain didn't know what to do. I remember it was very emotionless as I suddenly saw myself on the noodle from a somewhat third person point of view. It was locked to one viewpoint and slowly zoomed out like a camera from me. I wasn't in pain or scared. If anything I was just confused and wanted someone else to be present. Suddenly some random ass little girl with those swimming wing things pulled me up and asked if I was okay. Then I proceeded to heave and borderline puke. And that's why I probably have brain damage the end. Not sure if this counts as paranormal, but I was shitting my pants back in the summer of 2015. I was a boy scout during the first night of the first camping trip I had been on. It was absolutely downpouring in pitch black woods when we arrived to our campsite. After like 40 minutes of unpacking and setting shit up, they blew the tornado siren and we had to march like 3 miles to the mess house cafeteria building. It had a driveway that declined to a big storage garage under the building, so it was a relatively safe spot when compared to open woods. We sat on crates of food and played cards while sopping wet for probably an hour when the storm stopped. Except everything outside was wrong. The adults pulled up the garage door and it was bright outside at like 11 pm. In fact, the sky was bright bright golden yellow and the moon was blood red. Everything was dead silent despite the appearance of a cloud covering that was very clearing moving at an abnormally fast pace. It wasn't humid but there was an unnatural warmness to the air around us. I legitimately thought it was the end of the world or something biblical taking place. Our troop leader, bless his soul, took one look at this and effectively shrugged and guided us back to camp. Honestly badass and admirable since this guy saw a freak weather phenomena at minimum and just did his job to protect us and keep everyone calm. By the time we got back to camp it was almost like nothing had happened, with very mild rain and the sky being barely unnaturally lit under a black sky. Never got an explanation or heard anything remotely similar. In one late night, the lid of a jug of milk across the kitchen began to unseat and reseat itself in a cyclical fashion, like a rolling coin along the rim of the jug of milk. 
Later that night, a bright pink purple light appeared outside my window. Too scared to open the blinds, I just waited it out. The following morning, a rare orchid, had to look it up, had showed up at the front doorstep. Separate situation. Woke up paralyzed, face down. I noticed my blanket was draped over me, meaning, I was floating maybe about 6 to 12 inches I don't know. Felt urge to look beside me. Saw two robed beings with long staffs. When they noticed that I noticed them they lunged at me energetically, meaning they didn't physically move towards me, but it felt like they had accelerated towards me. I freaked out, stared down at my bed and shut my eyes as hard as I could. Fell asleep. Woke up with two perfectly circular bruises one on each of my arms in the same corresponding location. Maybe 10 millimeters in diameter or so. Years later. I was going into my garage and I got intrusive flashes of an uncle of mine his life flashing before my eyes and at the very end sensing his sadness and wanting to have done more. Walked back into the house and my mom was crying on the phone, having learned that my uncle had just passed away in the hospital sent me into a panic and hyperventilated. Even more years later. Went to a remote camping site with some friends on a full moon. Two my friends stayed in the car cause they were scared, while my friend and I got out. While walking around, we looked down across a ledge and we saw two glowing figures by a historical site. They were so ridiculously stereotypical I feel stupid writing it, tall, lanky, and glowing a neon green slash yellow. It wasn't clothing. The glow was even throughout the entire body, almost like a silhouette that was had a starburst gradient from the center being yellow and the outer being green. The glowing figures looked over and up at us but didn't move otherwise. My friend and I screamed at the top of our lungs and ran to my car, which I then drove as fast as I could not thinking about where I was going. I ended up in a field in the middle of nowhere until we got back onto a freeway. We drove silently, not know what to make of what we saw with my two crybaby friends in the back literally shaking and crying. While in college, I was getting off the bus and I got a strange pang sensation in my stomach. I knew something was wrong. I called like five plus family members and no one answered. One of them called me the following day telling me that one of my close relatives was in the hospital after attempting suicide. They didn't want to pick up because they didn't want to distract me. Notes. I don't have a diagnosed mental illness nor do I hallucinate or have a particularly strong affinity to ghosts, aliens, or things of the like. I do however believe in witchcraft, Loa, the unseen, etc. Be me, 15 year old at the time. Home after a friend's party, parents were on a party of their own. Lilanon was hungry. Warming up some beans, listening to some music, TV was also on. Suddenly all went silent, like zero noise whatsoever, like if God had hit the mute button. Cold, very cold. Spine chills, stomach churns, eyes widen, body hair gets straight. Sense getting involved by something I wouldn't see but could sense its presence all around me. Entity says something in a language I not recognize, but definitely not one spoken today, I believe. Can't spell it but could 100% recognize if spoken again. Normal senses come back, as does the noise, heart beating like crazy. All of this lasted about 2 minutes or so, but it's imprinted into my brain. In college, a buddy of mine lived alone in this apartment on a bad side of town. It was a two bedroom, and the spare was notoriously weird. It was only like a rather small perfectly square room that my friend furnished with a plain bed on a metal frame, and a TV sitting on a coffee table. We would often hang in this room and play video games or watch movies on that TV or whatever, so my friend would bring chairs from other rooms. He brought this leather computer chair once and we learned something paranormal or just, impossible geometry or shit happening. This room of the apartment was built like shit and the floor was slanted leading to an angle leading slightly to the TV. This is important because one night I stayed in this room to sleep, and my friend left this wheeled computer chair in the room. Typically it would roll down this slant and rest on the wall beside the TV, but for some reason this night something bizarre happened. 
I was almost entirely asleep when I had some sixth sense that was trying to warn me that movement was happening around me in this dark room. I opened my eyes like a scared kid trying to play dead for a fake monster in the closet, as I see this chair just exploring the room. Not at a fast pace or anything, but moving in partial circles towards the TV and to the door and all around. My heart is racing, but I'm mostly just dumbfounded as to what I'm witnessing. My grand plan is to just shut my eyes and let it play out when suddenly the bed is hit by a force. The chair has traveled fully up against the decline towards the TV to hit the side of the bed. I shoot my eyes open and still just see an empty chair facing me, when it exerts enough force to push the damn bed against the wall, it was only like 3 cms away, but still. At this point I just shot out of bed and left without looking back lol. I called my roommate to come pick me up and got the hell out. I had a friend over to my house when I was around 15 or so. I was into Shinix and was trying to convince him that it was real. We were trying to see each other's auras, and we visualizing the energy inside of us expanding outwards and becoming visible. We didn't see anything and continued to toss a frisbee back and forth outside. We were in a small, maybe one fourth acre, grassy area surrounded by trees. We threw it back and forth for hours. The sun was starting to set. I missed a catch and the frisbee flew by me. I ran to pick it up, and as I bent down, I heard my friend yell, Ghost. Ghost. It's a ghost. I looked up and saw an orange ball with a black smoky trail floating about six feet off the ground. It came out of the woods near me and floated across the grassy clearing and disappeared into the woods on the other side. I just stood there and watched. I have no idea what it was. I wish I ran after it and tried to touch it or something. Some people have suggested ball lightning to me. The timing of this with the attempts to see each other's auras makes me wonder if it was a spirit or entity of some sort. How do you know that? Have you had a similar experience? Yep. I've had two encounters, about 18 years apart. They aren't craft, they're entities. I won't bother to explain in detail how I learned this, but after a lot of research and work in the occult and putting things together, and just having a famous magician clue me in, I know what they are. Some spiritual traditions call them fairies. Because they're ethereal tricksters and the fae legends ultimately come from human encounters with them. Kabbalists have given them the name that I prefer, Angels of Makoth. Meaning fallen angels bound to the material realm. The Watchers in the Book of Enoch are essentially another legend about them, with a whole bunch of salacious fanfic thrown in for storytelling spice. The crucial detail in that book is that God bound them to the valleys of the earth, which is correct based on my observation. The two times I've encountered them, and in the reliable reports about them you can read, they seem to be intimately associated with natural bodies of water at the base of mountains. I'll bet you another $10 your house is in the countryside with a stream, river, or lake not far off. How did I figure out that's what you saw? The telepathy. They are astonishingly powerful telepaths and can read minds at huge distances. The rule of thumb is that if you can see one, no matter how far away it is, it knows what you're thinking as clearly as if your thoughts were on a 500 foot tall illuminated billboard. The ones I saw didn't put thoughts into my head, but their behavior made very clear they knew what I was thinking. The first one made a point of it by the way it behaved. It wanted me to know. Here's John Keel talking about them without having actually learned what they are. So what was that all about? Why did it do what it did? What was the point? And why do I prefer to call them angels of Makoth as opposed to fairies or living lights or whatever? One my second encounter was precipitated by a Kabbalist summoning one. Two Kabbalists have the best understanding of their behavior and intent. Three those intentions are very subtle, manipulative, and evil, and they're a lot smarter and more potent than the picture of fairies most people have in their minds. They're basically hyper-intelligent and have a kind of limited omniscience, or at least very clear knowledge of past and future. As well as very deep insight into the psychology of anyone who encounters them. They don't just know the thoughts flowing through your mind at the moment. They know everything in your mind, 
and understand the way you're going to react to them, far into your personal timeline. They understand how seeing one will change your perspective and alter your behavior in the future, and what you end up doing much further on in life was their goal in the first place. If you see one, it's already accomplished what it wanted farther down the road, as you can't second guess them. Don't even bother trying, that'll drive you crazy. Its goal in communicating with you and having you look at it will be highly specific and chances are you won't guess its intent until you do a kind of self-inventory and figure out how that experience influenced you. Most people will never have a clue about how it affected their lives. But they do. You personally may not even have been the primary party it was concerned with. So angel kind of fits if you think of angels as beings containing a fraction of the power and wisdom of the creator. Maybe they can move mountains or raise cities too, but it seems they prefer playing extremely subtle games. At least by our standards. Their activities probably seem straightforward to beings as smart as they are. I grew up in a very strange situation and had lots of paranormal experiences. I didn't put the pieces together until I was in my 20s and learned my mother frequently dabbled with the occult from her teenage years into her 40s when this happened. To this day I don't think our house was haunted but my mother was attracting things from a strange house on my street. Grew up in a small three bedroom ranch house but had dreams about falling downstairs for as long as I can remember. Toys falling over, feelings of being watched at night, hearing sounds outside, etc. Pretty normal spooky experiences were common. One day this all changed in the summer when I was out in garage watching my dad work on his car. I was about 6 or 7. Went back into my house to wash my hands and the house was empty, something that almost never happened with my brother, dogs, mom, and dad all living under one roof. As I'm heading to the bathroom next to my bedroom I feel a chill run down my spine and feel an overwhelming urge to look to my left. In my bedroom behind my toy bin there is a man in all black with black and white splotches on his face tall enough to almost reach the ceiling, almost 8 foot ceilings. I start screaming and running into the living room and my dad rushes in asking what's wrong. I tell him there's a man in my bedroom and he grabs me and rushes outside and locks me in the car before rushing inside. Seems like an eternity in the hot car before my dad finally remerges and tells me there was no one there. My father didn't dismiss what I said and in retrospect his reaction is very strange. He told me if I ever see something like that again to ask it firmly to leave. We'll continue with more. My dad would explain to me after another similar event the idea of ghosts and spirits in a very dumbed down way so I could understand and I started to take an interest in paranormal things and became very interested in a house in my neighborhood. For as long as I was old enough to ride my bike around with my friends we were all creeped out by this house in our neighborhood. Not only was it unusually unkempt but it was the only multi-level in the neighborhood and also the only one with a connected garage. It was built at the same type as the other, 60s, but looked like it was dropped in between the other houses from another neighborhood or time period. Have never seen anyone coming in and out and despite having an attached garage there were always different cars parked out front. I later learned this was because the house frequently changed hands and was on the market constantly, another unusual thing for my neighborhood. Parents had the typical American rules where I had to come home when the street lights came on. Unusual house was on the way home from the park and even when it was on the market and unoccupied, when the street lights came on a chandelier in the home would also come on with a timer. Always have an uneasy feeling and pedal my bike a little faster when I go by it. One day it's raining out and I had been playing Xbox over at a friend's house. Go to bike home when I see the street light outside my friend's window come on. Biking home when I get the same feeling as I got when I was a kid, right as I'm passing the house. I look over and I see the splotched faced man staring out the window. I slam on my brakes and almost wipe out in a puddle. I get disoriented but when I look back up the man is gone. This was the last time I saw the splotched face man but was not my last experience with this house. Years go by and we moved away from the neighborhood but stayed in the same town. Playing Xbox with my friend who still lives there and he invites an emo girl that grew up a few houses down from me. We catch up and my friend goes to bed and the girl and I stay up all night chatting on Xbox Live and she asks me to come over. After some convincing I agree to come over even though it's 1am. I had stupid teenager brain and wanted to get pussy so I snuck out of my house and rode my bike the mile or so over to her house. I knock on her bedroom window and she climbs out. 
I have my first cigarette with her as we walk to the park and we make out under one of the pavilions. A cop rolls up to the park and flashes his lights, I think my life is over but he just tells us to go home. I try to keep cool walking back to her house but my heart is racing. I put my arm around her and we're sharing headphones listening to AFI on a portable CD player. I'm re-familiarizing myself with the neighborhood and flush with hormones, nicotine, and adrenaline already so when I lock eyes with the house it really throws me off. She can tell something's off and asks what's wrong so I point to the house and tell her that it always used to bother me. She gets white as a ghost. She tells me that the house is haunted because someone hung themselves from the chandelier. I had heard this story before and while it was spooky as a kid I knew it was just BS kids making up because I didn't think they'd leave the chandelier up. Side note, I have also looked up the property records and confirmed this to be untrue. She continues and says her and her friends broke in there a few months ago and some bad stuff happened. Think she's just being edgy but I'm interested to know more and pry about it. She tells me they found some old candles in the basement and brought them upstairs and lit them with a bake so they could see. This edgy metalhead drew a pentagram with a sharpie he had and started trying to scare them. Everyone laughs him off until they heard a huge thump upstairs. She says one of the kids went upstairs to see what it was when he was chased down the stairs by a large man and they all bolted out of the house. The man screamed at the two girls and went on about banging them to death and all kinds of horrible shit. I ask her if he had the black and white splotches on his face. I tell her the story I told you guys and she looks at me like I'm crazy despite her lying about the suicide and the story she just told me. She dismisses my prying and assures me it was a homeless man. Energy of the night has completely shifted from teenage hijinks to heavy and somber by the time we get to her house. We exchange goodbyes and agree to see each other again, we never did, and I pick up my bike and start pedaling home. Out of curiosity I swing back to ride past the house. I stop out across the street and the same chandelier is on like always. The mood of the night is unreal. I think it's the first time I've ever been out this late and I've got so much running through my head I kind of just sit and ruminate over everything. I decide I want to see the house up close and see if her story was real about the back door being left open. I get off my bike and walk it around the side of the house to the back and see the door she was talking about. I lean my bike against the house and reach out to the handle, a part of me wishing it was locked. It's not locked and the door opens. I walk inside and am overwhelmed by a strong smell I now know in hindsight is mildew, which I had never smelled at the time. I see the candles in the living room burned down to their base and the sharp-eyed pentagram. These are the scariest thing about the house, it's remarkably normal inside and the fixtures and flooring are all better than my house. Feel kind of let down that it doesn't look like Silent Hill inside and decide to go upstairs. The light from the chandelier is illuminating the house but the area at the top of the stairs is pitch black. I call out hello to see if anyone is up there. Before the word is finished leaving my mouth the light instantly goes off. I hear footsteps stomping upstairs. I bolt out of the house and barely remember to grab my bike. So scared I probably run while holding my handlebars for half the block before I get on my bike. Never look back. Go home and don't sleep until noon. That was my last paranormal experience with the house. I have not been back there at night time since. Have a bad run in with the government and strange shit starts happening. Android phone on latest version had a remote administration tool on it. Hit by dues constantly for about 6 months, the most painful thing I have ever experienced. Bizarre people I have had no interactions with know who I am and signal me in public. Start reading about Kyle Odom shit heavily as it paralleled what happened to me. One of the aliens Odom spoke of enters my body and starts doing the same things they did to Odom to me, violent sensual stimulation of penis and prostate. Spent a night with a friend I met recently and yet another alien possessed me, this one loved rape, left after I started sobbing. Start seeing UAPs everywhere. This friend helped me escape home and took me seven states away. When they realized I was not coming home again they began to sob and it literally electrocuted my brain and heart, still do not know what this was. They were either a fed or an alien. Develop schizophreniform from the mind shatter. Spend months in psych wards. The original alien did not leave my body and began speaking to me telepathically as of a month ago. Initially here to just have fun with me, this alien fell in love with me. 
much more reserved and kind to me but still stimulates me sexually which confirms beyond question that it isn't mental illness, quite possibly the only other person that went public with this was Odom. Still signaled in public, realized these were aliens that inhabited human bodies that have some sort of collective consciousness and are aware of me everywhere. They struggle to act like humans and are very uncanny in mannerism. My kindness made them very fond of me and am treated well everywhere I go. I was the most normal person imaginable, I did not think that any of this was possible and thought people that spoke in this manner online were hopelessly schizophrenic. Prior to all of this, I had never experienced anything paranormal. I went to other reality. Be me. Greater than 10. December 25th. I woke up at 6 a.m. so I can check my presence. Mom Luke. PNG. It's the Toy Story's Green Soldiers. I open the bucket and see the generals have the exact pose as in the movie, with the arm up. Goes to sleep hugging the bucket. Woke up. Open the bucket and see that every single general soldier have the posture changed. MFW. That's I believe that the travel between universes slash reality change it's possible, because it happened to me. I want to go back brothers. Be me, walking in suburban area. There is a gorge that cuts through near a church. See a huge black dog in the gorge. It looks my direction then walks off. Have a mentally challenged moment and hop the fence to go follow it. It's steep, basically slide the whole way down. Arrive where the dog was, no tracks or anything. Feel something unearthly watching me. Suddenly come to, scramble back out of the gorge. Nearly five hours passed. Sometime while in high school. Dad's friend's son recently died of a brain aneurysm. Dicking around on my computer home alone. All of a sudden family dog starts howling in an odd way that she never howled like before or howled like after. Was a long drawn out low howl. Pretty creeped out about it at first but think nothing of it. All of a sudden she walks from where she was downstairs to right outside my bedroom door upstairs. Continues to howl like that for a good few minutes, I get pretty spooked. Dad comes back and she walks downstairs, goes back to normal. It looks like I may have a story for you, slash x slash. It's a little boring, but it's true, so I guess it's something. Sorry. It's quite a long story. Be a kid, many moons ago, 20 years. Spend one weekend a month at my grandparents on my father's side's big ass country estate, because they lived an hour and a bit away so we didn't see them often. Also spent a week each summer break with them. Had my own room, part of the attic that had been converted into two guest rooms. Remember sitting up late most nights I stayed there, talking to a girl I called Aunt Charlotte, she would tell me stories until I fell asleep. Sometimes she would bring me extra blankets because the room was always extra chilly, or sometimes tissues and water if I was sick. Grow up, think she was an imaginary friend and I was partially blurring bits of reality, grandma probably brought me the blankets, etc. Was always a pretty young girl, so pale she was almost blue in old-fashioned clothing and with an accent I couldn't place. She always said that my room used to be her room, before they split it in two. Be about 14, grandfather has died, grandmother beginning to lose the plot. She ends up hospitalized, dementia paired with lung cancer, and has to move into a nursing home. Dad's family sell the house to afford her care. Fast forward to about seven months ago. Dad receives a booklet from his sister who lives in that general area that features my grandparents' home, Heritage Listed, talks about how our family was rather wealthy back in the good old days had arranged for it to be built before they came over from Scotland, was passed down from that first family until it got to my grandparents. Think huh, if it's Heritage Listed, that means they couldn't have demolished it? Drive down there with my boyfriend one day to check out the state of the place, see how it's changed. Have to drive down this long gravel path to get to it. Woman and a young child slash dog running around in front yard, have to get out and talk to them because it would be sort of weird and suspicious, 
driving down to this house that's out of the way and then turning around again. Tell the woman that my dad's family owned the house for generations and I just wanted to see what it was like. She offers to show us around. New kitchen, basement is a man cave, pool, just a lot of new developments. Turns out her little girl is in my old room. Ask her if it's still freezing cold no matter what time of the year it is. Her mother says that it is, and that they tried to install heating, fix some things up but somehow it still lets in all the cool. Daughter says it's okay, because Charlotte makes sure she stays warm. Bells ringing in my head. Ask about Charlotte. Mother tells me quietly that it's her daughter's imaginary friend. Wasn't going to say anything but then my boyfriend says didn't you have an imaginary friend here, too. Aunt Charlotte. Just kind of brush it off because I don't want to make the mother uncomfortable or anything. Have coffee together, exchange numbers and leave. Start thinking about Aunt Charlotte, wonder if she was imaginary at all. Start researching my family history. Find a relative in neighboring state who has been doing the same as me but to a much greater extent. Meet up with her. Ask her if she knows of any Charlotte S close to my side of the family. There was one in the family that first moved here from Scotland, born in 1782, was 12 at the time they moved, has no other information. Means she must have lived in that house. Continue my investigation further, go to the library in my grandparents' hometown and look through records for my family name. Find a Charlotte, born March 1782, died December 1799. Ask librarian if there's anything else I might be able to look at. Turns out the church kept a book of deaths, listing family members, cause of death, exact dates, but a lot of the old records aren't in any particular order and some of it is illegible, especially from the period I'm looking for. Attempt to find it anyway. Eventually do after three days of going through these record books. Says she was found dead in the snow about half a mile from the house after going for a ride on her horse the day before. Probably fell off the horse, knocked herself out and eventually froze to death. MFW this could be why she always looked so pale she was almost blue. MFW this might be why the room was always so cold. Week later, get a call from the woman who currently lives in the house with her family. Asks me about Charlotte again. Says she was checking on her daughter a few nights ago and heard a woman with what sounded like a Scottish accent talking with her, and there was no one there when she opened the door. Asks me what my Charlotte looked like, tell her. She says that's basically how her daughter described her. And that's basically the extent of the story. I'm guessing those of you who bothered to read this can see what I'm thinking, here, that my childhood imaginary friend might just be a long lost relative. Aunt Charlotte might be my actual great 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 etc. Aunt Charlotte who died all those hundreds of years ago. The current owners of the place are pretty interested in the whole story, now, and they've asked me to come back and talk to them about what I've found out slash my experiences. Time for some creepy true stories that happened to you. Here is mine. Once I had a long period of depression and in the end I took a lot of sleeping pills, Ironically I wasn't intending to die, I just took them all at once for some odd reason. Instead of dying, I woke up feeling normal. I had sliced wounds on my left arms. Once I checked the date on my computer I realized that it was 3 days since I popped those sleeping pills. I didn't remember a single moment from all those 3 days, on one of the walls of my apartment I found a picture of a tree painted in brown. There was text written above the picture with the same paint. It said, it hard to write with your blood so I will draw a tree. Thinking back about all of this makes me feel like I am part of some horror movie. I asked people I usually interact with if I did something weird and they said that I was normal, attending lectures and all that. I don't know what else I did that I might find out about later, but the thought that there actually might be some other creepy shit, creeps me out a lot. The picture alone made me so scared because I never remember drawing it with my blood. Plot twist, someone else did this to me. In any ways this is the most messed up shit that ever happened to me. Thinking now about it, I have notes on lecture on my notebook, maybe I also made something else while I was out. 
For anyone curious the mind-altering inhibitor was called bromazepam and I consumed all 8 pills in the pack that were 6 mg each. Recently I called the local post regarding my packages that I was supposed to receive. They told me a young man has accepted it and signed with my name. I searched through my apartment and found in my wardrobe the book that I ordered. Some pages were ripped and there was some blood stains. I figured that I was doing a lot of random and drastic actions while I was out. The thought of this makes me sick, I imagine if I would go on killing spree or something. Gonna post a story of some shit that's happened to me. Live in South Africa, this happened back when I was 16. The local church organized a youth camp to a place called Dundee, a farm town in South Africa. We're gonna be staying on a farm that gets used for school excursions and shit like that. We get there on Sunday night and everyone is pumped for a good time. Some kids from the local area come camp with us along with a few kids from other big cities, there's like 62 campers. Girl and boys get split so no funky business. Us guys spend the night getting to know each other and telling funny stories. Eventually we start telling stories trying to scare the shit out of each other. My one bro tells the guys about the Bloody Mary legend. The local kids are in a pretty remote area so this creeps the hell out of them and laugh about it. Back then it was about the time Harry Potter was popular and being the bundle of sticks that I was I somehow ended trying to learn parcel tongue. I knew a little Latin from some of the hymns so I missed random words and hissed and scared the shit out of everyone. Some of them got so mad they decided to sleep. Then my one bro tells the story about a South African urban legend called the Toko Lush. Apparently it's this guy who basically wanders around haunting people. Once he starts haunting you he never leaves you alone. He'll come up to you in the middle of the night and stare at you sleep for three nights in a row. If you wake up he kills you, accounts on how you die vary from him taking your soul to cutting out your heart. Now I might be a black guy in South Africa but I was raised by my white dad and a black mom who was raised by her Portuguese grandma. I have little knowledge about South African folklore. I laugh it off but it seems everyone but me knows about the toko lash and they are visibly creep ed out. We all go to bed right then. The next day some of the guys tell their girlfriends about what we did the that night and it seems the girls did something similar. We get split into groups 4 girls 4 boys. We get told we're gonna be doing some activities and we have to compete against each other. Screw that we just. Want to have fun. That afternoon my bro needs the restroom and the closest one has no working lights. He goes in and starts doing his business. I wait 3 minutes and then decide to prank him, I turn the water on in one of the basins and go to the door and scream bloody Mary twice. Bro flips his shit and runs out pants down and I start laughing at him, I was an asshole, he laughs it off and goes back to finish but I do this to him 3 more times, I was a real asshole, he won't go with me afterwards anymore. That evening we're all sitting around a campfire and telling more stories. I do the parcel tongue thing again and scare some of the girls. We laugh. One of the counselors tells us a story about the toko lash and claims that some farm workers living nearby had died because of him. Recently. We call bullshit. He takes us to a fenced clearing about 100 m from the dorms and there are graves there. We see four graves that look new. We nope the hell out of the and collectively decide to go to bed. The next morning some of the girls complained that I was crawling around there sealing my parcel tongue impersonation but I was legitimately asleep and the counselor lets them know that there is no space in the ceiling to crawl around and it's impossible to get from the boys dorm to the girls dorm because you have to go through the counselor's rooms. Then someone asks if it wasn't Rick then who was it? We're all starting to freak out. That whole day we're all just joking about it but the local kids don't want to talk about what's happening, but finally one of them tells us that this is how some of the Toko Lash stories go. Then he asks if any of us have messed with any type of ritual, I tell them that I did the Bloody Mary thing but never finished it and kept swapping it out with Biggie Smalls, and some other stuff just as a joke. He says it might have had an effect but doubts it. We get told that we have to pack our sleeping gear because we're gonna move locations after climbing a large hill the next day. 
That night one of the guys wakes up feeling cold and wants to close the window but none of the windows are open. He looks out and sees a shadow moving near the small cemetery. He flips his shit and wakes us up. We see the shadow moving around and nope so hard we actually start praying. I'm not religious but screw that I prayed like a choir boy. The shadow moves in the woods and we basically huddle till morning. We were so scared we were pissing in buckets so we wouldn't have to go to the, the restrooms. Morning finally comes and nobodies want to talk. I ask one of the girls why they are so quiet and it seems they've been hearing the parcel tongue like voice. We tell them about the shadow and it seems they heard the voices around 1.26 till 2.56. We saw the shadow at 3.05 and it left at 3.13. We're all shitting ourselves but start chilling out because we remember we're moving camp locations. We're gonna ride a tractor pulling a bus like trailer to the base of the hill but it breaks down halfway there. We leave it and walk the rest of the way. We see the tractor heading back and realize it was a prank to make us walk and stop being lazy. Screw it we just want to get this over with and go back so we can move. The hill takes so much longer to climb than we expected but we push on. It takes 7 hours for the whole group to make it. At the top there are tents set up. Our sleep gear is there. They tell us that we're gonna spend the night there. To hell with that. We want to nope all the way home but it's dark and cold. Even if we get back there's nowhere else to go. A few of the guys get together and come up with a SHTF plan. We decide that we're gonna grab girls from out group and bail all the way downhill on our own. Screw the rest of the group. Planning it out calms us down and we even start joking around again. We're all chilled after being there a few hours and sitting around a campfire. One of the camp cooks tells us that his son died recently. We ask about it and turns out his son is one of the people who was allegedly killed by the Toko Lush. Well so much for calming down. We decide that going to bed is the best way to go. We go to bed at 9. At like 1 3 of us wake up and it's super cold. I look up and realize that I'm not in the tent. My cushion, sleeping back and me are out in the open. Ha 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 real funny guys. We move our stuff back into the tent but the other guys have no idea why we're outside. We go back to sleep but an hour later same thing happens but this time there are 7 of us including girls outside. I realize that it's only us who made the SHTF plan. We told no one, not even the girl we were gonna save. WTF. As we're taking our stuff back in we see a shadow moving a girl out of her tent. I want to nope out of there but I can't move. My bro starts yelling and that makes me start yelling too. The girl wakes up and screams. The shadow run into the woods. Counselors decide to call for transport so we can leave but the tractor is broken for real now. One of my brothers asks about the plan but I tell him that the plan blows why would we risk going up by ourselves into the dark. Besides things aren't at SHTF yet. We decide to arm ourselves with sticks and rocks, no one has any weapons. We are all too scared to sleep. We see a shadow moving in the distance but it didn't come closer than that. We also hear the parcel tongue like voice till near dawn. At first light we pack up in silence and nope our way down to base camp, call the guy who brought us here and tell him we all want to go home. That shadow was the closest thing to something slash x slash I'd ever seen. It kept changing and for some reason I have trouble recalling what its face looked like. I later heard that those who see a toko lash never remember its face, just a shadow. I avoid dark alleys and never go in a woods. I don't know what it was but I don't want to find out. Why did it take us out the tents? Why just us who'd come up with the plan of the girls we were gonna save? Emma read yours in a sec. But here's something to bump this along. B20. Helping stepdad install new wood stove in basement. Clear all the basement crap out of the way. Pick related, west wall. Only different part of foundation. Working, chat about what it could be. Stepdad the believes what he sees type. Get back to work in silence for a while. Both look up at odd noise. Scratching and scrapping, too loud and heavy to be rodents. 
Stepdad asks what's going on, only lives with us a short while so far. Shrug, watching the brick part of wall. Loud snapping sound, almost snap pop followed by the sound of something large tumbling along the ground. Huge bang, dust jumps off brick part of foundation. Dead silence, stepdad staring agape at wall, then to me. I'm shaken, seen slash heard lots of stuff before but not this. Pick up wrench and tap on wall. Soft moaning, then footsteps answer. I see cold sweat, feeling of absolute dread and horror. Tell stepdad we have to go, he doesn't think twice. Nope the hell upstairs. Decides to tend garden to calm down. Are as far away from the house as we can be within property boundary. Pale as hell and absolutely silent. We just stand on the other side of yard till more people come home. Dead house dude. Didn't happen to me, happened to my brother's friend. Brother's friend is super bored. Invites a bunch of friends over, my brother doesn't go, though. They start messing around with Ouija board. Weird feelings all around. House catches on fire. Everyone gets out of house. Brother's friend films the fire. Watches tape a few days later. Apparitions dancing around the flames. She went to school and showed the tape to everyone. My brother said it was the creepiest thing he's ever seen. I don't diddle with those. Here's why. Greater than 12 years ago, 11 year old at a birthday party. Playing on the swing set. Birthday girl's mom is talking about how she used one with another mom. Listen for a while. Feel something grip my bangs, all kids had M then. Head is jerked violently forward and down. Blackout and comes to at doctors. Have severe whiplash and ordered bed rest for the week. Have nightmares of pale man with a talk hat entire time. When I saw this character from Adventure Time I almost lost it it looked so much like that childhood nightmare creature and I'm 23 now and don't scare too easy. Hear more. B17, home alone for the night. Watching TV with cat at feet and dog on the couch. Sharing popcorn with dog. Dog suddenly jumps off couch and hair starts to rise. Starts growling, never growls, and watching the dinning. Starts pacing and makes low woofing sounds. Everything goes dead silent. Start feeling cold and stare where dog is. Dinning room chair wiggles, then is pulled out. Positioned as if someone sat down to watch me. Creepy feeling. Dog paces back and forth in front of me. Don't move till mum gets home doesn't believe me. Says this story is better than the last. And some more. I did type these out a while ago, given time I could have lots more. This next one was about a month ago. House sitting for mom, mostly keeping an eye on wood stove. Chit chat with lil bro till 11. Set up in kitchen to browse web before bed. Nothing out of the ordinary for 3 hours. Go to basement to add wood to fire. Prickly feeling on neck, nothing new for the basement. Soft rattling in back corner, opposite me. Try ignoring it, add firewood and head upstairs. House is dark, only lil bro sleeping upstairs. Start to head back I kitchen for snack. Hear rattling again, louder this time. Turn head to look at basement door. Chair at front room table slides out in about 2 feet towards the window. Planter on shelf nearby flips into floor. Little bro shouts from upstairs to turn down my music. Only you two there. Not playing music. Go urban exploring four years ago. Encounter this very old condemned house out in the middle of nowhere. Be by myself, but I muster up some courage and decide why the hell not. As I open the door and peek inside it is very dark. The only light is coming from the cracked open front door and the front windows of the house. Every other window is bordered up. As I walk inside I peer down the hallway of the house. I notice the silhouette of a short, very dark figure peering around the corner of the darkened hallway. My adrenaline starts rushing and I say hey, very loud to try to scare it. I hear a very faint, very deep grunt and the sound of something hitting a wall behind me as if something was thrown. Nope the hell out of there at speeds not even I thought I'd be able to reach. Never looked back. B21 about a year ago. About to leave friend's house in my car. 
Friend is standing by my car door or chatting with me through my window. Say goodbye to friend, look behind me to back out of driveway. Look back to friend's house before I pull away, wonder why friend is still standing in the driveway. Not friend. Tall, Asian man in all black staring at me. Nope the hell out of there and call friend to tell him. Go to friend's house next day and his mom is asking me a lot of questions about the man I saw. She said she sees him every night. Too spooky for me. Have seen him 5 to 10 times since then. My friend and I have suspected that his mom's room was haunted since we were very young. A lot of spooky shit has happened in that house. Most stories involving Asian guy are boring, I've just seen him staring at me from behind various things or out the window. So here's something different that happened there. Friend and I are coming back from seeing a movie at about 2 am. Laughing about nothing really hard, general broing out in my car. Pull onto friend's street. Still laughing. About three houses away from my friend's house. Friend starts screaming for me to watch out. Friend grabs wheel and turns it sharply to the left, I brake as hard as I can. Friend in absolute panic. I'm trying to ask him what's wrong, what did he see? He's freaking out saying that she just ran in front of the car and it wasn't our fault. Asks me if I think she's alive. Tell him I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. He gets out of car, I follow. He's frantically looking around behind the car before saying, you didn't see her. Tell him no. Said that he saw a little girl stepped out from behind a parked car we were driving past and that he saw and felt us hit her. He's freaked out for the rest of the night. This one scared the shit out of me. He genuinely believed it happened. Like I told him, I didn't see anything but watching my friend react like that was awful. One more from me than sleep. About two years ago. Friend and I were in a weird 3 a.m. basketball session phase. We're playing at the local elementary school, only about four streets away from my friend's house. Notice friend seems distracted. What's wrong, bro? Tells me we should leave immediately. Ask him why. Tells me there's a man across the street, beneath the street lamp that is mimicking every move I make. Spine chills. Cautiously look to the lamp, see nothing. Tell him there's no one there. Tells me the man is telling him to shut up and don't say anything to me. I start walking towards street lamp. Friend asks me not to over and over, grabs my shirt. Friend gets weak, feels like vomiting. End up carrying him home the long way, so as not to go near the street lamp. Whole way home he keeps telling me the man is still there. So much shit has happened to and around us, I'm pretty sure my friend is sensitive to that shit. We've discussed it lightly but he gets scared and doesn't want to talk about it so I guess we make a good team cause I'm all over this shit. Be me around 10 years ago, 12 to 13 at the time. Lived in a swampy region in a town called Citra in FL. Decent sized piece of land, around 5 acres or so. Had a big field around a quarter mile from our back door, clothes lines and shit, since poor no dryer. One night around 10 pm I think. Have two younger brothers, at the time, 9 and 10. For some reason mom comes out of bedroom and calls me. Anon, I need you and your brother to take the clothes out to the line. I argued of course due to the fact it was pitch black outside and the lines weren't near the house. Mother insists, so we comply. Myself and my youngest brother, 9, head down the steps out the back door. I was carrying the clothes basket full of wet clothes, heavy as hell, lil bro had a shitty flashlight. I think it's somewhat important to mention a little bit more about our property and try and give you a better idea of what we were dealing with. Basically for around a quarter mile out the back of our house were thick woods. Now, when I say thick woods, you could not see the sky slash stars slash moon at all until you got out to the field. And another note. Our dad used to tell us we lived on an old Indian burial ground to mess with us, maybe it was true, we did find a lot of flint and arrowheads on our property, so here we are in the pitch black under the trees heading out to the field, anyways, continuing story. So on our way out to field, flashlight starts dying, of course. Start cursing at little brother to fix the flashlight because I can't see shit. OFC it wasn't his fault but I was still steamed that I was even having to do this in the middle of the night. He hit it a few times and it became a little brighter and stopped flickering. Continuing out to the lines. 
arrive out there and start hanging up clothes while he holds the light. Another thing relative to the story worth mentioning is that I cannot whistle to save my life. I have never been able to, and I still cannot to this day. However, my little brother was pretty good at whistling so what happened next didn't really phase me at first. Start hearing whistling. Tune is somber and I remember that I felt uneasy hearing it, can't recall how it sounds today, but it was stuck in my head for a while after this. I tell my lil bro to cut out the whistling that it's giving me the creeps. He shines the flashlight into my face and I was like WTF. He then shines the flashlight onto his face, and he looks legitimately scared. It didn't register immediately, but I realized that he was not whistling, and that it was getting louder and drawing closer. I turned to look out into the field, and with the dim glow of the flashlight I saw the silhouette of a man around 20 to 30 yards away. I had heard some rustling in the grass, but hadn't thought much of it. We had tall grass in the field and there were almost always rabbits running around out there. The rustling seemed to be getting faster, and drawing closer. Footsteps. At this point I just looked at my brother and said run. I took off towards the house. For some reason Dumas brother picks up clothes basket and tries to run with it. He was right behind me until we hit the wooded area of the property. He couldn't see the ground and he tripped on a stump. Yelled for me to wait for him. Nope and open nope kept running. I guess he caught up to me because he was right behind me when I finally hit the back door. Slam door shut and lock it, mom is standing there with WTF look on her face. Tell her story, and she dismisses it, tells us we can worry about the clothes in the morning. We told our dad and to make us feel better he got his shotgun and brought our dog out there to the field with us, had a pit bull at the time, was a good dog, to investigate. Walked around the area a little bit and checked it out, didn't find anything, so he said it was probably our neighbor whistling, only our neighbor's porch is like one half mile from where we were. My brother remembers it as vividly as I do, and to this day neither of us know what or who the hell was in our field, but we both agree it was a pretty creepy situation. He had a mental breakdown in high school and said he was going to bring a gun to school and would kill me if I tried to stop him. Knowing he didn't own a gun, I didn't do anything and he ended up going to the counselor the next day and telling her a bunch of crazy shit. The cops came and took him to a mental house that he stayed at for like 6 months. He's pretty normal now but he definitely has days. I acknowledge that he's totally insane but I have a feeling that part of it is because he's sensitive to demons or some shit. There are other stories where I can back up some of his shit. I'll post some tomorrow night in this thread or a new one if it's gone. About a year ago I was visiting my husband in Germany and rather than stay in the barracks, we stayed at a friend's house, in the spare room. Everything was fine up until we started hearing shit. I'm sensitive to all kinds of shit, and a light sleeper so I'd wake up constantly to those noises. Slight banging, people walking up and down stairs, but we wouldn't see anything even though we slept with the door open. I started sleeping with music on and that didn't even help much. Got the idea it might just be ghosts so I told him to shut the door one night after waking up, shut the lights off, and take some pictures. There were a few orbs but nothing big or scary. Cool, just orbs. Open the door, turn music back on, and go to sleep. Wake up about 3 am to a loud banging and hear something run from the wall to underneath the bed. Husband got up, turned the lights on, and we stayed up the rest of the night curled up in the bed against the wall waiting for something to come out. Nothing ever did, so we looked around the room trying to figure out if a bird or something got spooked and flew in the window or something. Nothing but goop that looked like come on the window. Whatever it was stayed in the house and if I went downstairs at night I always felt like someone was watching me, and was angry as all hell. Got the husband to come down with me one night to put back the house phone I forgot to because I was too chicken shit to and there was a distinct butt shape in the couch right by the phone base like someone was sitting there, waiting. Nope the hell out of there and ran back upstairs, resolving not to go downstairs when it's dark again. Our hosts never said anything about hearing strange noises or feeling like they're being watched. Alrighty. This happened this morning. My little bro still lives with our mom but he's going to college soon I'm due proud. But I digress, he called me this morning around 6.30. Bro at my mom's house, 18 yo. Waking up early to run. In kitchen getting ready. 
starts to hear meowing, like when a cat is hungry and wants your attention. I took my cat with me when I moved, no cats in that house. He looks under table. Hears something thumping down the stairs. Basketball bounces about four times before slamming onto the landing with force. Lil bro grabs the ball and is about to throw it outside. Then realizes that it's blue, not the standard orange tan. Kids next door and him only ones with basketballs. None are blue. Very similar to my last one. The basketball showing up reminded me of this. Only two times this had happened. B14. Finally have my own bedroom after construction on house. Saturday spent reading due to rain. In my new room most of the day, siblings besides my sister. Here rattling near the SE corner of my room, chimney runs up that corner. Desk is in that corner, go check it out. A little yellow toy horse is wedged between desk leg and wall. Very faded but intact. It wiggles then drops to the floor. I still have it and have been looking for it since my bro called this morning. B26 Younger brother died two weeks ago in car accident. Girlfriend was with him in the car. She has been paralyzed from waist down and was at hospital. Came home from work late and made some food. Clearly heard my brother's voice right behind my left ear saying I'm so sorry, big brother. Started shaking and crying for like half an hour. Air felt cold as ice. Went to sleep to friend's apartment as I couldn't be home alone. Next day I went to visit girlfriend. She said last night she saw my brother standing next to her bed and kept repeating how sorry he is. She couldn't speak or move and was completely terrified. She felt like if covered in snow. Never happened again. Still fell shivers just thinking about it. Same house. I go there to do laundry and even week something happens, some more interesting than the others. Having tea with mom last week. Sitting in sunny front room just enjoying each other's company. Moment where we aren't talking just tea time. Hear a dragging noise upstairs on the other end of house. I contact with mom before heading upstairs. Worried because it sounded like the porch door in her bedroom, second story. Worried cause the point 22s in there. Leaning around the door frame I notice the door is in fact open. Wave mom in, actions becoming normal to clear the room. About to open the sliding mirror door to her bathroom. Not even cracked yet and we hear a wavery female voice, sort of echoey. Anon mom is that you? I contact with my mom, she has tears in her eyes. It's me, Graham Graham sorry to bother you. We return downstairs. Mother had been experiencing her grandmother around the house for weeks now. I don't like sharing this as I am still terrified of the experience but here it goes. B12 or 13. Be at grandparents house in New York. House is old as shit built at beginning of 1800s our family has owned since built. In mom's room where I slept on air mattress on the floor. Be watching TV. TV was the older small ones with glass screen that show reflections went off. Every time I change channel, screen goes black, like most TVs do. Flip channel. See the sill out of man standing behind me in the black roll faction. Heart drops. Flip channel again he's not there. Turn around no one there get the chill feeling. Run downstairs and say nothing. Have not been upstairs in that house at night time since. They bought a small trailer the following summer. Sleep at the back of large yard in the trailer every time I'm up there now. To hell with that shit. House is always making weird noises and shit always is falling off walls lots of activity there. True story. I haven't found any records. All I've gotten were recent records, mortgages and STFF. Most of what I do know I from the old woman who used to live next door. She owned a good chunk of the land there but came on hard times, so I was told. The house is about 100 years old now, far from what it looked like originally. A previous owner was a friend of my dad's when I was a kid. He said that whenever he went upstairs he had to pass the little door that accessed the chimney. He said that the door would shake violently at times, and others he's seen it open on its own. He told me all this when I was a little kid and after they had both been drinking. But still, it scared the six-year-old me. 
any of who, the wall is part of the foundation and we don't want to take it lightly. Refer to the recounting with my stepdad. He's just as eager as I am to break it open, but he is also a carpenter at General Handyman. Foundation work isn't our forte but we'll figure it out in time, and when it's drier. We thought about hiring someone but this is our chance it potentially discover something, or nothing, but it exciting. We don't want to mess it up. Here's something about the door. It's still there. Next time I see my mom I'll snap a pic. B8, sharing bedroom with twin. I have lower bunk, right up against windows. Moonlight right in my face. Roll over to far doorway. Can see opposite wall and top of stairs. And that goddamn little white door. All worked up I get all tense and suddenly cold. Can see door in grayscale, it's on the edge of the moonlight. Here lift and slide latch. Door silently opens, it creepy as hell normally opened. No shadow or any other movement, only a soft masculine sigh. Door closes again. Wake twin and we stay up all night surrounded by pillows. Strange shit was always happening around my vacation house. Be like 12. Sleep at vacation house with elder sis and parents, I have two sisters. Parents are out to a relative's house which is really far away, so my sister is in charge of me. Go to sleep really scared because a cluophobia. Wake up in the middle of the night. Green light coming out of the living room. I mean pure green light green as green could be. Nope the hell out and close my eyes as I start to hear someone going up the stairs. I strangely fall asleep. Sister don't know what the hell I'm talking about since she didn't turn on the TV and went to sleep as the same time as me. There's still some strange shit left to tell but this is the most paranormalish the rest I'm a steli relatives saying strange things. Living with mom, just us alone. Yesterday morning. She enter my room angry. She says I wrecked, blocked the bathtub. She says it's blocked with my hair. Go to fixed. I get out a ball of hair, is the same color my hair. Inspect a little more, this are very long hairs. Mom and I have short hair cut. WTF. Alrightly. I had some time to type some out while working today. This was outside and the next property over but the folks who owned the land way back when lived on the property next door years ago. My mom owns the property now and she's the one that reminded me of this. A few years ago, helping mom plant an apple tree. A few feet away from property line. Look up to wipe sweat away and look around, it's a nice area. Glance at old trailer next door about 50 yards away, have a clean shot at it. See a human-like figure made of what looks like static. Except its face. Old man balding with glasses and an underbite and yes could see these details clearly. Mom sees it and instead of spooking waves. Tell her it looks just like my old friend's grandpa who died in trailer when I was young. Mom says she and stepdad see him a lot while fixing but the place. And another, it's nearly dinner time so it'll be back in a few after this. Keep it alive friends. This was last year just before I moved out. Bedroom is on second story. Stepdad is replacing rickety ass staircase. No stairs whatsoever for a while, just a ladder and straight drop into the basement. Climbing down ladder one morning to get kitchen. Look down between legs for sure footing. See a dirty faced kid, guessing 10 to 13, looking up at me. It vanished and I scramble down the ladder to head to basement. Basement only has one entrance slash exit at the time. No one down there or anywhere on the first floor besides stepdad's dog. Find dog scratching at basement door whining. I didn't find anything down there and this is the only time I've ever seen a kid before. I got one or two stories about where I used to work, just to let you know, the place where I work is a really old hotel that's changed owners a lot, it's been through a few renovations and it used to be a large family house. I'll sketch up a map of the ground floor so it's easier for you to picture. Be portering for the night. Hotel is empty because booking system is messed up. Still have to stay and watch the hotel for the night. All alone in the hotel for the night, but I have the receptionist computer to browse and watch vids on. Reading through a few articles about Star Wars, yes I'm a turbo nerd. 
Phone rings. It's 2 a.m., WTF. Answer the phone. Line is really bad, can't make much out. Suddenly line goes quiet. A loud, high-pitched scream comes out. Crap my pants and hang up. Go to grab a coffee from the machine in the back kitchen to calm myself down. Reason that it's probably kids over the road messing with me or something. On my way back to the receptionist's desk. Hear a door slam nearby. Almost throw my coffee on myself. Curse and put my coffee on a table in the dining room. Go to where the sound was. Door to the Viking room is wide open, even though I locked it earlier and it's supposed to shut on its own. Feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Hear something start to run towards me from behind. Nope the hell out and run to the receptionist desk. Hear a door slam again in the distance. Sit down at computer and try and gather myself. My coffee is next to me. I swear, that was the creepiest goddamn night I have ever had. Apologies for poorly drawn map. Be me, 16 yo, around 2013. Do some urban exploration in an abandoned school with some friends. There's only one small entrance, pick related. The school has three floors and we spend some hours exploring every corner of it. Fast forward it has already turned to night. We're on the third floor of the building when we hear a woman screaming from downstairs. I'm scared shitless, ready to jump out of the window. However, we're a group of four and have airsoft guns. So we decide to go down and confront whoever is down there. Investigate the entire first floor but didn't find anyone. We get the hell out of there as fast as possible. Here's one straight from my mom too. Didn't know about this one till now but it makes sense cause I remember the next night. We'll follow with that shortly. I'm out being a teenager 5 or more years ago. Mom twisted her ankle playing softball. Offered her my bed as it was brand new and I'd be out all night. Mom sleeping in my old bedroom with her foot propped up. She wakes up same night, feels like something is watching her. Says who's there, poor thing home alone that night. Pillow under her foot starts to move, as if someone is fluffing it. Bedroom door opens and closes. Stayed up all night waiting for someone to come home. Be the night after last post. Had just rearranged room to fit superior full-sized bed a few days before. Before I can even get comfortable start to hear things on my shelf moving. Don't think too much, the dryer shakes the house a little sometimes. Hear a sigh in the corner. About to pull blankets over my head but then I hear talking, whispering. It sounded like where did you go or just where did something. Swear I saw something peeking around my desk and shelf. Sorta makes some sense now that I know what mom went through. This happened a long time ago but I've never been able to figure it out, might as well add it to the rest. Be little thing, maybe six. Playing outside in my brand overalls that were just for outside time. Start to chase a butterfly into the field behind childhood home. Get about halfway to the edge of the woods back there, eyes only for the butterfly. Hear sudden snorting and stomping, like a horse but not. Finally look away from butterfly. See a herd of about 12 deer milling around on the ridge behind the house and field. Even then thought they were strange. Much bigger than white tails in New York. Recurves antlers, shaggy coats that look silky. One peels like an elk and they all thunder up and over the ridge. Never saw anything like it again. This is the last that I have types up at the moment and I'm waiting on my lil bro to get back to me about a few things. Typing another one now. Okay, so just spoke to my twin sister and she had a whopper. I'm gonna put both of our experiences in here, it seems relevant. Sister has room to herself, our old room. Family is all in a pretty somber state. Uncle wife is succumbing to years of alcohol abuse. Amazing woman otherwise, twin and I were very very close to her. I was in Albany with my mom dad and uncle to stay with her. Dozing off in chair just outside her room, very late at night. Wake up around 3.30 am to something warm gently going over my forehead. 
jerk into standing position, no one's there. And passed away at 3.26 am, as declared. Sad drive home next day. Sister comes running out of mom and dad's room. Starts babbling nonsense until we can get her to calm down. Says that she woke up last night at 3.30 am to see out and smiling at her from the middle of her bedroom. She stayed locked in mom and dad's room for the rest of the night slash morning till we got there. I feel as though she was just saying goodbye, I haven't seen her at all since but I so smell her from time to time when I'm afraid or under a lot of pressure. Gun smoke and lavender, not exactly a smell that's common eh? She taught me how to shoot, the earth and sky bless her spirit. I think I have one more, it's not as creepy as that. This was a couple of weeks beforehand. Be on night shift. Given a list of jobs to do by receptionist. We chat a bit before her mom comes to pick her up. Look at list. Was stuff like filling up laundry cupboards, hoovering the reception area, general security checks, and replace a bulb in one of the upper hallways. Do everything on list apart from filling up laundry cupboards, because I have to go into the viking room to get the spare sheets and towels, and that room always gave me a bad vibe. Muster up my courage and go into the room, turn on the light switch at the far end of the room. Everything seems alright. Notice the light in the downstairs kitchen is on, I figured someone just forgot to turn it off. So I open the door and switch off all the lights in the kitchen. Continue filling up the laundry cupboards, and then I get this uneasy feeling about halfway through. Shake it off and take my load of laundry out of the room. Come back and I see the kitchen lights are back on. I know for a fact I turned them off because I stole a croissant from the fridge beforehand. Slightly creeped out, but I continue to work so I can get out of there quicker. Next time I come down all the lights are off, including the ones in the viking room. Close the door and lock it because screw that. Check breakers in utility room to see if they were tripped due to a bulb breaking. All of them are on. I'm really confused, then I hear a snap as I go to leave the room. As I look back, I see the breaker to the viking room has tripped. Flip it back and look into the viking room. All the bulbs are working fine. The lights in the kitchen are off. When I was younger my mom and dad fought a lot, so much that at one point they didn't even share a room, my mom had her room my dad had his room, I had a stupid little dog named Comet, he was a mini schnozer, dumb little bastard. One day my mother passed away, we left her room the way it was and we never really went into that room. Just kept it the way she left it. I think we were all just too sad to clean it up or pack the stuff. Well one day my father went on a trip for work, we went to Toronto, about 3 hour flight away, I was home alone, it was around 1 am, messing around on the computer listening to music and whatnot. out of nowhere we have a power outage, now I was a little bitch at the time so I was super scared, the power was out for about a good 15 minutes till it turned back on, I went back to playing around on the computer, around 3 am I started to hear strange sounds coming from down the hallway where my mom's room is. My dog jumps up and starts barking at the door of my mom's room. I walk over to the room and open the door. The room is empty not a person in sight. My dog walks into the room and starts barking at my mom's bed, at this point I was shitting my pants, I grab my dog and quickly leave the room and close the door. My dog continues to bark by the door of my mother's room. Eventually my dog shuts the hell up and goes to sleep. At this point it's about 5 am. The sun is just starting to rise. Hear a loud bang. Like if someone kicked the wall. Run into mom's room see nothing hear nothing. To this day I still don't know what the hell happened. I have one that is quite real but with plausible explanation, and a few that are dreams but haunt me as though they were real. Let me know if you wanna hear the dreams. Now for the real. B6. Be walking down hallway. Minding my own childish business. Reach center of the hallway. Can't walk past light in the center. Huh? Suddenly, thing explodes. Ostriches, centipedes, monkeys, you name it around me. All circling in on me. Seen from third person point of view. I myself am transforming into all sorts of freaky shit. Few minutes later, come to on the floor under light. 
No one saw or believes me to this day. Only reason why I think this was real and not a dream is because back at that age, I used to sniff all sorts of things just because they smell good. And I mean I put them up to my nose and snorted. I believe that I probably did that to something I shouldn't prior to this, and had a really, really bad trip. I had a lot of experiences like that from the age of 4 to 8, and probably messed up my mind up hardcore sniffing so many things. Pick related, the hallway. I have several stories from my childhood and adulthood involving both haunting slash ghosts, as well as alien phenomena. B25. Live in sticks. Be in kitchen, doing dish. Girlfriend in living room, watching TV. House behinds to rumble. Brush it off as helicopter, happens from time to time. Rumble continues for a few minutes. And continues to grow louder and harder. Finally, house starts to shake a little. Step out back door to see WTF is up. See saucer shaped craft literally hovering 4 to 6 feet from roof of house. Stare in awe for a few moments. This is my first alien related encounter. Once I can compose myself yell for girlfriend. Takes her sweet ass time. Witness UFO zoom away. Super fast. Blink of eye. Girlfriend finally makes it outside. Facts about me. Have never did drugs. Not even pot. Pretty clear headed. No family history of mental stuff. Please excuse the cheesy picture attached but it looked a lot like this. Saucer. 3-4 feet in height. But rim of sauce was glowing white and only about 3 in long. No dome like in picture. Be like 14. Sitting on bed with friend. Being girls and doing makeup. Suddenly tapping starts from the top corner of closet. We blow it off. Gets louder. She jokes around and says stop. It immediately stops. We look at each other like WTF. I say, do that again. Starts again. Continue to mess around like that, always listens. We ended up calling it the attic demon, joking around, but it seriously scared the hell out of me. That whole apartment was weird, though. Another story from that apartment. Be like 14 still. Tapping still happens. Items begin to not be where I placed them, just to be found somewhere else or appear there again. Start being scared of my room, worse than before. Thought maybe turning on Christian music would make it stop. Leave room. Come back, radio off. Turn it back to Christian music, duct tape it there. Leave room. Come back, duct tape ripped off and in floor. Radio off. So many things happened there. Sadly I can't remember most, but those things still stick out. I ended up having people bless it there and stuff. Don't have any that have happened to me, but, I'll tell a doll related one that happened to my mother. My mother is 12 to 13 years old. Being part of rural Guatemala, shit tier country, would not recommend, she grew up hearing stories of demons that would manifest themselves and stuff like that. One day her family receives a package from some relative containing a doll that they named Jill. Mother describes Jill as a little blonde girl with beautiful eyes, that, her family saw as beautiful, but, she thought it was repulsive. For a few weeks, everything is normal. But suddenly, my mother's sister, 5 to 8 at the time, starts having nightmares involving Jill. These nightmares end up spreading throughout her family. Her dad, sick of all this shit, locks her in a closet. That night, my mother's sister wakes up at midnight demanding that Jill be set free. My parents thought that was relatively normal seeing it as an aftermath of the nightmares, they sure were wrong. The exact same act posted two green text arrows ago happened for four days before her father finally snapped, took Jill out, put her in a trash bag, and throw her in the trash can of the garage. Next day, there is cats and cat shit all over the garage, and more specifically the trash can and that prevented the trash man from taking Jill to the dumpster. That night, her father goes to church, where, after the service is over, they talk to the pastor about Jill. The pastor tells them sleep in his house that night and they do. First peaceful night in days. Next day, 
the pastor goes to our house, grabs the doll out of the trash can and in his car, we drive to the church. At the church, the pastor makes a fire inside an old stone stove. Does a prayer and throws the doll into the fire. They were never bothered by that doll again. That's a story that my mother said happened to her and her family sometime between 1968 to 1970. Be me 20 minutes ago. Be at grandma's house. Walk outside to put a dip in, ew. My house is about 100 yards away. See someone standing by my front door. My mom and I leave Grim's house. Mom asks if I see the man standing in the doorway of our house. I say yes. We get there and he's gone. My old house has always been a bit weird but not enough for me to consider it strange. I chalk most of what happened to my mind playing tricks on me, like hearing very faintly what could be voices but not being sure, or whatever. One night it was cold and I had my window open. Browsing internet on laptop by my bed. No one home but I mean no one ever is most of the time. Decide I want to get some water from the bathroom's faucet. Bathroom is only a couple of feet from bedroom so I go. Fill up cup, start drinking. After about half a minute, I start to feel weak. Vision goes blurry and I grab the door. Heart going incredibly fast, sweating everywhere. Realize I can't feel door. Open my eyes and I can't see anything. Fall onto door, end up on knees. My hearing starts to go but I can hear a really high pitched ringing from outside my bedroom window and the sounds of traffic. Most of my senses were shot but I felt like something was coming up the stairs. No one was home. Full panic mode. Close to passing the hell out, I blunder around and close the door and lock it. On my knees for 30 minutes but whatever was there left in 10. MFW it was probably just me hallucinating. CAPTCHA and HEROES ON. Okay, I have a story from when I was 3. This is one of my earliest memories. We were living in a house that my parents always say was haunted, but I was too young to remember most of the things they say happened there. But I do remember one weird thing that happened to me. And sorry that I'm horrible at writing stories. So, I was sitting at the kitchen table eating lunch while my dad was on the other side of the kitchen doing dishes or something. I was eating macaroni and cheese in the shape of Looney Tunes characters. I was waiting for my grandma to come pick me up to babysit me while my dad went to his second shift job. None of these things are relevant to the story, but I just want to say that this is how clearly I can remember that day. From where I was sitting, I could see the front door, which had a screen in it so you could see out. While I was eating, I noticed that there was this weird, bird thing, sitting at the door, staring at me. I'm not really sure how to describe it, and it didn't really look like a bird, but it was this thing that had feathers and a beak was dark red and gray, and about 4 feet tall. And it was just sitting there staring at me with a look of anger. Like, I could tell just by its eyes that it wanted to hurt me. I can remember that look as clearly today as if it happened yesterday. I don't remember whether it eventually just left, or if I looked away and it was gone, but eventually it wasn't there anymore and I continued eating and never saw it again. Maybe it was just my little kid mind imagining things, I don't know. But I don't think I will ever be able to forget the image of those eyes staring me. Do you guys remember the earthquake before Hurricane Irene? This happened that same day. Also rescued my kitty that day, she'll be too soon but I digress. Living at my mom's at the time, 21 years old. No work, outside tanning and watching birds after cleaning up the lawn. Feel faint tremors in my area of New York. Birds all fly off squawking, bird feeders start swaying. Head inside to make sure everything all right, mostly no broken glass. All safe and sound but kitchen table draws my eye. Had left a mess of papers there, applications for colleges and other personal work. They are all nearly stacked, not sorted. Hear murmuring coming from the closet by the back door. Multiple soft voices that disappear quickly. I lost interest in the paranormal that day for the earthquake, I'm a geonut to be honest. Still weird though. You guys might like this. 
I got an American Godzilla toy one year as a present, pig related. So this thing was really big, like two feet tall. Its back spines were turned into a handle with a trigger and a button on it. When you pulled the trigger his foot would lift up and step on this taxi that was part of the base that held this thing and the toy would make a loud crashing sound. When you pressed the button his tail would swing from side to side and the speaker would let out a whoosh noise. So I never liked this toy cause it was too big to play with and the arms and shit didn't move, so I stuffed it under my bed. A few years later I changed rooms in the house and moved all the shit I had, including that Godzilla toy, which went into the closet. A couple weeks go by and one night I'm woken up by a whoosh noise. I look around my room and figure I imagined it and close my eyes. Then I hear that crashing sound of the taxi and remember the toy. The thing won't shut the hell up. Off and on for like 10 minutes it's just making noise, until I get out of bed and start going through the closet looking for it. I find the goddamn thing and pull out the ancient batteries and stuff it back in the closet and go to bed. The next night I'm about to drift off and I faintly hear that whooshing noise. What the hell? I pulled out the batteries right? I go into the closet and pull out the toy, sure enough there aren't any batteries in it. The thing makes the whoosh noise again and I drop it and scuttle into the corner of my room. Now it stays silent for like 5 minutes as I stare at it. Then it starts to make the crashing taxi noise over and over. Nothing on it is moving but it's still making that noise. So I grab it and run it out of my room and into the living room, and cover it with blankets to stifle the noise. I didn't sleep that night. The next day was the weekend so I took that thing into my backyard and went at it with an axe. I couldn't find any pictures of the actual toy so I had to improvise with some MS paint. The base was a busted up city street. This is weird I guess. Camping. There's my group of friends and some people we're familiar with from school who came there separately it's kind of a party spot. Go to sleep in a hammock near to my friends sleeping bags. According to those sleeping around me I got up around 4 in the morning. Anon what's up? I'm going to go look at the lights. Friends go back to sleep figure I mean the city lights. Wake up in my bed the next morning. I can't remember a single thing after I went to bed none of the getting up nothing. I talked to some of the other people I kind of knew up there they said they saw me wandering around and staring at the moon. Here's mine. Not really paranormal but still scary. I work for a baseball organization. My job is to chalk the baseball fields, batters boxes and foul lines, and put out scoreboard controllers. There are three complexes that I do this at. At night I have to go back to the complexes after the games are done and pick up the scoreboard controllers and put them back up in the shed. About a week ago I went back later than usual, about 11 o'clock, to pick up the controllers. It's pretty eerie normally because of how dark and sketchy the area is. I drive up to the first complex and see a Ford parked badly in the back row of the parking lot with no one inside. The games have been over for in two hours so there's no reason a car should be there. I didn't think much of it at that time and I picked up the controllers and went on my way. At the next complex there was another Ford truck in the otherwise empty lot parked carelessly in the back row with no one inside. I'm a little creeped out now. I started hearing noises at this point when I walk stuff like feet shuffling in the gravel and chain link fences quietly rattling. I ran and get all the controllers in the shed and ran like hell back to my car. I drove over to the last place and saw yet another empty truck parked in the back of the parking lot. I'm debating whether to get out of my car or not now at this point because I'm that afraid. I eventually get enough courage to leave my car and get the one controller that was out. The shed of this site is right by the bathroom and as I crept up to the shed, I heard a man's hushed voice coming from the woman's bathroom. I couldn't make anything out that he was saying but he sounded angry. I was able to unlock the shed and put the controller in without drawing any attention, I assume, because the man kept talking. When I closed the door though, the talking abruptly stopped and I heard footsteps walking out of the bathroom. I ran as fast as I could back to my car and didn't look back. 
I got in my car and sped all the way to my house which was about 2 miles away. When I got out of my car I heard police sirens in the distance. I went inside and locked all my doors. I don't know if I was ever in any real danger or not but it was one of the scariest moments of my life. I promise you this is completely true. Well, and this is a true story. Develop feeling of being watched. Wake up one day with cuts on chest. Small, maybe made by fingernails. Every time I sleep in my bed I wake up hearing a whisper in my ear. Go to sleep. Or something like that. When I sleep in the other room I have no problems. I'm pretty sure this room is haunted. I asked clever but where the bodice were hidden once, it said my house in the blue room. Blue room right across from my bedroom. Sometimes door opens by itself. Too spooky for me. This one is really long but it happened when I almost died during surgery. I went into surgery. I remember counting backwards and then a cacophony of noise. Then a steady buzz. When I woke up, I was in an unfamiliar apartment. After a few moments, I recognized it as mine. Got up, got dressed and went to clock in at my job at a fast food place. I talked to my friends about the messed up dreams I was having and they laughed it off, saying I always had weird dreams. The days went on and a couple of days later, I saw someone move a bunch of medical equipment into my apartment building. One of the neighbors told me that a really sick person was moving in. That night, I fell asleep to the steady beep of medical equipment. I kept dreaming I was in the hospital. They were short dreams and I wrote them off as listening to the medical equipment through those thin walls. After a week of steady dreams, I talked to my friend Hillary about the possibility of other worlds being created by dreams and stuff. She got visibly upset and asked if that meant she wasn't real. Getting unnerved I tried to laugh it off. She grabbed and started screaming I'm real, you're the one who's not real. Cops came and took her away. I didn't see her again after that. I started to notice the woods near my apartment. They were thick, dark and foreboding. I had another dream about being in the hospital but it was interrupted and I woke up to a knock on the door. It was the cops. They told me Hillary had gone missing and she was last seen running into the woods. It was a small town so everyone joined in searching for her. It was a warm day and there were other people but as I got deeper in the woods, it got colder. Snow began to fall. I asked one of the cops nearby if he was seeing this only to find I was completely alone. I couldn't even see a way out. The only solution seemed to move forward on this convenient path. The path ended in a small pond. I stared at it stupidly. Hillary appeared beside me. It only gets worse for you. She said, staring at the pond. I looked at her and realized I hadn't seen Hillary since elementary school. I looked down and I was wearing a white dress. I thought this is where I die. There was no way to go back, only forward. I stepped in the pond. I looked back and Hillary was gone. I continued to sink deeper and deeper until I was sure I drowned. I woke up in a hospital bed. Eventually, it was explained that I fell into a coma for a couple weeks. Me three years ago. Staying at girlfriend's house for a few days. Girlfriend has panic attack in the middle of the night and wakes me up saying that there is a skinny man with long blonde hair and a striped t-shirt. I laugh and tell her it's the ghost of Kurt Cobain and go back to sleep. She got mad at me but the fact that joked about it made her feel better. The next few days start to notice her cat acting weird and see shadows in the mirror. She has panic attack again during the night and mom comes to the room to calm her down with some pills. When GF leaves the room her mom confesses that her grandma killed herself in that room a few years ago and that they had problems like that before and had to call an exorcist. Never feel safe there again and break up with GF. This is a real one. The GF couldn't take it anymore and ended up moving to her dad's home and her mom now lives there alone. Brave lady. I still feel uneasy when I remember those days of seeing things move in the mirror in her grandma's room. I've got a few. I'll post them while I read the thread. First off, because locations and so on jump around a bit, 
I need to state that I've lived in 9 states, 20 plus cities, and 35 plus different houses, all in a period of 19 years, which is why some stories will be one place and others will be across the country. Longest I've lived anywhere is 5 years I think. Shortest is 5 weeks. 15ish. Move from Indiana to PA. We'd planned on moving into a nice, 200 plus year old farm. Grandmother's a con artist, moving with us, she lived with us every year of my life from 1 to 16 with the exception of when I was 12. She pisses off our future landlord as we're driving the moving truck from one state to another. Have to quickly find another place at a rest stop using a 2009 smartphone and Craigslist. It's an older house in a really small town outside Reading. Seemsakahi.jpg Get there. Landlady's nice, lives in another house on the property. Offers to take us into town for lunch. Town's built onto a rather steep hill. Cafe she takes us to is overlooking some river that goes through town, a rocky part of it. Oh, yeah, a lot of people die down there, she just randomly tells us. Really casually. Laughs about it. Start of our troubles right there. Two-story house. Mother and I are on the second story, I ended up with two bedrooms as they opened into each other. Grandmother has only downstairs bedroom. Basement, can only be accessed by going through my grandmother's room, or outside. Attic, can only be accessed by going through my room, the one I sleep in. Attic basically ends up being my third room. Go up there a few days after we move to clean. It's partially finished, with drywall and carpet, but no paint. Some kid had been playing with paints, little kids hand paints in pink and blue all over the walls. Some drawings tacked up on the wall, paper seems to be from about the 50s to 60s. Nothing creepy, just scenery mostly. But nothing in them is smiling, either. Like, the sun had a face, but it was just apathetic. Apathetic dog, apathetic sun, apathetic everything. Sort of weirded me out. Throw those out, continue cleaning. Vacuuming the carpet. Keep sucking up marbles. End up fishing six to seven marbles out of the vacuum cleaner. Older ones, from the 60s. Put them in my desk drawer. Every few days, I'd find more marbles up there. And I'd put them in my desk drawer. Only to find out I'd lost the ones in my desk. I didn't realize it was the same six to seven marbles somehow ending up back up there for years. Attic in general was creepy. Locked from the outside only. Only one key. Found children's toys from the 60s, lots of evidence that it'd been a playroom. Two crawl spaces. One went out, and had an unfinished floor. The other was on the opposite wall, went behind the stairs, and then turned. On one end of it, you could see children's drawings. On the other, you could see a stuffed animal, and then it turned. Always smelled down there. Not a guy who is spooked easily, I honestly think the house was just creepy, not necessarily haunted, for example, but I knew I didn't want to see what was around that bend. Few weeks after we moved in, I started to hear thumping up in the attic. Too big to be a raccoon or rat, too little to be an adult. Didn't really creep me out, just would keep me up at night because of the noise. Sounded like someone was running from one end of the attic to the other. I'd go up in the morning, and nothing would be out of place. Never found evidence of animals. Like I said, the attic locked. Sometimes. I'd be asleep, and it'd swing open with enough force to hit the door to my study, right by the attic door, and make a loud bang. Being me, I'd get up, find the key, and lock it again. Did this two to three times a week. Surfing online at 1 to 2 am. Hear something running around upstairs. Never has happened while I'm still up before sort of ignoring it gets louder still ignoring it suddenly i hear something fall down the stairs with quite a bit of force and slam into the attic door jump a foot in the air 
didn't sleep that night for some reason, only went to see what had happened once it was light out and my mom was up. Nothing there. Absolutely nothing. First day we're there, I notice the closet in my room is unnaturally cold. Good 10-20F colder than my room. Had two exterior walls, figure it must be that. Even though my space heater was right next to it. Smelled awful and musty. Noticed an exposed beam in the attic. Joke to myself that one could hang themselves with that. MFW landlady's husband did just that about 10 years before. And she didn't tell us until right before we moved out. Before you ask, nothing got rid of the smell either, and because of it, I didn't put my clothes in there. A few other minor things happened on the second story and attic. My computer would turn itself on at night sometimes, my dog didn't like being in my room, I'd have to drag him in there, and he'd sleep pressed up against the door, and my mother's dogs wouldn't go in it, the study was worse, as you couldn't even drag any of them into it, the study's door would swing open occasionally as well, and then refuse to close. Probably a few other things I'm forgetting. I ended up pulling the carpet up in the attic, only to find the floor under it was covered in children's drawings, but that's really about it. Nothing was really overwhelmingly creepy and I slept fine in my room most nights. I did later find out, that in addition to her husband dying, the owner prior to her, and her husband, was a family that moved out in the late 60s, after their kid died, which creeped me out a little. The creepiest part of the house was the basement, by far. House was built in the late 1890s. When going down in the basement, I noticed something a bit odd. It was a bit smaller, about 25%, than the first floor. A few days later, notice that three of the walls are stone, one is partially stone, running the length of the kitchen, and then turns to brick behind the stairs. Hole in the wall. Something about it just made me uncomfortable. Finish up, go back upstairs, forget it for a while. Few weeks later, get bored and brave. Shine light in the hole. Furniture in there from the late 1800s early 1900s. Chair, trunk, dresser. Set up like in a room. Oh. Couldn't see the other half of the room, decided against it. Never looked in there again, never told mother. Knew she'd flip, she's big into the haunted house stuff, wanted to stay someplace for once, forgot about it. Always felt watched from the hole in the basement, though. Grandmother would complain about us going in her room at night and going in the basement. Swore up and down that neither of us were doing that. She'd also complain about us messing with the door, moving stuff around down there at night, and making a general racket. As per usual, the dogs wouldn't go down there, either. Only other thing about the area was the woods. If we went to the city, reading, it was fine. But in the town we were in? Hell no. Trees didn't bend right. Would randomly fall over in good weather. Always a down tree in the roads. They felt like they didn't want you in them, even if you were just driving through. Never saw animals in them. Never saw people in them. Always felt watched. Our landlady told us there was a third house, in addition to ours and hers, on the property, and that we could go look at it if we wanted to. Gave us directions a mile or two up a trail past her house. My mother, dog, and I set out one day to go up there. Got maybe 150 feet in the woods, decided against it, it just was an overwhelming feeling of, not welcome and my dog was trying to get out of his collar and go home. My mother's one dog will run if he gets loose. He comes back, but for 30-ish minutes you can't catch him until he gets tired. He got out there. Headed for the woods. Stopped a second at the edge of them. Turned around. Went home. The property had a lean-to slash barn. I was going through it. Home alone, no one else on the property. Right at the edge of the woods. Felt like I was being watched. Decided against going through the barn. Had a rabbit outside. Got out, 
went missing for a few days. Figured it dead, since we were right by the woods and it was winter. One day, showed up in its cage again, with a broken back and a bloody nose. Died a couple of days later. Other than that last bit, nothing really happened outside. Our landlady's house was built in the 1880s onto a house that was much older, 1810 at earliest, and connected to it by a door. What always bugged me about it, was that her house was in good shape, but the older one was let to rot until it was just three stone walls and some old beams. Probably laziness, but it creeped me out that they just let it do that, despite them being connected. We moved after living there for four months. Creepiest place I've ever lived. Got a few unrelated stories, though. Last year. Still live with mom. We have a farm now. Bottle feeding a calf, mother has a job that makes her work late. Have to go out and feed it. Previously mentioned dog that runs gets out when I leave the house at about 10 p.m. Takes off running into the woods. Follow him, these woods don't bug me. Can't see him, no light, and he's black. There's a creek back there, and as I'm going over it, bridge, I hear splashing in it. Thinking, that goddamn dog is in there, and I'm going to need to give him a bath. Just as I finish that thought, he takes off running past me, dry as can be. Splashing grows louder. Head on back home, find dog waiting for me on the front porch. Few months later. Have a pet llama, out in the field where she is at night working on something. She's a bro, following me around while I'm working. Suddenly, she starts doing this warning call. See, when a llama is startled they start clicking. PPPTPPPTPPTT sound sort of. She's doing that full blast, ears back, towards the woods. Heading over there, doing that noise still. Gets to the edge of the woods, obviously watching something. Suddenly gets spooked, jumps, turns around, and runs back to the barn. Decide if whatever it was scared a 250 plus pound llama, it's probably not something I want to mess with. Worth noting that this llama is not afraid of dogs, coyotes, or anything else we get in southwest Michigan. She goes after pretty much anything if it seems threatening, which was why I didn't want to deal with what was in the woods. Meant to put a space between those two. Not sure why it didn't work. Other than that. Live in NC a couple years ago. Old house, again. Not really spooky at all. Used to be a fireplace in my room, boarded up, chimney long gone. Mirror over the mantel. Go in my room, out of the corner of my eye see something move in the room behind me from the mirror. Did that a few times. Every time, there'd be nothing back there. Freaked me out. Closet door in that house would swing open randomly, too. Just, randomly do it. Ended up putting bells on it so I'd know if it did it during my sleep. Bells kept falling off the door handle. B17. Go out to friend's uncle's hunting cabin sometime in spring. Cabin was 20 minutes out of Selkirk, Manitoba. On either side of cabin was fields with tall grass to the back was a cemetery. Six friends all getting high and drinking. Night rolls around and we hear tapping at the door. At first we're spooked and we write it off as bugs or something. Out of nowhere there's this huge bang against the door, it was hard enough to knock something off the cabinet close to the door. We all bolt for the room and hide. Next day rolls around we're all spooked and we spend the day doing nothing and decide we're not going to stay another night. It's probably 11 or 12 at night so it's pitch black out so we bring flashlights. We have to go out back to turn off the generator. As we're walking by I flash my light through the bushes, I'm terrified of bears so I'm a bit paranoid in the woods. On my first swoop I see this white thin thing watching us from behind a tree. If you've played Skyrim this thing looked almost identical to a Falmer except it had really long fingers and really dark eyes. Anon, there's something watching us, act cool until we get the generator off and then book it for the van. We turn it off make a dash for the van and bolt the hell out. My other friend who had no idea what was going on started screaming, what the hell is that, as soon as we started to drive off. 
I've always wanted to go back to that cabin to see what it was. But I've stopped talking to the friend who owned the place. I recently started talking to the one who saw it and he was as freaked out as I was. Pick related. Had the same thing happen to me once. Doing farm work, light stuff though like sorting our shed a little and fixing a fence. Cut my hand, come in to wash it and bandage it. Not a bad cut. Washing my hand. Suddenly feel really, really weak and a bit dizzy. Vision's blurry. Hearing is foggy. Stumble out of kitchen, can barely walk. Loud ringing in my ears. Barely manage to kick off my shoes and fall on the sofa. Lie there dizzy and half deaf, listening to my ears ring for 10 to 15 minutes. Can't feel anything, feel numb. Feeling of immense dread. Slowly gets better. Hour later I feel fine and go back to work. I think it's something medical tbh. Well this is my first time on slash x slash and I try to think logically about all situations, but something happened a few years ago that creeped me and my friends out hard. Five of us went camping with our scout group. The adults slept with the kids in a sort of hostel whilst the older lads, 17 to 18, slept in a tent outside. This hostel is situated in the northeast of England's biggest nunnery, which meant there was this huge ass cross and a huge ass graveyard beside the hostel. Thinking it'd be cool, we set our tent up right next to the graveyard. In the graveyard were nearly 100 normal grave slabs all ranging from about a 100 years ago. None newer. All were slabs apart from one who was the founder of the hostel, which was an extremely large dark grey angel facing the away from the tent we pitched. This angel creeped me the hell out whenever I looked at it. So we decide to check out the graveyard at night, 11 pm, when all the younger ones had went to bed. We walked up to the yard and noticed something straight away. The angel was glowing bright white. Thinking about it, there are probably rocks that do this, but I'm no geologist, so if any of you could clarify that it'd be great. We all kinda stood staring at it, expecting something to happen. Nothing did. We walked towards it real slow. When we got to about 20 meters away, its head violently turned to the side and holy shit we froze. One of the guys started to whimper. We stood for a few seconds and ran to the tent. When I got to the tent, looked back at it and it was facing away as before. Nothing I can't think of explains it. Any ideas? I can assure you I don't take drugs or have a family history of mental illness. All five of us can recall what happened. I guess the old cliche that it would have been colder around the angel would occur, but it was January, so it was bloody cold all over. Just thought I'd let you guys know. I'm still in the process of writing this out at length, it's a bit all over the place at the moment so green text will have to do for now but it doesn't cover everything. Be March 1998. Fall and bang head at school. Wake up standing over toilet taking a piss. Feel head, no bump, no cut, no pain. Finish pissing. Wash hands. Look in mirror. Whoa. I'm older and bigger. My hair is different. I have stubble. I'm wearing a suit. Leave bathroom. Go downstairs. House full of people also in suits. Everyone avoids eye contact with me. See funeral car through window. Flowers arranged to read mom. See my nan. Nan WTF is going on. You need to be strong and on. WTF is going on where is my mom? TH this is her funeral. WTF WTF, where is my dad? Nan starts crying. He's been dead for 8 months. Run out of house. Keep running and running. Sit down on bench. Search pockets, find wallet. I have credit cards and driver's license. WTF I'm 15? WTF? Walk around confused. Some hours later, go to shop. Buy water. See newspapers for first time. Red date. November 22, 2003. Six months later, after having gaps filled in by people that claim to be my friends, who I have no memory of, and my girlfriend of two years, 
Again I don't remember her, I sold everything I inherited and went traveling, I'm still traveling now and it's been 10 years. I'm currently in Amsterdam. Two weeks after waking up my best friend came over to see me, the first thing he said was so Anam, I heard you were back. I have videos taken of myself during the 5 years I don't remember, the person in them is not me. Speech patterns are wrong, body language is wrong, everything is wrong. Be about 11 to 13. Up late one night watching TV in room. Drifting in and out of sleep so I decide to turn TV off. Can't find remote. Hate sleeping with any light on or sound. Get up and start walking down hallway to sister's room. As I'm walking hear faint footsteps and laughter, sounded like a young girl. Freak out a bit but don't worry about it. Grab sister's remote and start walking back to my room. Hear footsteps again as I just pass kitchen. Freaking the hell out man.jpg. Leg it to my room. Turn TV off and sit down for about 3 minutes before returning remote. As I walk down the hall I'm looking down at floor and hurrying. Hear a small bump and decide to look up. Heat drops as I see small girl standing near fridge in a white dress and black hair, obvious grudge look. Stand there for what seemed like forever but was really only a few seconds. Throw remote towards it. Run like hell. Starting shaking uncontrollably and crying loudly. Mum runs in, what's wrong Anon? I saw a ghost. Don't be stupid and go to bed. MFW my own mother still doesn't believe me to this day. Only my aunt really believes me with this, she's a believer herself. Got one more freaky story if you wish to hear? Okay just for you. Like I said before aunt is only person that really believes me. About 6 months after this occurred aunt was looking after my brother, sister, and I for a week. Parents were out of town. It's about 11.30pm on a school night and I can't sleep. Which was odd because I usually drop to sleep straight away. Hear strange scratching on my wall. Freak out and remember what happened before. Close eyes tight and hold pillow over my head so I don't hear the sound again. Still hear it. But this time with loud bumps on the wall as well as scratching. Freaking out. Call my brother, room beside me, share same wall. Ask if he hear the bumps and scratching. Laughs and says no what the hell are you talking about go to sleep. End up falling I'll sleep around 1.30 am. Wake up around 3 and look directly at my feet. Figure standing at feet with my face at all. Could make out the black hair but that's about it. Close eyes tight and start crying loudly. That must have scared it off because when my aunt came to my room there was nothing there at all. I may as well add the last freaky stroy to this. BTW my house was built near a large mangrove area in a new development. Aunt decides that while she's at my house she'd call a psychic or ghost whisperer or whatever. Some old lady comes over the next day. Walks around my house for about half an hour. We all go into my room. Tells me something strange is in here. Freak out some more. She does some shit to me in my room. Come to the conclusion that I had an 8 year old girl attached to me. Her name is Sarah and she was strangled and graped in the mangroves near my house. No reason why she was attached to me. The lady does her shit and tells me she's gone. Haven't had a problem since. I was so happy when this happened, but after a while I felt bad for getting rid of her when she was only young and a murder slash grape victim. But then I think screw her she could have messed with me more than she did. This reminds me of what happened when my grandpa died. Drove down to Florida with family for funeral. Me and other kids slept on couches. Someone heard the dining room chandelier fall, I kept sleeping. When we all wake up grandma tells us that it fell right where and when grandpa would usually be having his morning coffee. Says she always hated it, and now grandpa was giving his okay to replace it. And inspects chandelier, screw holding it in the ceiling had been stripped. I got freaked out thinking I was going to see grandpa's ghost or something. My grandma had told me stories the summer before this about how she talked to the ghost of her mom in the backyard. Pick is not actual chandelier but looks similar. I have a few probably not creepy enough but I've never shared them on slash x slash so if anyone is interested in more let me know. It's all happened in the last 3 or 4 years. I'll preface this by telling you I work as a tour guide at a cave, my mom worked there when I was a kid. She doesn't now but that essentially how I got the job. There is some relevancy to that I promise. At work, 
giving tour in a passageway called, Hall of the Mountain King. Pick related, albeit not a very good one and yes it was pulled straight from Google. Looking up the stairs while talking, because that's the way I'm facing. See someone at the top of the stairs. Realize I've stopped talking. Oh sorry guys, thought I saw someone up there. Tourist says, I thought I did too. Little later in tour hear what sounds like a tour right in front of us. Oh god what's taking them so long? Go and peek to see how far along they are, no one is there. I talked to my mom after that on phone asked her if she'd ever seen anything funny in the cave. She knows I'm a big coward and danced around the subject before telling me she'd heard the same thing, and I discussed it with co-workers. We call it the phantom tour, it happens often enough now that it doesn't bother me now. There's also Norman, the strange barking, the bouncing ball of light, and other stories from various co-workers and myself. Just for you, Anon. How about one of Norman? Norman is original owner of the cave, grandfather of the current owner. He's dead, I don't know how he died. I think in blood clot in the brain. Do not know about Norman at the time. Giving tour, been having problems with idiots trying to go places they shouldn't be in. Notice someone trying to sneak off down a passageway. Loudly shout sir, the cave is pretty big, and it's kinda dark down there, could you please stick with the group. I'm ignored, he goes down there anyway. I'm frustrated, ask the rest of the group if there's someone missing. Lots of nope, we have everyone's. Screw it, let them stay down there, assholes. Mention to the desk I probably lost someone tell them what happened. What color shirt was he wearing? Red, I think. Go to take cigarette break, they're whispering catch the word ghost. What? Oh you probably just saw Norman. I've seen him quite a few times, mainly in the downstairs classrooms and helmet washing room. Washing helmets, catch something out of the corner of my eye. Go to investigate. Door to one classroom is swinging, so I go in. See guy walk down into man-made cave entrance. You're not allowed down there. Norman doesn't give a damn. Norman owns that joint. Here's one I didn't really give much thought to at the time. In one part of tour I always see a bouncing light at the top of a passageway. One slow day we're discussing ghosts in the cave. Old manager says when I was a tour guide, in the Grand Canyon I always saw this light at the top of the passageway bounce back and forth. I have no words. I never brought it up with anyone because I thought it was a glare on my glasses, but my manager doesn't wear them, never had worn them, and didn't need them. Haven't saw them since. I've tried debunking the barking noises. When you're in the cave you're about five stories underground you can't hear what goes on up on the surface at all, unless you're at one of the entrances which I was not, I was about 17 stories down the side of the mountain and my tour and I were definitely the only people in the cave at the time. Furthermore, all the entrances directly to the outside are barred off and nothing bigger than a mouse could get through them, or would be turned off because of how dark it was without lights. Late in the season, small group of people no kids, all middle-aged women. Really calm, nice quiet group. Rounding corner, here a dog. I must be crazy. Did you ladies say something? Nope why? I'd been there for two years at that point so I'm getting the hang of controlling myself when weird shit happens. Eh? No reason no reason to alarm them. Stop to give part of the speech. Hear it again. Okay come on, this is ridiculous. No one else hears it. Whatever, finish tour without any more barking. Go to do other duties once tour is done, co-worker how had given an earlier tour comes to me. Anon, did you notice anything funny about the cave today? No more than usual. I heard growling, in part of the cave I had heard barking. Oh, yeah I heard it too. Send maintenance down to check, no dogs in cave. No paw prints in mud. Occasionally still hear it while I'm down there. This one doesn't involve me much personally but happened to my mother's friend for a long while. 
Mother's friend lived in this old as balls house, Victorian, I think. Had three floors, top floor was always really really quiet. I used to go there as a kid to play on the computer, hated the computer room, always cold, always quiet. One night she can't sleep because her husband keeps snoring so she gets up and goes up to the third floor where the spare room is. Wakes up in the middle of the night feeling like she's being strangled. Pretty standard stuff, still, weird. She starts believing there's a ghost in her house, does a bunch of research. Finds out the man who lived there before was a notorious misogynist. Some other time I was there as a teenager doing some garden work. I walk through the hall and suddenly her two dogs start barking like crazy up the stairs. I look curiously at them and she just mouths it's the ghost to me. I knew the story, didn't really believe it but it was odd. Some time later, her brother was staying over at her house, and slept in the guest room on the third floor. He comes down in the morning looking pale as balls. He's not a superstitious man, nor is he very easy to frighten. Asks her, hey, did you come into my room and hold my hand last night? She says no. He says right. Well, someone did. Very strange. Happened in the 90s, I was about 16 at the time. Was staying with my aunt for a bit during one autumn. She lives in a rural area, not completely isolated, but lots of open fields, woods. A friend of hers who I didn't know well died, and I stayed at the house while my aunt went to the wake. I was out on the porch smoking a cig. It was pitch black that night, no moonlight at all. Anyway, the porch light overhead started flickering, and then the thing went out. All of a sudden I heard something springing towards the house. Like bare feet slamming on the dirt and the fallen leaves. Never booked it out of there and locked the door behind me so fast in my life. I grew up in northern Michigan, in the Grand Traverse County. My mom liked to take us hiking a lot, because there are many beautiful trails in the area. There is this one trail she likes to go on in the Sleeping Bear Dunes area that runs along Lake Michigan. We liked this trail because at the end of it, there was a great view on top of a hill where you could look out on the water. Plus, the trail was slightly hidden, and not many tourists knew about it. The only thing that stands out about this trail is an old cemetery just 20 feet from the trail that could be plainly seen. It belonged to a Swedish-American village that was in the area in the 19th century. One day in the summer of 2007, my mom, my brother and I were hiking past the cemetery. We went to the top of the hill, watched the sunset, then hiked back to our car. On our was back, my brother, who was almost three at the time, exclaimed, I saw Jesus in the cemetery. This really creeped us out, and I have never really been religious. This never happened again, and my brother doesn't seem to remember. We still visit the trail to this day. B20, working as a volunteer police in some rural zones of Mexico. Me and another guy got assigned in a small village, too small to be a town, but too big to be a ranch. When we arrive the locals tell us that they don't have a police office nor extra beds, so we had to roam and sleep on the truck. Village is boring as shit, only two days to get out of there. 10 pm, dark as hell because they don't have street lamps, people still roaming the streets so we turn up the truck lights. See a lot of movement and some people running into their homes, see a lot of old folks with weapons gathering near the road that goes to the Sierra. Oh shit this is re all over again. Ask a local lady what's going on. She tells us that they found someone doing some mumbo jumbo witchcraft ritual in the nearby woods. Me and my partner run over there to check it out. An old guy tells us that they don't allow witchcraft in their village, but they are scared to face the witches, or brujas. Me and my partner walked into the woods like for 10 minutes until we saw a small campfire. Hear some scream coming from the campfire so we ran over there because maybe someone was in trouble with wild coyotes or something. As soon as we arrived at the small campfire area, two huge Askoloitskewintles run beside us. Me and my partner dropped our asses to the floor because we were already shitting our pants. We checked the campsite and found some burning herbs, some carved stones and a headless chicken. Like two minutes later a sickening smell was coming from the road opposing the village. We noped the hell out of there to the village and told the locals what we found. 
they tell us that they are going to check it out. At 2 am, the old folks wake us up telling us that they found a two dead bodies, we ran over there and basically followed the guy to where the smell was coming, but that shit was not a dead body. I can describe it as two piles of human flesh, no hair, face, arms, nothing, just, you know, flesh. We returned to the village and gave the forensic a call. He didn't arrive until 8 am because he had to sleep. He said that, well, the piles were made of human flesh. We packed the flesh in the black bags that they use for dead bodies and put it on our truck. We escorted him back to the city, and we returned to the village to complete our last day there. When we arrived, all the folks were in the small plaza screaming and yelling shit. We quickly ran over there. The old guys were using sticks to beat the koloitsky wimples that looked like the ones from last night, but the kolos were screaming like human beings. Me, my partner and most of the young folk were scared shitless, but the old folk looked like they were used to it. They burned the kolos corpses and the oldest guy of the village told us that they were nawals, a kind of bruja that can shapeshift into animals. Two hours later, the forensic called and told us that the flesh piles disappeared from the morgue, but the smell was still there. I was so scared that I spent all night with my eyes closed, too scared to even look into the woods. Too long didn't read, Mexico is a scary place. Sorry for my bad English and the long boring text, but I wanted to share, pick related. Having read most of these it's making me feel like I've missed out on seeing some cool paranormal shit. Although, I guess I have one short story. Be me. Moved to new house in England. House had a lot of pigeons slash birds on the roof all the time for no reason. Thus frequent noises from roof slash attic. Attic hatch on the ceiling of my room. Attic unchecked since we moved in cause no ladder slash way to reaching it. Go to bed one night. Attic hatch slid open halfway when wake up. Freaked, parents blame it on the wind. Bedroom window closed cause it's England, cold. No wind. Parents eventually checked attic only to find an awkward placed hole in the roof, leading to neighbor's roof, and a load of pigeons in our attic we moved house shortly after that. About two hours west of Calgary, deep into the foothills but not in the mountains. Driving home from hiking trip with buddies, me, two guys and two other girls. About 1 am. Car makes an unpleasant sound. Debt clutch burning smell dough. Poor old Subaru gets sluggish going up a hill, then cuts out just at the top. Put the park brake on, we just sit in the car planning how to get home. We all just sit and chat while waiting for our ride, they're about two hours away. It actually became pretty relaxing. We were all tired, had a great day, and we just sat in the car debriefing, spending some quality time. Half hour later, 1.5 hours left on the stranded clock, a rusty red pickup pulls over behind us. That feel when I'm pretty afraid of hicks. They walk up to our window, see if we need help or anything. One of them is clearly hammered, but I don't think he was the driver. Blah blah hiking trip blah blue a clutch blah blah tell them the story so far. The drunk one stumbles about the whole time, so it was very noticeable when he suddenly stopped. In the light from my car's interior I could see him dumbstruck, pupils fully dilated, staring into the ditch. After a few seconds of silence, we all look around to figure out what he's staring at. Atmosphere becomes tense, everyone starts freaking out a bit. W-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-P Police car snuck up on us, scared the shit out of everyone with the siren. Two Royal Canadian Mounted Police dudes get out, sweating buckets and in full battle regalia. One of them pants something unintelligible. The other remains composed, asks the standard is there a problem here? Have any of you been drinking, etc. I ask why the first officer is freaking out. He thinks he saw something. I explain how drunk Imgridnek was saw something too. Second officer flinches, almost reaches for his gun. Super serious where was it? I ask what's going on. 
Second officer leans in and whispers, trying not to scare anyone, we believe someone armed and dangerous has made their way out here. Second officer, half whispering, what I'm gonna do is send these other guys on their way, but since you're stuck it's best if the constable and I stay here until you ride arrives. Second officer, announcing, all right, you good old boys can make your way home, and the constable and I are going to stay with you campers until your ride is here. No telling what you might run into this late at night. First officer is silent, peering into the trees, hand near something on his belt. Second officer trying to keep control of the situation, but first officer is kind of freaking everyone out. Stranded clock, 1 hour 15 minutes remaining. Police take a sidebar, hushed and frantic whispers. My friends and I are all silent, everyone but, let's call her Kate, is more confused than scared. Kate is just plain scared. Anon at we have to go now. We have to leave. Dude, calm down. We're not going anywhere without a working vehicle, we'll just wait for a friend with van to get here. Mob psychology, Kate's starting to freak everyone out. Let's call him Robbie, I'm starting to get a little freaked out. Me, shut up. Second officer is back, taps on window. Holy shit jump scare everyone screams a little. Second officer, suddenly seeming a little afraid, listen, I don't want anyone to freak out, but something's come up. Stay in the vehicle and keep your windows up. It is very important that you stay put. No one leaves the car until I say so. You're about to see a lot more police officers show up, don't be alarmed over it. Or I'll don't get more alarmed. His radio cuts in. Unit 3 dash by the creek dash it's got dash terrified screams help. Send help. We're all silent for a second as the walkie talkie cuts out. More police are just showing up, asking questions like it's near here right. What just happened by the creek? Pain screams become audible. Louder, closer, more frantic by the second. After a minute and a half of the most palpable tension I've ever experienced, of Kate and, let's call her Anne, sobbing in the back, and of a half dozen police frantically radioing, the screams are very near us. An officer darts out of the trees, screaming at the top of his lungs. IT took him. It took Hiyayim. The officer whips out his gun and, as he clambers behind a police car, starts shooting into the trees. The guns are out. Pistols, shotguns, rifles, everything. Sounds like the battle of Vimy Ridge out her. All screaming and incessant gunshots. The police are in full panic mode, wasting ammo like something you don't even see in the movies. Something wails horribly, louder than the gunshots. Here I hit the bastard muffled by the sounds of gunpowder. They stop after a few more seconds. Everyone in the car slowly starts to unduck, but the second officer yells stay down. Another horrible wail. All of the police are silent, I hear a few weapons hit the ground. I look up, all of the police are gawking at something in the air over the ditch, illuminated in the searchlight. It's long, thin, and wrinkly. It's human shaped, but with no clothing, no facial features, no genitals. Just tough wrinkly skin, covered in infections and pustules, draped over a big, vaguely human-shaped frame. And it's just floating there. Just levitating, about 20 feet off the ground, almost doing that ballerina pose that Superman does when he floats. It had no eyes, but I could feel it staring. I woman out, start sobbing quietly. I can feel it focusing on me. Bang. One last shot and it wails some more, and flies away. It was another 45 minutes before our ride showed up. We were all huddled down in my car the entire time. The police didn't seem afraid anymore. They seemed dejected, like they had failed. They all stood around silently, looking down into their thermoses as they stripped of their body armor and drove off, one car at a time. When our ride showed up, one last car was sitting there behind us. 
the first and second officers from before got out and talked to friend with Van before letting him see us. Those guys look pretty scared. They told me not to ask you what happened. If something's scaring the heavily armed dudes that much, maybe I won't ask. And that was the end of it. We rode home in silence, almost afraid to make eye contact, as if the slightest communication would make what just happened even more real. We still go hiking sometimes, but we never talk about that, and we never wait too long to hit the road. My main creepy story. Be like 11 to 13, who remembers that shit. Really want new phone so I throw my old phone out the window on a motorway and tell my parents I lost it. Okay well get you a new one. About a week later wake up in my room and there is a girl about my age at the time, 11 to 13, stood watching me, waves and puts my phone on my bedside table. Thanks. She grins, rows on rows of teeth. Sleep in dog's bed with pet Great Dane for rest of night. Rimmer was an awesome dog, he didn't take no shit from ghosty bitches. The girl was wearing this white gown but the bottom was torn and messy, like she had been running through a muddy field or something, by far the creepiest thing I have ever experienced. Gonna tell this story I just remembered. I don't know what it was, but it sounds like a skinwalker slash wendigo creature based on the stories I read here. Never told this before as I've only just started browsing slash x slash about a week ago. B10, Britbong. Go to Cumbria to spend the summer at my uncle's whilst he and my dad work on his house. Uncle lives with grandmother and they have this huge house in the middle of the woods. Really hilly as well. As my dad and uncle work on the roof I decide to go exploring in the gardens. A small clearing of land surrounds the house before it transitions into thick woodland. See a patch of no grass in a small area. Head over to see it, thinking it was a log or some shit. It's a deer carcass, and it smells like death. Deers are common in this area. I remember it like it was yesterday, the flesh had been torn from nearly every bone but from around the head. Feel a cold sweat and just nope out of there. Head back to house, climb up to roof by a scaffolding and tell uncle about sighting. I remember him pausing as soon as I said that and looking out towards the clearing I was talking about. After a momentary pause, ah don't worry about it, it's probably just a fox. A fox? You kidding me? Shrug it off, go inside, call it a day. Be some time later, two weeks or so. Me. Uncle and dad head down to local DIY store one morning to get some tools and some slate or something. Nothing unusual, head back home and have lunch. Grandmother says that while we were out, she saw a black figure walking around on all fours on our driveway, said it looks like a big dog but its hind legs were longer than its front, but it was just a shadow to her and couldn't see it very well. Greater than 10 year old me gets scared as hell immediately think about that deer corpse. Uncle, who has been in a woods plenty of times, tries to say it was probably a wild cat, like a black panther or something. This is a reasonable explanation as in the 1970s, owning large cats was banned in England, so many people just decided to abandon the cats by letting them free into the woods. But no big cat would go so close into our garden, not to mention our driveway as apparently they are very timid as far as big cats go. So I spend the next week or so nervous as hell to go outside. Third and final account of shit that happened at my uncle's. Be a few weeks later after grandmother sighted weird creature. Forgotten all about it on the final week I have to stay at my uncle's before he and my dad have a four month break on working on the house. The woods which surround our house are on the side of a steep hillside which apparently is popular with mountain bikers. Me, my dad and uncle decide to go in a woods cause why not, and to see how well it is for mountain biking. I'd completely forgotten about previous events before this. We go in through a gate at the bottom of our driveway and head in the woods. Air is musky, it's really hot weather, 30 C, and it's dark as hell. Fast forward 30 minutes. We're in the thick of the woods after heading in one continuous direction up this hill. There are plenty of paths going off in all different directions that had been left by bikers. 
we stop to look at our map and all of a sudden hear this thudding sound, like really loud. We all turn around to see a number of deer sprinting like lunatics up the hill. Too exited about exploring to give a damn but my uncle looks concerned and says it's a good idea to keep heading up the hill. Get to the top of the hill and we're out of the woods, we stay up there for a while and my uncle says that we're gonna head down in a few minutes. We head closer to the woods and we smell the most pungent smell of rotting flesh ever. There wasn't any sewer works up here so it isn't shit. We decide to head back down. My uncle gets into his bag and pulls out a huge cookery blade nowhere. My uncle now decides to tell us that when he saw those deers running, he saw something else. And he said if was standing upright but it had the posture of a dog or a cat on its hind legs. I go internally ape shit, remembering what my grandmother said, and the deer carcass. I see my dad in the corner of my eye pulling a what the hell face and giggling, calling my uncle crazy. Ever since another one of my uncles died, I have five of them, four years prior to this, my uncle that I'm with now started acting like a bit of a lunatic. It's getting towards dusk, so we head into the woods. All the way down my uncle is getting crazy, squatting down, telling us to be silent and to keep our eyes out. The smell follows us all the way down. After 15 minutes we can see the exit to our garden, we can see our lights are on. This spooks us the hell out, since the lights outside are motion sensitive. And since our grandmother doesn't ever go outside by herself it means something the size of a human must have triggered them on very recently, they've got a cool down time of around 30 secs if I can remember. About a minute later, we hear this awful screeching sound from about 100 meters behind us, everyone jumps out of their skins, pun intended. We turn around to see this lanky, crooked dark humanoid figure. About 2 meters tall from my memory. We all completely go mad and sprint like motherfuckers to the gate. All the more I can hear this thing running towards us as well. We run through the gate as quickly as possible when the garden lights decide to switch off. We're in pitch black and can't see shit. My dad who has been holding my hand since we started running suddenly yanks me nearly off my feet as he suddenly changes direction. He reaches the house and the lights turn on and we turn around to see darkness. My uncle who is halfway down the drive when the lights turn on turns around to see us. He runs up to us and says that he could see it behind some trees just about to go through the gate, but the lights dazed him momentarily and so he lost sight of it. After about 30 seconds the stench begins to dissipate and wane. We head back inside and talk to my grandmother. We ask if she's alright, she says she's fine but she could hear knocking at the doors. After a few seconds of silence I ask what the hell that thing we saw was. My uncle tries to explain that big cat hypothesis, and that it was just a panther stood on its hind legs. I immediately call bullshit, but I don't say anything. We spend one more week there then me and my dad head off. The house my dad and uncle worked on was only just completed two years ago, and this happened about ten years ago. Ever since that night happened my uncle just loaded up on weapons and went a pretty crazy. He was also diagnosed with depression and OCD soon after as well. I guess that sight combined with the death of his brother really messed him up mentally. But as soon as he finished the house, he sold it and moved into the local town. Also, as far as how it looked, the most detailed description I can give of it personally is that it was akin to this famous Wendigo illustration, pig related, however it had a humanoid head, as far as I could tell, instead of a deer head. CBGBs. Around 2010, halfway through my service, I was a CB, naval engineer, stuck on a ship that I won't reveal the name of. Spooky, spooky stuff out there on the water at night. If you've never been in the middle of the Pacific, so land in sight, you know you're re miles away from anything, even just dirt, you've never known true isolation. The only thing that could have made it more unnerving would be to be alone. Anyway, like I said at night, out on the open empty waters, you'd hear things. Often explainable things like sudden, extremely loud splashes, probably a whale, it's just the boat, but sometimes more horrible, like one night when I heard what sounded like a really low, really loud whale call, 
but from what I understand we cannot hear a whale call from outside of the water. On the other end of that spectrum, I once heard a long drawn out shriek. It wasn't a violent one, more questioning, searching. Like it was looking for me. My friends and I joke that it was a siren trying to get me to come to the edge to look for it. So anybody on slash x slash have some sea based creep stories? Spooky shit on the ocean, man. Spooky shit. Righto. Be me, early teens. Out on a camping trip. I remember the total amount of people to this day, six. Everyone is have a good time. I'm in charge of keeping the fire going. Every two hours or so I go and get firewood. My cousin, let's call him James, and I go for the next run. James keeps going on about how great his year is and such. I just keep nodding and shrugging it off. He suddenly goes silent. I turn to him and his face is white. Also I should mention, James never stops talking for any reason at all, he would always have something to say no matter what. He sees a carcass of a deer with its side torn out. I tell him, man up, there going to be a lot more of them with all of the wildlife in this area. After the deer carcass smell goes away and James isn't scared anymore, we keep walking. A faint smell of another dead deer carcass mixed with what seemed to be spoiled milk, fills the air. James starts gagging again. James wants to go back. I tell him, it's not much further to the stockpile of wood, we'll get some and we'll go. The smell increases and James can't go on. He stays right near the area where the trail breaks. Bye bitch. Jeff. I keep chugging up the trail for the wood. See a few deer here and there. Hear some yelling and such ahead. Frogme.jpg. Dash ahead to the noise. See this younger kid and this larger figure. The kid is screaming his face off. The figure turns to me and with these cold, cold yellow eyes just opens his mouth and walks towards me. The stench at this point was unbearable. It keeps growing until I can't stand it and vomit. The creature claws at the kid and he falls to the ground, only to slowly crawl away. Nope.jpg. I pick up the small cutting axe I brought and chuck it at the creature. Hit its back. Runs off. This little kid looked to be around, 8 to 9 at the most. I'm just stunned on what just happened. I run to the kid and help him up. He's trembling. Turns out, after calming him down, he was camping relativity near us. Take him with me. Then a thought comes into my head. James. I book it down the trail to find him there all peachy and cheery, but when I ask him questions, nothing comes out. He seems like he's in pain. Or just zoned out. Kid and I are carrying the convo back to the site. My dad asks where we've been for the past hour and who the kid is. I just look at him and slowly shake my head. And that ends the tale of how I never want to go camping or into any kind of woods. Also. This is kinda what it looked like, only like 5 feet taller. Excuse my MS paint skills. Not too great but I've got some stories. Before in the morning. Can't sleep. Start hearing shit like walking in the hall and whispering. Brush it off as being tired as hell. Half an hour goes by and nothing happens. Hear a loud as bang out in the kitchen. Probably the cat but I go out anyways. Walk out into the hallway and get this feeling like I'm being watched. Brush it off as paranoia. Inspect kitchen nothing seems to have fallen or anything. Head back to room. Get to the hallway and look back at the kitchen real quick. Thought I heard something. Turn back to see some guy about six standing at the edge of hallway. Stare at each other for a couple minutes. Hear another crash in the kitchen. Turn around nothing happened. Look back at hallway guy is gone. Nope back into my room. Screw it. I'm bored and in Italy for another few hours, I'll share an encounter, no idea what the hell it was, still assume it was a bear or some shit. Be me. Be 2012. Be on camping trip with my family and friends out on Vancouver Island. 
it was this lake a few miles from Port Alberni, family friend is dating this dude from Ontario, he has his daughter with him who was just a year younger than me, hell yeah, and she was an easy 7 tenths. Literally 5 hours of meeting each other and were making out. Be next day. Going on a trail in a woods, our spot was next to a trail that took us up the river, we liked it up there because there was a rocky beach where we would make out and shit, that and it was secluded. Making out and stuff. My cousin and cousin of QT come looking for us, the QT's dad was wondering where she was. Cousin of QT is trying to convince my GF to go back and shit when my cousin tells him to shut the hell up. QT cousin tells him to piss off but then sees what my cousin sees. My cousin pulls out his knife and tells us to book it, me and QT don't know what the hell is going on BTW. I think my cousin is threatening me. I go WTF. He says if you wanna live you run with QT back to the camp. I look where he is pointing his weapon. What the living shit is that dot PNG. See what at first glance people would assume is a really underfed bear. Nope. This bitch was like Slenderman, in the sense that it was tall, but built like some bundle of sticks from slash fit slash. QT sees it too. QT is paralyzed and is unable to move. I pick her up and book it. This thing lets out a roar that sounds like a beta bundle of sticks when his crush doesn't text him back. She is sobbing in my arms while I book it down this path with my cousins following. Another virgin roar escapes from this thing as it charges after us. It ob had shit for brains because it charged head first into a tree and fell down. You got knocked the hell out. JPEG. We make it back. Family and others are sitting around the campfire. Only we know what happened. GG. I have one from ages ago. I went camping with a bunch of friends when I was 16-17-ish, 25 now, over the summer. He had a cabin kinda up in the mountains and it was pretty secluded, the nearest store was a 45 minute ride and the nearest civilization was a gas station and a trailer park about half an hour away. I remember there was this cool suspension bridge someone had built that lead over a small river slash waterfall that lead to the cabin, and while we were there he told us about white eyes. If I remember right it was sort of along the lines of a slender man type spirit. Nobody really knew what it wanted but it came and took people and they were never seen again. Don't really remember much more than that, but I went out in the middle of the night the third night we were camping to use the outhouse. I turned the corner to go around to where the outhouse was and saw this thing, a lot like what you described standing at the side of the cabin, peeking through windows and pressing its face, if you wanna call it that against the window. Bolted back inside, locked the bolted the door, and grabbed the 30 30ths my dad let me bring along. Didn't sleep for the rest of the night and just watched the windows. Anyways. My shitty camping experiences part 2. Be me, 17. Start the day off as every other while camping, get everything prepared and then have fun. Had a caravan of people out with us. Caravan consists of 3 trailers and probably, 10 to 12 people. Days were fun. Until the 4th day. I finally convinced my GF to come out with me camping. She gives in. Family is extremely nice towards her and we all welcome her. GF stays with me and my family in our trailer. We all were winding down and to end the night, we had a fire. As we're sitting by the fire, my dad and I are talking about his new rifle, .308, he wanted to sight in and shoot this weekend. Shitties.png GF usually is cool with guns. She starts to chime in and talk about how she and I should go shooting tomorrow. I reply with something like, yeah sure, sounds fun. The fire is slowly going out. Not in charge of fire so, don't really care. This horrifying screech comes out of nowhere and floods the air with its hollowing noise. GF and I nope back into the trailer. Dad tells everyone that it's just an animal and we should worry. Everyone but my dad is freaked out. I'll never forget these words. Fine, I'll go kill the goddamn thing and bring back the body. Grabs gun, and heads out. I'll can't. Anyone lurking? 
it's an experience you won't forget. That's for sure. Anyway. He storms off. GF and I go on watch for him. The area we had was lighted enough to see about 20 feet in front of us, so we could identify a lot of stuff as it came near the campsite. I'm listing for shots to be fired. Nothing from him for about an hour. See him come back. I yell, hey jackass, get what you wanted. In a joking tone. GF gives me a stupid playing punch. My dad repeats the word jackass in this hollowing tone. GF and I turn the joking laugh to a nervous laugh. Dad has his head cocked to the side as we slowly walk back into the trailer. GF looks at me and starts to almost bawl her eyes out. We lock up the cabin and tell everyone to stay the fuck inside. I remember that my dad took his .308 out with him. Glare at him as he stands there outside the trailer. No holster. No glasses. Torn up shirt. I start to nope the hell out everywhere. Then another screech rings out and makes my blood run cold. We then hear something trotting along the side of the trailer. My uncle runs outside to check it like an asshat and he runs back in. Uh. Nothing much. He turns to grab a drink and we see this huge cut on his back. We all are terrified and he had no idea about it. We patch him up and he's fine. Still worried about dad. Trotting wasn't him. Dad still was standing there. Check closet to see if my dad even took the gun. Gun is missing. Take the 20 gauge instead. Walk outside and see this disoriented face of my dad with the hollowing noise of jackass and hey. I fire a shot. The bastard darts away and appears a foot away from me. Startles me and I drop the gun and fall back. I scream what the hell do you want from me? Do you want someone else? Do you want to go inside? What the hell do you want? In the hollowed out voice it goes inside 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 and then a strecked out hell. Scramble to my feet and throw a punch. Miss and realize my entire arm is covered in blood. Fall back and crawl back inside. I pass out. When I woke up I had a bunch of bandages on my arm. GF comes and hugs me. My ears are ringing. Look out the window. Still night. I heard a faint, inside ring out from outside and I almost start to get up, but I fall back down. Turns out, I broke my leg when I tried to hit the thing. Collapse back onto the floor. I just want to find my dad. GF tells me I'm not going back out there. I physically can't I tell her. Someone ran out to help me in, but forgot to bring the gun in, so we're defenseless. Screw me, we're making some weapons. Rigged together a bunch of shit for everyone in our cabin. Wondering about everyone else in the two other cabins. Hear more of the inside and hell noises. Suddenly another gunshot rings out. My dad's friend fires a shot and hits the thing somehow. It eventually trots away while scream the same words inside and hell. Why those, I still don't know. I don't want to. Dad is still missing in action. Day finally is here. Walk outside with he help of GF. Ground is covered in blood. Suddenly, something falls out of a tree, seems like it's human-like. Hobble over to it. It's my dad. He's covered in scratches and bruises. Help him inside. Ask him what happened. He says, the second he walked into the woods, he heard this soothing noise and it suddenly turned into a ear-piercing screech and he then blacked out. Pack up within the next hour and everyone nopes the hell out. Never went back. Wheeo. That was a lot. Well. Thanks for reading why I hate camping. All stories lack truth in one fashion or another. I know this to be true because it happened to me, but whether you believe it or not is up to you. B10. First time mom leaves me home alone by myself. Making my bed, which takes a long time because I had a bajillion stuffed animals. Music blaring loudly as I do so. I hear my mom yelling for me to come to the kitchen to help her with groceries. Go to kitchen, but mom is nowhere to be found. 
Confused, go back to room. Continue making my bed. Hear mother again, this time even louder. Help me with the groceries. Now. Go to kitchen. No mom. Officially freaked out now. Go back to room and barely make it in the doorway. A shelf containing really heavy books slash dictionaries falls right where my head would have been. I would have died had I not heard my mom calling me. Cry for an hour and then feel grateful I wasn't hurt. Here's one I just posted in another thread. A slash K slash Amando Marine I was stationed near shared it with me. Marine bro stationed in Afghanistan. Being recon and shit. On patrol outside the wire. Working with friendly Afghani soldiers. Mostly them. Only a couple other marines with him. Long ass put row. Damn it's hot. Don't see anything suspicious. Don't see anyone at all. Let's call it a day boys. Start heading back to base. Everything seems fine. JPG. Get close to gate of base. Do head count. Make sure no Afghani soldier brothers didn't lost in a desert. Counts 27 including himself. Cool no one missing. Wait 27? Recounts two more times. Feels bad. JPG. They left with 26. Who the hell is with us? JPG. Recon bro shouts ugly duckling. Everyone realizes they got infiltrated. All 26 marines and afghan brothers hit the deck. One afghan bro in matching uniform and weapon looks confused as hell. He's still standing. Afghani squad leader pulls out pistol and puts three bullets in standing bro's back. Goddamn skinwalker fear mongers. Granted this is an old tactic especially used in Vietnam. Slip in with a patrol at night, get inside base. Mess shit up. But recon bro and I were a bit surprised the bastard slipped into the group in broad daylight in a vegetation free desert. Conclusion. Sneaky ass well trained enemy combatant. Or a skinwalker. Here's one more. Be me in Afghanistan. Aura marines and shit. Standing watch at LP slash up at zero dark 30. Damn it's cold in the desert at night. Sliver of moonlight out. Can barely see shit with NVGS on. Goddamn ambient light requiring shit technology. Looking at abandoned group of mud huts. Locals relocated 6 months prior after base got attacked. See random old guy in haji turban outfit. Slowly walking toward the fence line in my direction. Who the hell is this dot jpg? Radio the SOG. We got zips in the wire dot jpg. Request observation cameras zoom in, see what's up. Camera down. Again. Goddamn cameras. Still watching old hunched over dude taking slow steps towards fence line. Bastard probably counting his steps for mortar brackets. Tell SOG this via radio. SOG radios guard tower. Guard tower can't see shit in the dark. Tower pops illumination flare. Flares are eerie as shit. Lots of moving shadows as flares parachute rocks in the air. Old man gets covered in shadow from swinging flare. Flare illuminates same spot. Old dude is gone. Can't find him with NVGS. Try thermal scope. Nothing. Goddamn shifty ass Afghani goatman. Probably not paranormal. Just some old guy counting his steps to plot distance for their mortars to shoot at us. Anon in the other thread said it was a jinn or jinn. I have always felt a connection to spirits in a way. But it really came to life when we moved into the house that we have lived in for nearly 14 years. Strange things continue to happen to me to this day. So here is story 1. I was only 6 when we moved from New Jersey to Illinois. My older sister was almost 9. We had just finished moving everything into the house and everything was finally in order. Our house was pretty small, with two rooms, at the time, a small kitchen, living room, and one bathroom, we now have two. It was all on one floor, besides the laundry room which is down a few stairs from the kitchen, and through a small hallway. It was time for bed and me and my sister got into our pajamas and crawled into bed. 
I remember awaking in a slow daze, I looked over at my sister, who had also woke up. Something felt uneasy in the air. I noticed a faint melody filling the room, it was soft piano carnival-like music. We both wandered around the house and found nothing. We checked the radios and none of them were on. So we both decided to brave going into the basement. My sister and I walked down the steps and into the damp, unfinished basement. As our little feet touched the moist concrete floors, the music seemed to get louder and louder. We grasped hands and walked further into the basement looking for a reason for the music. As we reached the back corner of the basement, the music came to a halt. We heard the footsteps of heavy boots clomping down the stairs. We both looked at each other in absolute terror as we ducked behind boxes, I had to peek to see if the coast was clear. There was a figure of a man standing at the bottom of the stairs. As my eyes met him, I couldn't breathe or move. My sister ended up shaking me and turning me to her trying to ask if I was okay. I tore from her and looked back. The man was gone. I was only a child, but I couldn't help but feel terrified by this man. And he still continues to haunt me to this day. Story number 2. I had quite an imagination as a child, and I still do. I remember playing with my dolls and Barbies along with my many stuffed animals. After we had moved to Illinois, my sister stopped playing with me. It made me very sad because my sister would also bully me pretty badly as well. So I decided I needed new friends. I created friends in my imagination and I would have conversations with them every day. I would play and have so much fun. My dad had built a huge tree swing in our backyard one day and I was so excited. We swung on the sing for hours. The next day I wanted to go to the swing, but I really wasn't allowed to go by myself since I was still pretty young. My sister yelled at me and told me to, go away stupid. So I ran to the swing as fast as my feet could take me. Tears streamed down my cheeks as I relived her screaming in my face over and over. Once I had reached the swing, I noticed that there was a girl my age swinging from the swing. I walked to her slowly, saying hello. Who are you? She looked over at me with a pretty little smile. As she jumped off the swing and walked to me, she told me that her name is Emma and she was looking for a friend. I was more than happy to have met a new friend. I remember playing with her throughout childhood. And I even remember that on my birthday, she left a small glass doll under my pillow for me and she was so beautiful, I love dolls. But as I aged, I noticed that she didn't. I remember even being able to feel her hair when I brushed it. She felt so real. I still continue to see her sometimes. But she doesn't come close to me anymore it makes me very sad. She was my best friend growing up, and I consider her to be my sister. She had long dark hair and beautiful light green eyes. She was always wearing a white dress with frills at the bottom. In a way, I wish I could speak with her more, and be near her. Alright, I'll bite. I've had this story for a while but never considered sharing it. It didn't seem that odd until I saw one of these threads a while back. I'll just call these guys John and Tom for sake of anonymity. One of them browses 4chan and I haven't talked to him in years, so I don't know how he feels about me spilling his business. Be me, about three years ago. In small high school, got a few friends. Two of them decide to go camping. They tried to find other people. No success. They say screw it, go on their own. Supposed to go for the weekend. Not into camping myself, don't ask about it. Weekend passes, school again. See them on Monday. John approaches. Oh boy here we go. JPG. He seems very excited about something. Starts to tell me about their camping trip. He claims they heard noises in the woods. Says Tom left the tent during the night. He woke up alone early that morning. Tom left to take a leak and never came back. Tom's in school but seems nonplussed. Says he went home. Before I continue, I wanna explain some things. Tom was always a bro, cool to hang out with, wanted to do typical teenager shit, ECT. After this, he was just, strange. That sounds corny as hell, I know, but, he acted strange in unexpected ways. For example, at the parties which he frequently went to, he went from being the talkative fun guy to being the guy who started crawling on the floor and grabbing people's legs. 
or the guy who sits slack-jawed in chairs with his head back when he thinks no one's looking. Just, strange shit. But, I'll get into all of that later. Continue. Don't question it too much, maybe he got scared. Hang out with Tom, he lives in the area. He talks about how cool camping was. Ask him about what they heard. John told me earlier it was footsteps. It scared the hell out of them. Tom claims it was probably wind. Figure he's trying to be cool. Accept the answer. He tries to convince John to go camping again. He refuses. Tom tries with almost everyone else. Even me. He knows I'm not outdoors why. No one wants to go camping with him. We grow apart somehow. He makes me feel uneasy for some reason. Never had that problem before. Figure we're just growing apart. Don't really worry about it. Fast forward maybe a few months. Go to a small house party. See him there, approach him. He grew his hair out. It was typical before, undyed, cut short. It's past his chin now. Like he never cut it again. Dyed dark colors, along with what I assumed was green. Talk to him out of curiosity. He's much more stiff now, like he's on edge. It's like he's forcing himself to be friendly. He starts telling me stories, obviously fake. Copy pasta type shit I've read, everyone's read. He claims that they happened to him. Makes every protagonist himself. Tells the story with the same face. Same tone. Get uncomfortable, there is never a punchline. Close the convo try and walk past him. Yeah, okay, Tom. I gotta go. He's still talking. He stops and death grips my arm. Tries to forcibly pull me back. Emphasis on forcibly. I was talking to you. Shake him off and dart towards another room. What the hell was that? Tom was never, ever violent. I don't even think that's really violence but in terms of his personality it was extremely out of character. I should also note something about the stories. Tom, like John, used to browse 4chan. After camping, he dropped it completely. Never talked about it ever again, or any other of his interests either. It's like he came back a new person who just took in whatever was thrown at him first. By this point I figured he was just going through some odd phase. I ended up dropping all contact with him. As I eventually found out, so did everyone else. Avoid him the rest of the night. Nights winding down, some people went home. Be talking to a friend in a hallway. They're called downstairs. They leave, I decide to wander the hall. Pass an open door. Peer inside. The lights are on. Tom's inside. He's sitting in the host's computer chair. Head back, mouth wide open. He's completely unmoving. Nope the hell away from the doorway. Go downstairs, mildly worried. Make the host come back upstairs with me. He sees Tom. Host gives me a funny look. What the hell is he doing? I have no clue. I found him like this. Host yells, Tom, what the hell are you doing? Tom doesn't jump, simply lowers his head. Closes his mouth. Stands up, walks off past us. I'm starting to realize that I should probably leave out some of the smaller shit. It's all just typical what the hell are you doing type things. I'm just going to skip to when things get really weird. This is probably about a year or so after the parties. Eventually people just stopped inviting him. Everyone always ended up afraid of him. Be me, probably about a year after I last hung out with Tom. Hanging with another friend, not John. We're sitting in her backyard. She's talking about something, I can't remember what anymore. She lives in front of a grassy field, woods lining the back of it. It starts to rain, consider going back inside. Hear a very loud and offsetting noise. Sounds a lot like a cat, 
except maybe three of them all fighting at once. Viciously. We're talking it sounds like a horde of cats were being mangled at one time. Wild screeching with gurgling in between. Varying from super loud to in the distance. She looks at me, I look at her. We probably both look panicked, I know she does. We decide immediately to go back inside. Never hear the noise again until a few months later. For this to make sense, I'm going to have to explain a few things. The first is that Tom knows where my friend lives. He also boasts about walking strangely long distances to gather with people. When I heard the same noise not too long after that, he was in the area. When that same friend of mine told Tom about what happened, he, as I suspected, was nonplussed. Said, there's a bunch of weird wildlife out there. General things like that. The noise continued on most of the night. I should also point out that it sounded like it was constantly moving. Like, running back and forth very quickly. Enough to the point where I had no clue where it could have been or if it was close. It reminded me a lot of wind. And finally, the latest occurrence. This was one of the last times I really associated with him. Be hanging out with closest friend. She lives a few blocks from Tom. Greater than 10 minute walk at most. She wants to hang out with him. Be very against the idea, don't even want to come. Don't want to sit in her house with her family either. Finally persuaded to come. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Her, Tom and I decide to walk to each other. Start walking towards his house. It's nighttime, maybe 10 p.m. I don't even know why we chose so late. Pretty sure it was his idea. Start walking. Get about three minutes in. Hear same noise from before when I was with another friend. My other friends never heard it before. She immediately flips out. Try and calm her down. Hearts racing. The sound is terrifying. Has the same property of I have no idea where the hell it is. Is on my left one second. Right the other. Suddenly very close. Suddenly far away. The noises get more, violent sounding. I suggest it sounds like two animals fighting. Trying desperately to calm her down. She disagrees completely like I'm crazy. She figures there's safety where Tom is. Another person in the group type thing. She doesn't know about the camping trip. Starts jogging down the road towards his house. What the hell? Be the wuss and say we should go home. She disagrees, doesn't want to leave Tom. Have to jog after her. Noise seems closer. So scared she starts full on sprinting. Barely keep up with her. Full on fear running. See Tom in the distance. Damn well near run into him. He is unaffected. Doesn't seem to care about the noise at all. Friend starts talking about it. Suddenly, he tries to act scared. Was not at all before. We three walk back to her house. We hang out in her garage. Chilling when the noise happens again. Look at friend, then at Tom. Tom is blank. He looks at my friend. Copies her exact expression. What the actual hell? I didn't realize how long this was until it was too late. Oh, God I'm so scared. He nods, I also concur. I heard it when I was walking. Tom says. That was word for word what my friend said earlier. Don't say anything about it. Keep pushing to go inside. Her parents are weirded out by him. Won't even let him in the house. Know for a fact that he won't be coming in with us. She keeps disagreeing. We stay in there for at least an hour. Have to watch him copy everything she's doing. And regurgitate her sentences, laughs. Jokes even. She eventually starts to feel uncomfortable. I don't know what exactly spurred it, tried to hang out near the door and disregard out of fear. She leaves, says she's getting cold. He is surprisingly reluctant. Leave him in the garage. He stays in there for God knows how long. 
he was gone in the morning. Never saw him leave. And that's all. There's other small things but I'm too tired. This story is is no way frightening, but is a comforting confirmation of the afterlife. Be in high school. Had friend who had brain tumors, out of school. Haven't seen her in months. Have dream about her. I'm in a mall, and she's on top of a kiosk dressed in white. She looks beautiful, healthy. I give her a hug and talk to her. We say goodbye. Next morning I came to school and found out she had died that night. This is significant because I hadn't spoken to her or given her a hug the last time I saw her alive. I was so glad I had that wonderful chance. This shit is really scaring me now slash x slash. I've only recently found this place and I'd never heard about this stuff prior to coming here. Greater than 5 years ago, freshman year of high school. A few days into spring break, have a fallout with my father because teen angst. Get pissed and call my best bro, ask him if he wants to meet up. He says sure. Tell dad I'm heading out in an angry tone, slamming the door on my way out. I was a really edgy teen, god damn. Begin to run to the park where we said we'd meet. It's about a mile and a half away, but my friend lives right by it. Don't usually go out at night, it's about 9 pm here and it's dark as hell, but not particularly bothered by it. This night is different. There's this feeling in the air that's really unnerving. Hair sticking up on the back of my neck, etc. Getting creeped out by the atmosphere tonight, but decide I'm just being irrational and continue on. Coming up on the intersection that's about halfway from my house to my friend's house after about 5 minutes. Crossing the entrance to this parking lot for an apartment complex, dude is stopping to let me cross before he enters. Some asshole rams into his bumper at like 40 miles per hour, totals the entire back of his car. In complete awe at what had just happened, took me a bit to realize what was going on. End up waiting like 15 minutes for the cops to get here, tell them the details of what I saw. Free to go after that. Continue on the way to the park, get there after another 5 minutes. Make eye contact with my bro. He's just standing there for a second, looks like he's in deep thought, then smiles at me and acknowledges me. Nothing really out of the ordinary I first thought, we had these pseudo-philosophical talks all the time about life and shit, so we thought a lot. Start telling him about the incident with my father. Mostly replies with yeah, or uh huh and other variations of this, doesn't really contribute much, just listens. Ask him what he thinks of the whole situation. Hesitates for a second. Just sort of looks at me with an odd expression and says I don't know. His voice sounds strangely monotone, and without much expression like some kids when they're called to read aloud to the class. We start to walk around the park and shit. He doesn't talk much, so I just start talking about military history. Get to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, kind of hoping to start up an argument because the lack of back and forth is getting kind of boring. He just listens as I rant on about it being completely unnecessary, even blatantly calling it mass murder. Something isn't right with him, he'd normally be screaming at me by now. We get to the entrance of the park after walking around the perimeter of the place for a while. I see something running in the distance, can't tell what it is though from the dark. Do you see that, dude? See what, dude? Same monotone voice, seemingly no interest whatsoever. Come with me, I finally decide. Start running after the thing, which seemed vaguely humanoid. Lose sight of it very shortly, seemed to outrun me incredibly fast. Look around for my bro. He's gone. Not scared at first, just wondering where the hell he went. All of the sudden, this harrowing fucking scream comes out from in front of me. Turn to look in an instant, about maybe 10 or so yards in front of me is the goddamn thing I was chasing, standing at about 6 foot tall. Scared shitless. Almost paralyzed by fear but gather the strength to get the hell out of there. Run past the park entrance. Bro is just standing there. 
Jesus Christ man, it's back there. He just makes the most god awful and creepy smile at me and says oh, is it? Nope the hell out of there. All the way down the road, past his house, back to the intersection and all the way home. Legitimately scared for my life by the time I get to the door. Get inside. Still in complete terror. It goes without saying that the doors were locked the second I stepped inside. Both locks. Blinds closed. Just sort of stood at the farthest end of the room for a long time before eventually getting up and heading to my room. Check my phone. Got voicemail. It's from my bro. He's panicked as hell. He says something attacked him when he got to the park so he got the hell out of there. Almost dropped my phone after hearing this. Unbelievably scared, can barely say anything coherent for almost an hour afterwards. I talked about this to him afterwards, who honestly didn't believe me when I told him, and said that I needed to stop messing around because he got hurt by whatever that damned thing was. I only went by the park a few times after that, and only when I really needed to. Never gathered enough courage to venture out there again, though I doubt I'd find anything like what happened that night if I went back again. Ended up getting the hell out of that place after I graduated from high school, and I haven't really kept up entirely with my best bro recently. But I'll never forget his face, because whatever the hell I saw out there that night was a perfect mimic. Did I hear a skinwalker? Sorry for the boring and anticlimactic story. It was 4 am when I was about to put away dishes, when I heard something say way a a a a it over and over. It was so clear I thought it was in my house, but what struck me is that it sounded like a dog trying to speak. Thankfully I didn't see anything in my house. I noticed my cats were looking the general direction of the sound, but they seemed pretty calm. When the noise stopped, I tried looking in my front yard, from inside and outside, but couldn't find anything, and I didn't see anything when I took a drive around the block. What the hell was it? I live in southern WI and there are no woods in walking distance where I live. Haven't heard of many, if any, paranormal happenings in my area, but it was the strangest thing I've ever heard in my life. So I've never talked about this, but I think you guys will actually understand. I blocked it out for the most of my life, just doing my best not to remember. But here goes. B12. Live in urban Louisiana. Have aunt who owns old plantation house and land in the middle of nowhere swampland Louisiana. Decide to go stay with them for a couple weeks because rents were heading on anniversary vacation shit. Cousin was cool as shit so hanging out with her was the main reason I wanted to stay there. Also thought it would be cool to go explorin' in a woods on some adjacent land. Get there and farmland is barren, already giving off the spooks. Start bullshitting around with cousin, haven't seen her in forever. Decide to go set up a little campsite before it hits nightfall. Not too deep in a woods, can still see house. Night hits and we're just sitting by the fire we made, catching up. All of a sudden all life in the vicinity leaves. At first we had to yell over all the birds and bugs and frogs and shit. Now nothing is making a sound, eerie as shit. Start to smell something, can't really lay a finger on the stench, but it's horrid. I was 10 at the time, so of course I couldn't identify the smell of rotting flesh. Spook.jpg Here rustling in the bushes, we both jump up, and I grab a brick that we made the fire pit with. Some random dude walks out of the bushes, then he freezes and stares at us. Dude looks about in his twenties. So scared, the only thing I can muster up the courage to say is ha ha ha. Dude just stands there for about 30 seconds before he turns around and walks back into the bushes. Nope.jpg Me and cousin book it back to the house, running out of the area of that horrifying smell. Get inside quietly making sure we didn't wake auntie and we just post up in cousin's room. We're both terrified. She tells me to look outside to see if he's there. It took about 10 minutes of coaxing, but I was finally able to look out the window and guess what? No one was there. 
both feeling at least 75% less scared. Start continuing to catch up and reminiscing on memories, you know, family shit. Don't even think twice about the three minutes of absolute terror we felt an hour earlier. Morning comes. Auntie is yelling at us to wake up and come look. Get out of bed, she rushes us to the front door, and what is on the step? A dead dog. How did it die? By the look of it, its head was smashed in by a brick. What kind of brick? The same goddamn type of brick that we made the fire pit out of. Shit 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 shit. Auntie hounds us about it, thinks we did it as a joke, but really? We decide to go pack up everything that we left at the campsite. Secretly just wanna see if a brick is missing. Get to campsite. Or maybe not. Nothing was there. The two tents, all the firewood, ice chest filled with cokes and shit. All gone. But guess what wasn't gone? The circle formation of bricks that we made the fire pit out of. Only one was missing so I was hoping that I just dropped it nearby when that dude left. Nope. That dude or something beat that dog's face in with the brick that I held to defend myself. Welp, shit. Walk back up to the house. Auntie made us dinner, we have no idea where the dog went. Ask about it? She said the dog belonged to some folks down the road. She goes on to talk about how the dog ran off into the woods after some animal, according to the people. Ask my aunt if it's too late for me to go home. She gives me a very quick yes. I mean, after asking, I felt bad for wanting to leave my cousin and aunt in this shit. Night comes again and we are just so ready to go to sleep and pretend today never happened. Wake up with the ungodly urge to pee. Walk past the foyer. Foyer has French doors looking out into the woods. Something caught my eye looking out the doors. Some human looking thing. Slim and white. Almost luminescent in the night. Catch myself staring at it, like we had eye contact. Throw myself under my blankets after sprinting to the bathroom. What feels like forever ticks by. Doorbell rings. Take into note it is probably 2 in the morning. My aunt wakes up all pissy to get the door. It's the folks from down the street. Or might I say the folk. I didn't mention they were like a couple and a kid. Only the man was here. Telling us we need to get the hell out of here, and that his wife and son are dead. Hitches a ride with us into town. Neither him not my aunt say anything. And that was pretty much the end of it. No idea what was happening but it sounds like some Goatman shit. B12-ish. Spend a night with my family. I decide to head off to bed, but first a shower. I never liked showering as a kid, it always made me nervous. I start getting a little freaked out like someone was watching me. My head starts darting back and forth all around the shower. I start shaking. I see the walls and all looks normal but I feel terrified by everything I see. An hour and a half pass of this. My sister finds me shaking and crying in the corner of the tub. I'm not really sure if this was very paranormal, but Ivy never had anything like it before or since. This one happened in January, right after New Year's. Be leaving Illinois for my home in Pot. Was there visiting kinfolk for the holidays? 15-16 hour drive, didn't leave till late, planned on stopping at a motel. About 7 hours in, the urge to sleep gets strong. Pull into a small roadside stop. Go to check in, realize I left my wallet in Illinois. Shit fog damn it. Lady behind the counter says there's an old campground up the road. Says to be careful though, nobody goes up there but she's heard stories. Ask her what kind of stories local legends, you know. Mostly I think it's just meth heads. I agree, since I'm still in the Bible Belt at this point. Middle America has a bad meth issue. Take her instructions, find the campground. It was a pretty warm winter in the area so there's only a little snow on the ground, so the going isn't too bad down the dirt road to get in. Find the check-in office, 
lady wasn't kidding when she said the place didn't get much use. Building's windows are all either gone or boarded up. Decide to park behind it just in case cops. Already feeling sketched out by the situation, I decide to risk getting my concealed carry gun out of the spare tire area and load it, keep it grip out under the back of the driver's seat, since I'm gonna sleep in the back seat. Put my Molite on the seat next to me, grab my blanket and pillow and lay across the back seat, facing the window that looks out into the woods. Leave the windows cracked so I don't die. Fall into fitful sleep, wake up maybe two hours later with a goat awful smell. Smells like a mix of roadkill, vomit, and dookies. Oh sweet Jesus I'm gonna hurl. It's a big clearing and a pretty clear night, so I notice something standing at the far end of the campground. Think it's maybe a tweaker and the smell is coming from him, so grab the malite and shine it out at this guy. Thing suddenly stands the rest of the way up. Probably 8 feet tall, it's too far out for me to make out any real details. Grab pistol and get ready. Can't shit my pants due to sheer, ass clenching terror. Thing makes this horrible half squeal half bark barfing noise that trundles off into a weird laugh, twitches around and then bounds into the woods. What the hell was that shit? Slowly reach for the door handle, right as I do boom. There's a huge thud on my roof. Boom 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 barf k giggly noise. Oh sweet law Jesus please don't let me die tonight. Open the door and rock it out, stumble, fall, roll over. Shine my light at my car and aim the pistol. I can't see shit captain. MFW nothing's on my roof at all. Suddenly the smell is right on top of me, worse than it had been before. Jump up, almost at urine mode engaged. Swing light and gun around, stop dead. This thing is like, three inches from me, leaned down. Ain't got no face. Just a big as ragged rip that might be a grin or a grimace. Makes that horrible gurgling barf bark laugh and I probably shouted or tried to sound badass, but it probably came out pretty girly. Shut eyes tight, pull the trigger until the gun clicks empty. All I can smell is burnt powder. Slowly open my eyes. The thing is gone, there's a lot of spent shells on the ground. Also I peed myself a little. Don't even wait to see where it went, just hear angry screeching from the woods. Jump in my car and speed off, almost crash, hear that noise the whole way until I make it to the highway. Don't stop for anything until I hit the paw border, and only then to change out of piss stained pants and get a candy bar. Never been so scared in my life, honestly thought I was gonna bite the big burrito. I want you to apologize firsthand for the shitty story to come. Go to snow class in primary school. It's some cabins close to in a wood. Anyway, one night we're making a big fire in the middle of the clearing. Time to pack up. See some kid in the distance, on the woods borders. Hey. Doesn't move. Look at his face so I can identify him and tell someone he's being deeply challenged. His face looks strange and I don't recognize him. Then I realize. No eyes only skin where they should be. Completely unmoving, not even idling. Nope the entire trip. There was some other spooky shit that happened back there but I can't remember for shit. Maybe it's the best. This was last weekend. Be me 18. Have two half brothers, dad's side, that live in VT. Close as hell. Decide we should do our yearly camping trip earlier this year, we usually go in August, but I recently got into power lifting and I have a competition in August. Tell me to pack my shit, bring clothes, food, and whatever else. Decide to bring Gloria Soviet war machine that is nugget and away. They come down and stay the night, Thursday, say hi to Padre, etc. Trip to VT, shoot the shit the whole way, catch up, hear multiple looking small today, bra from brothers. Get to house, they grab their shit and we head off into the woods. They've been hunting and camping their whole lives, decide to just follow their lead. We settle in a spot which is, according to them, a two hour hike from the border. We set up camp and decide to have dinner, 
Bro one tries to give me the spookies by talking about bears and shit. Tell him if a bear came to our camp I'd wrestle the bastard down trying to be all cool. Stay up late at night by fire, shoot some rounds at trees, drink, and generally just mess about. About 1.30, copper smell in the air, along with what smells like blood or sweat. Bro 1 tells Bro 2 to get guns from tent, possibly a bear. Slash X Slash has trained me for this day. Gets Vetlana the nugget ready, feed her her 7.62 x 54 r vitamins. Hear rustling in the tree lean, something is hauling ass this way. All standing at the ready, when suddenly. It's a deer. Deer just freezes like whoa, what's with the guns, and wanders off. Ease up, bro 2 tells me I looked like I was about to shit myself. Tell him to bugger off, even though he's right. But that smell is still in the air. Hear something else coming, but much slower. Bro 1 says that it doesn't sound much like a deer or a bear for that matter, it's too slow and not heavy enough. I still have Nugget at my side, just in case. What comes out next I'll never forget. What comes out of the woods is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a hiker. He's got sweatpants on, short sleeve shirt, bald, and a backpack. Scary part? He's got one of those creepy ass smiles. Like ear to ear grinning, eyes wide. He's walking towards us, bro 2 tells me to stop being autistic and shoulder my gun. Don't say it because I'm shitting a brick, but the smell is getting stronger as he's getting closer to our camp. I just started to shake a bit, bro 1 sits back down, bro 2 asks if he wants to have a drink. He comes over to the fire without saying so much as a word. Just stares at whichever bro is speaking with that same goddamn shit eating smile. Both brothers are relaxed and drinking, Smiley is just staring at bro 2 and nodding to questions with that smile on. Shitting myself and slowly unshouldering my gun I ask him why are you hiking this far out at 1 am, and why the hell do you smell like blood? Both brothers groan and tell me to shut up and quit being a cock, but Smiley doesn't move his head from bro 2. Then he starts to slowly turn to me with that goddamn smile, and he unleashes a sound from my nightmares. Ever played Dead Space? Remember those guys on the walls that just screamed and threw shit at you? That's the damn sound he's making, mouth open way too wide to be human, complete with the double voice. I shit myself and fumble with my gun, brothers 1 and 2 are grabbing theirs. He's screaming and standing up, then he started to do some twitchy walk towards me. He's still screaming, I aim, and fire off around into his stomach area out of fear. Unfazed. Bro 1 grabbed his shotgun and fired one into his side, point blank. He was calm doing it too, until Smiley turned to him and grabbed his head in both hands. Bro 2 grabbed the axe we brought for firewood, I'm in tears trying to work the bolt and not watch my brother die. Mood 3k character allowed PLS. Bro 2 runs over with the axe, slams it into Smiley's right arm. Arm falls off. I'm no medical expert but that should be taken more than one swing to do. Swings again at the other arm which also falls off. Smiley turns and starts screaming towards bro 2. Run over to bro 1 who is now unconscious. Get Smiley's lost hands off of his face, when I notice the stumps where the axe cut. Maggots everywhere. I just stare for a second and then puke my guts out. Bro 2 is now hacking at Smiley, who is still screaming, and bashing his head with the axe. I look over and there is nothing in Smiley's fucking head but black puss and maggots. At this point I also realize that anything above Smiley's mouth does not exist. He's just a mouth. He keeps going and then finally, he stops screaming, and falls over. We all stop and stare at what the hell we just saw. Then he stands back up. And get his goddamn arms. We are just crying at this point because we are staring at the goddamn devil. He puts his head back together too, and then stops. And stares back at us. Then the screaming started again, but this time it was much more sinister, plus that smile was gone. 
Now he's pissed. We took off as fast as possible to the car. Mind you the car was 30 minute walk away. We just sprinted through the woods as fast as possible and hopped in. Drove to dad slash my house in New Jersey that night, fuck Vermont with that thing out there. Stay there and don't leave the house until Tuesday. Bro 1 went to stay down south with his friend from college, bro 2 with our grandma in Florida. I'm staying in New Jersey with dad and mom, plus two dogs. Currently shitting a brick because at the gym this morning what did I find in my locker? A spent casing covered in black shit. B10-13. to 13. Family vacation to Old Town CA. It's an old settlement from like 1830 or something. Walk around. Sightsee. Go to the old theater room where they used to put on plays. Take pictures. Get back home. Looks at pictures. Orbs all over the place. Spooky. I only have fairies slash ghosts slash psychic stories, but I will unload. One my house is haunted by multitudes of spirits. The most common one is a black cat that everyone asks if we have. It's seen in the kitchen and upstairs circling through the rooms. We've had a black cat maybe 15 years ago. It's at the point where if someone's staying overnight, they'll mention they thought they saw a cat, and we, LL respond oh, the black one? Yeah, that's a thing. Two when I was about 9 or 10, my friend and I both saw a man standing outside the second story window of the house wearing a dark capulet and a tall hat staring in the window, he scared us shitless for months. 3 When I was about 13, I had a young nephew visit. While I was on the computer I heard him talking to himself on the other side of my room. Looking over I saw him crouched beside a little blonde girl explaining the picture he was drawing. 4 Before I learned about sage cleansing, there used to be a few very benevolent spirits here. Some of the scarier ones were a large muscular black man, a man who used to chase after the children's spirits, and a hanged man who sometimes swung from the stairwell. 5 There's a spirit of a woman who wears turn-of-the-century Victorian dresses who goes up and down the stairs and lower hallway, she's looking for some lost child of hers. 6 When I was 16 I stayed a friend's cottage and had to sleep alone in the basement at night with no electricity. It was terrifying and I kept getting the feeling I was being watched by an old woman. A few days later I saw my first orb zoom past my plate at the breakfast table. 7 In the kitchen, sandwiched in the space above the fridge and beside a doorway is a vortex of energy. It's not visible, but because I can sense stuff on a regular basis I can tell it's white, and kinda spirals out, almost like a large circular tear. My mother the skeptic once looked into the area and swore she saw, instead of a view of the dining room, a large grassy knoll with a few trees and a bright blue sky. Eight two years ago I was chilling with a roommate late one night discussing the spirit activity in our basement apartment. It was about two in the morning when a large misty cloud shot past my eyes and through my roommate sitting next to me. With my saying anything, she shivered heavily and said did you feel that? 9 A few friends of mine invited me on a ghost hunt in a graveyard one night. In the first half, I saw a glowing figure making his way across the graves about 30 feet in front of me. Just to make sure I was actually seeing it correctly, I stood in place and sure enough the figure continued on through the gravestones before disappearing behind a tree. Later on I had to stop the group and turn them around because a horrible entity had taken up the path we were walking along. They took some convincing, but once I stopped them, I'm not sure if it was the power of suggestion or if they could actually sense it, but they mentioned they felt unwelcome as well. 10 A roommate of mine moved to live in a renovated Victorian home in her teens. The first few months she lived there she had horrible night terrors of this old hack entity that lived in her attic, with a white twisted gruesome face and inhumanly spiteful eyes. She refused to go into the attic and still has flashbacks to those night terrors almost 10 years later. 11 This happened to me as well. Our shower seems to have a weird housing ability for ghost or something. I've sensed everything from friendly visiting spirits to a Native American warrior in it. The worst are those moments when you feel someone watching you though. 
This one time just a few years ago I got in the shower, and started getting that creepy feeling at the base of your neck when you know something's not right. I shampooed up without facing the rear wall where that feeling was centering, trying to convince myself that you can just ignore it, and to be skeptical etc etc. Eventually I had to turn around to wash rinse my hair and almost screamed when I saw the silhouette of a large man pressed into the misty shower wall, complete with glaring expression and one arm raised as if to strike. It was honestly so terrifying, but I manned up and conditioned my hair in 30 seconds before I got the hell out of there. If I wasn't so chicken shit I could have snapped a picture of it for shitty proof, but the image was ingrained in my memory so I drew it out to remember instead. When I was around 10 or 11 years old I used to live about 2 miles or so from my town's movie theater. I would walk there to meet some friends and we would watch one full movie, whichever one we bought a ticket for, and sneak into other movies and watch an hour or so of each. At the end of the day I would walk back alone usually around 6 to 7 pm. It never got to dark it was usually still a little sunny on the way back also the movie theater was in the old part of town. The rebuilt part of town from the 1800s I think. Also other than the movie block that part of town was usually really quiet. Every now and then I'd see a few people walk by, maybe a car or two pass by. It was a real peaceful walk and I enjoyed the tranquility while walking home. Here's the creepy part though, and I never really thought it was creepy or anything until I thought about it now that I'm older. There were many shops in that area of town, kind of like antique stores and and the type of stores you see in old parts of towns that also have like apartments on the top half. Anyways there was a store that sold wedding dresses and prom dress and shit like that. As I would walk towards the store, had to walk past it, I would see an old man dressed in a black suit and he would wear a top hat. Dude kinda looked a lot like Lincoln actually. He would never look at me or anything. I IRC the dude would appear out of nowhere. He would just be there by the store and sit on a bench in front of it staring in the store's windows. I swear it never failed. He would never be there when I walked through there going to the theater. He would just always be there coming back from it. Didn't matter what time I was he would always show up. I would just walk past him wondering why he would always show up there. After walking a few stores past him I would look back and he would be gone. No sound of cars or bus, I would be close enough to where he wouldn't have enough time to walk away before I looked. He would just vanish. So I thought I might share a few things with you, slash x slash. Growing up, I lived in an extremely old farmhouse. I just moved out recently, which is partially why I feel so comfortable typing this up. Lots of stuff happened, and not in a distinct timeline, so I'm just going to end up typing this up in bursts of stories. Forgive me if it's too tame for you, but it's true. Lots of times, you'd hear footsteps, in the second floor, or floorboards creaking. It wasn't that big of a thing, so you eventually learn to ignore it. I remember being tricked frequently, however, by what sounded like running or walking down the stairs, to the point where I'd be looking up to see who would be coming out of the stairway, be it human or animal we have tons of cats, and nothing showed up. The second floor bedroom has a lot of instances I can talk about, actually. For the longest time, my twin would always claim the upstairs bedroom, even though it creeped her out so badly. I would often suggest a change, but she would deny. When I asked her about the type of stuff that would happen, so I could explain it to her, and debunk it, she would either refuse, or tell me very little. Usually, she would just feel as if someone was watching her from the doorway of the room, which was directly above the stairs. I don't know if it's a characteristic of old farmhouses, but tons of them have stairs right outside of the door, so that there's a real danger of tripping and falling if you're not careful. Aside for this, there's a kind of peculiar story she told me, when she lost her glasses one morning. She said the night before, just as she was about to fall asleep, she had heard the latch on my sewing chest rattle, as if someone was playing with it. This freaked her out it didn't sound like the latch was loose and had just fallen. It sounded like it had been opened manually. So she spent a few moments cursing the noise out screw you, you stay over there, and don't come near me. Or something to that regard. 
She eventually fell asleep some time later, but when she woke up, there was something wrong. Her glasses were missing. She said she looked the entire room, the bed where she had slept, in any plausible place where she might have put them. Nowhere to be found. She came over to the barn, completely disoriented and confused, so we, me, my mom, and dad, all told her to go back across to the house, and I went with her to find her glasses. We spent another 20 minutes or so looking. I went downstairs briefly, to see if she had somehow put them there, and she sat down in one of the room's ancient, overstuffed chairs. She apologized for using strong language the night before, when she knew they were only curious about the sewing chest, and asked, very politely, if she could please have her glasses back, because she really needed them to see. That was the moment I apparently chose to come back up, sans glasses. I saw her sitting in the chair, looking despondent, and I sat down in the bed across from her, and spotted something glinting between her feet. Hey, aren't those your classes under the chair? They were. A long time before my father was born, he had had an Aunt Violetta she had been born in the house and, apparently, had also died in it. My sister wasn't the only one with experiences in the room, and that wasn't her only one. I remember indulging in some nightly, smutty reading, and remember getting pinched awake every time I went to fall asleep. I imagine Violetta was chastising me for not being a good Christian girl. In the morning, there was a series of red marks up and down my arms where I had felt the pinches. My sister had also heard someone speaking in the corner of the room, as if someone was holding a conversation, and she could only just hear a burst of it. The room wasn't always so innocuous. There were times that it was really frightening rather than just slightly eerie. A few years ago, come summer, my sister cleaned out the upstairs room so it would be fit for habitation, and began camping out. One morning, I came out from my downstairs bedroom, and found her uncharacteristically drinking coffee downstairs ahead of me. She's generally a much later riser than me, so I asked her what was going on. She said a few hours before she normally woke up, she opened her eyes for seemingly no reason. The cat that had been sleeping in the bed with her sat bolt upright, then sprinted from the room, no stretching, no greeting her good morning, nothing. My sister, understandably wary, got up and went downstairs after the cat. No sooner was she at the foot of the stairs than she had heard a loud, inhuman screech coming from the room she had just vacated. She was shaken, but to make her feel better, I told her it was probably just raccoons. One time in particular, I remember having to sleep with her upstairs. Whenever our relatives come over, we sacrifice the nicest bedroom to them, i.e. the bedroom I usually sleep in, and I think in this particular instance, it was my aunt. Anyway, when I come to sleep upstairs, she always feels a little better. She usually takes the bed next to the dresser, and I take the bed in the corner. Sometime in the middle of the night, I remember half waking to the groaning sound of wooden furniture moving across a wooden floor. The next morning, my sister explained what it was. She said she had woken up to the cat, same one as before, rubbing affectionately on the dresser. Which, suddenly, shuddered a few feet forward. My sister said she had noped, but fallen promptly back asleep. And yet, she still likes sleeping upstairs when she can. Anyone still reading? It feels empty in here. Oops, sorry to abandon you, guys. Aside for these experiences, my mom and dad both conclusively never put rocking chairs on the second floor, as they would start rocking themselves after a while. Anyway, there were other bedrooms upstairs, of course. My older brother and sister moved out, and their rooms became storage rooms. My brother's more than my sister's, actually. She had so much shit in her old room, it was impossible to put anything else in it. It was this old room that had the freakiest stories about it. My dad, whose room that was when he was younger, also hated the room. It was quiet, and if you left the door open, you could see something moving in the attic, 
past the attic door, which faced the room. I've always had strange dreams about this room. The room itself is a foot too short of the actual house plan. I try not to think about it too much. It creeps me out. My brother's old room had a bit of a strange vibe to it, too. After he'd moved out, I took to hanging out in it a bit we'd put a huge old bed in it, and I liked reading up there. At one point, however, I started hearing a tapping, coming from the wall beside the bed. I had been reading, it was a bright sunny day, and yet I still froze, completely chilled. I moved the bed, and found a small grate affixed to the wall, from which the tapping was coming from. I realized, in that instant, that the grate was attached to the attic. I fled the room, never to return, except for Christmas decorations, and I would always leave quickly. Of course, this is all only about my house. I never did get to my barn. This happened a few years back. Be in Aunt's real estate office, helping her pack up things. She was moving to another building. Here steps upstairs. Ask Aunt about it, she says she hears them all the time. Tells me it's probably just squirrels. She leaves the house to go talk to the neighbors or something. I hear steps again. Decide to go upstairs, taking with my trusty baseball bat of course. Clear rooms, see nothing. Feel uneasy and slightly sick, like there's something watching me. Decide my search is over and head back downstairs. Before I reach the top of the staircase hear a loud bang behind me. I jerk around and see that the door to the old office, that was never used, slammed shut. I noped the nope of a thousand nopes, almost falling downstairs. Never went back in the building again. I asked my aunt about the prior owner and apparently it was some chiropractor who and heroed in the upstairs office which they always used for storage. True story. I'll start with one story that continues into another then. First off, both my parents had a history of ghost slash spirit encounters. Again, they weren't seeking anything, they just happened upon them. Covering my parents' encounters before I was born they'd live in various houses. One house had a crying child at night. Both parents could hear it in their room. Checked neighbors, none had children. Etc etc. Move on to different house later, knives and such come up missing. Father's black work gloves come up missing, they search house for them top to bottom, they were quite poor at the state and couldn't afford to buy a new pair, gloves nowhere to be found. Bathroom sink turns on in middle of night, father goes to turn it off and the gloves are in the sink. Knives are never found. Different house, room temperatures change very suddenly. No AC on, again poor financial state, room heated by the summer air becomes chilling one second to the next. Dog goes nuts barking at the ceiling and traveling around the room. Once dog stops barking room returns to normal. This post covers a summary of my parents backstory. Now beginning on a couple of my personal ones. Living with parents in mid upper teens, no longer poor financially, well off now. One hallway connected my room, parents room, bathroom, and spare bedroom. Always left my bedroom door open at night. Hear footsteps in hallway, look up and see middle aged man, 1940s looking suit. He's standing in my doorway looking at me. I just look back at him, he turns and continues walking. Go back to sleep. Happens every night for a few weeks. Mention to parents. Parents hear the footsteps and see him too. We dismiss it as eh we got another one, he's not doing much harm. More general abnormal stuff happens. Stuff on counters move, familiar voices calling our names from the spare bedroom, there was a reason I didn't pick that room for my bedroom, etc etc all the normal weird shit that gets posted on here. Other strange things appear, father described a sort of creature crawling around his room. He described it as a deformed humanoid thing crawling on all fours, black and a foul looking yellow. He closed the door and went to sleep later once it was gone. Not sure how much credit I'd put to that one since I didn't see it myself. Family Bible falls from bookshelf, pick it up it's torn to shreds. 
I know these are short posts with page numbers on the bottom but they help me separate parts. Sleeping again later. Hallway dude hadn't come for weeks. Then I hear the familiar footsteps and expect him to show up in the doorway again. My door was pseudo shut this time though. You know how you just leave a crack in it? Well there's a loud bang on my door and it flies open, but doesn't hit the wall. Another spirit walks the same path the man used to. But this spirit was entirely cloaked in a darkness. The darkness moved like flames flickering from his body. There was no lights and I couldn't distinguish anything else. But the darkness surrounding him was something else. The darkness distinguished itself from the surrounding night. When it turned its head to face me I met its gaze. That was the first and only time I felt pure terror from all these encounters, before and after hand. When I met his gaze I had been standing. Everything around me faded into the shade of darkness that surrounded him, all my memories and thoughts became clouded, everything felt cold to the touch. I was paralyzed from the fear, from a fear so bone-chillingly deep I had never felt before. It was not a fear for my life, but for my existence. After a period of I have no clue how long he broke the gaze with me and continued upon the path the man used to take. After I regained myself and my surroundings I found my way to my bed and attempted to sleep that night. Just posted mean to another thread so I'll just copy and paste it. Stay the night at a friend's house, just smoke in a bit of herb and playing cards, getting late so we decide to sleep. I go downstairs to the guest room to crash. Wake up around 4am for no reason. Just laying there, trying to fall back asleep. Hear really loud bang on the door and the doorknob is turning but it is locked. And then I hear the crying. Sounds like a very young kid crying and banging on the door. I remember just saying to myself, this cannot be happening, pretty much just in denial and completely frozen by fear. Lay for I don't know how long like this then it eventually stops. I leave through the door out of the room to outside instead of the one that had the sounds coming from it ob. So yeah, then I learn a couple days later from my friend that his older brother drowned in the pool when he was quite young. But he never believed me about the story because he's too empirical and shit. Anyhow this is the one incident I have experienced that I cannot explain. What's weird is it's like my mind has made the memory of it seem unreal, when in the moment I was trying to tell my future self that this shit was real and to make sure to remember it. I posted this on slash b slash last night. Used to have lucid dreams. Did it almost every night for two years. One night I have a nightmare. I had no control. Weird being with elongated extremities is chasing me can't see its face for some reason. Longest night of my entire life. After running for 50 or so hours, dream time, it catches me. I can finally see its face. I was expecting some horrible creature slash monster but no. It had my face, a bit distorted, but mine nonetheless. Uses three of its really long claws and presses against my forehead. Claws break the skin keeps going deeper. I can feel its claws in the center of my brain. It grins, a horrifying inhuman grin. Pulls claws out of my skull. There's something shiny caught in its claws. It gapes its jaw open like a snake. Swallows the luminous orb, I can see it sliding down its gullet. Stares at me for a few seconds. Then it speaks. Just two words, but they are words that have haunted me every day since then. I'm coming. It then stabs me through the heart with its claw. And I wake up. I haven't had a dream since then, I spend most of my nights on here, seeing as no benefits come from sleeping for me, hoping I'll survive the next 24 hours. I catch glimpses of him slash it out of the corner of my eye sometimes, I try to convince myself it's just my imagination but what if he's real, and he's out there, watching me. This isn't pasta feel free to look it up, and I know it's a bit sloppily written, feel free to revise my grammar, as long as the core story stays intact. Fifth to sixth grade. Really weird. Would constantly yell at my parents and flip out. Throw stuff all over the place and scream. 
start seeing shadows of people. Would see them out of the corner of my eye, just standing there. Made me jump each time. Started to really freak me out, told my mom. Took me to a ton of different therapists. Each of them gave me yeah okay looks. Got put on anxiety medication. Still saw them just less. Randomly stopped. Stopped taking medication and seeing therapists. No clue why. Pretty sure I was another a month or so ago. Also in early 4th grade I had a quick dream about this green, ghostly hand that reached out and touched the strings on my ceiling fan. It was an awkward, forced movement by the hand and when I woke up a second later I saw the strings swaying back and forth. It's completely random, sometimes I think it was something I made up. When I was a kid, something like 9 to 11 yo, I used to wake up at like 2 to 4 am and see strange things. One of those things was. Wake up 2 to 4 am. Start to feel like something is watching me. Go to big brother's bed, yep. Look at the shelf at the other side of the room. There's some toys on the shelf that I never had, and they're made of shadow, or something like dark clouds, don't know how to explain. They're working, moving. I'm almost crying so I try to sleep. Alright. B11. Birthday party at my house. Previous experience with paranormal in this house. Birthday game, hide and seek in the dark, absolutely no lights. I'm it. Searching house for bundles of sticks, come into dark, wide entryway. See my bastard friend Tyler hiding in the corner. I'm a get yo sorry ass, bitch. Reach out to tag him. Hand goes completely through his body. MFW it's not Tyler. It's not even a person. Nope the hell back to my room, change pants, tell friends I don't want to play anymore. Before. Sometime between 12 to 4 am. Can't sleep not sure why. Never met my grandpa on my mom's side, he died a year or two before I was born. Feel something touching my shoulder, but gentle. Look over to see a man by my bedside, light gray hair, wearing a suit as if he was at some sort of ceremony like a wedding or funeral. No fear at all. Have a conversation with the man that lasts for about 30 minutes. Good night, son he disappears and I go back to sleep. In the morning see my mom go through a box of pictures. Pulls out one and puts it in a frame then sets it on a shelf. The man is the same guy, wearing the same exact clothes. Mom, who is that man? That's your grandpa, you never met him since he died before you were born. One year later. See him again in front of the pantry, same clothes, and all. Single tear rolls down his right cheek. Disappears. Never saw him again after that. This was my first experience, s, with ghosts, or spirits whatever you want to call them. My family is filled with stories the only reason I can think of why that it has affected us is that my mom's first husband and father of two of my half brothers is from aboriginal decent, and their family is absolutely plagued with paranormal ghosts and such, but they're evil. More along the lines of demons. Anyways, whatever goes with my brothers or his family latches onto them and if others are around long enough it seems as if it latches to them too. Depending on how long the other people are around is what decides how active, or evil the haunting is. Just my own research and knowledge I've gained from being around them and such. Alright I guess I'll add my story. This one is all about how my life got pretty twisted and turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute to tell you about it so just sit right there. I was born and raised in West Philadelphia, I used to spend most of my time on the playground chilling out and maxing and relaxing all cool and shooting some b-ball. One day there were some guys who were up to no good that started making trouble in the neighborhood, I got in one little fight and my mom got scared and said you're moving with your aunt and uncle. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said slash x slash and had a pentagram in the mirror. I have recently moved into a new flat in an old much older building than my last place. It's an old converted Victorian era house. I don't get any spooky feelings or anything, 
In fact when I viewed the place I sort of felt like I had to move in. As if I could already tell this is my new home. Anyway, ever since moving in I've been having incredibly vivid dreams almost always featuring these monsters or demons. And woken up on a couple of occasions and seen a dark figure in my room watching over me, it hasn't been scary though. I'll be terrified in this dreams but wake up and seen this tall looming figure and somehow feel relaxed and comforted by it. It's hard to explain. Also a few times around the flat things have been not how I left them, but always in a useful way. Like for example I can't find my keys or headphones and the draw is open with them in. Or I'll get up to close a window and it's already done. I'm not some spook child, I'm 26 years old. And a rational person, like I say I'm not scared just curious. I'll post mine but it's fairly boring. Be me. Be 16 or so. Sitting on couch with friend watching TV. No one else is in the house, we know this for a fact. Hear fridge door opening and clattering of spoons and jars in the kitchen. Stare at each other for a moment, then bolt upstairs and lock ourselves in the bathroom. Eventually work up the nerve to go downstairs. Fridge door left open, several jars out, mayonnaise and mustard and some spoons. No one else was in the house, we know this for a fact. Also, who would leave the fridge door open and perishables out? Greater than 5 years old, Dad Westfall lends himself. Family extremely sad, tons of negativity, depression, etc. Have kitchen with weird dangling glass light fixtures, one on each side of the center island. The night before my dad's birthday, mom is sitting in the kitchen, where he died, praying and crying. Greater than 5 year old me is lying in bed, asleep. Clock changes from 11.59 p.m., 23.59, to 12 a.m., midnight. Wake up to horrible crash coming from the kitchen. Leap from race car bed, run to kitchen. Enter room to see the floor covered in broken glass. My mom is standing in there, with a horrible expression on her ghostly pale face. Both light fixtures fell from the ceiling simultaneously the second it became my father's birthday. Only five years old, realize the significance of this event. Immediately believe in paranormal, still do to this day. Yeah. Be about 17. Can't sleep so go on night walks. Explore the different hoods where I live. Venture into GF at the times neighborhood. Get a weird vibe as I walk in. Walk around the sidewalk trying not to look creepy. Neighborhood is like a giant ass roundabout. Coming back around I get this weird feeling like I'm being followed. No one is behind me. Turn to look at the playground in the development. See house on a small hill. Look at the fence and someone is in their backyard. Thinking, that guy is pretty tall to be over a six fence. He turns to look at me. Walks straight through the fence. Enters a dead sprint towards me. Nope.jpg. Haul ass out of neighborhood. Don't look back for a good mile. Turn around to see a black mass crawling towards me on the sidewalk. It speeds up. Run as fast as possible. Get home locked doors and windows. Never went back into that neighborhood again. Sorry it's taking me a while playing BF3 between stories. Posting about this theater ghost that used to be malicious. Interned there for a while. Got some stories of my own. Be in the side theater yard where they keep all the extra wood and stuff for sets. It's night time and so I need a flashlight to see in front of me. Went to get some wood. Something smacks me in the leg. I think it's some wood cause that stuff is everywhere. Look down with flashlight. Nothing is even near me at all to have hit me. Next one. Be in theater area, painting the set for the next play. All by myself. It's pretty late. Hear footsteps in the seating area. Look around nobody is there. Leave. Next day come back. Tell my boss what happened. We were in the lobby. Tells me to go to seating area where I heard the noise. In seating area now, point to where I heard the noise. Talking about what happened and we hear crash from the lobby. 
Go to lobby a chandelier had fallen and shattered from right above where we had been standing. Last one. Running lights for a show. It's in between scenes. Lights dim so that the stage manager can take props on and off set. Stage manager, lets him Joe, goes on stage and starts changing scenes. Joe goes off stage. Next scene starts. Get a call on my radio, hey why is Joe still on stage? Look on stage and he is still on set, under a table. I tell the girl I don't know, but the audience didn't seem to notice so it was okay. Note, the stage manager, Joe, wore all black. So that he wouldn't be easily seen when changing scenes. Intermission time, Joe gets out from under the table and back off stage. Talk to Joe after performance and ask him what's up. He tells me that he was having a smoke backstage during those scenes. There wasn't any need for him to be on stage, nothing needed to be moved. That wasn't Joe. Not really skinwalkers but still a spooky encounter that I've had in a woods. Be me 14. Friend lives about 2.5 miles down my road. Live in the middle of nowhere. Doesn't seem like that long of a trek. Always walk past this one dirt road. Almost completely covered with foliage. Decide screw it let's check it out. Eerie as hell, feels like we're being watched. Finally make it to the end of the road. Deep as hell in the woods at this point. It's an old rundown log cabin. Spooky as a bitch. Instead of pussing out we go check it out. Porch is lined with baby clothes and shit. Grass is overgrown and constant eerie feelings. Door is open. Inside is nice as hell, like someone just up and left. Smelled like dead animals. Nope out of there. See a basement like door open on the side. We check it out and find a big ass box. Old as hell we just break off the lock. Open it, dust flies out. Contained an old teddy bear, a knife slash dagger, a cloak, and a copper smell. Heard giggling noises. Things rustling all around us. Jet the hell out of there. I just posted this in another thread but thought it might fit here, after reading some of your stories. From the time I was 5 or 6 to when I was 15 or 16 I had an imaginary friend called the Hamas who would walk on ceilings and creep around my backyard. It told me that it wanted me but that I wasn't ready yet, and spoke like what a cat or dog sounds like when it tries to talk and screeched with like 4 human voices in one mixed with a rabbit dying and a fox howling, if that makes any sense. It looked like a person except it was really thin and spindly and nude, and its eyes were sunken and black and it always grinned this wide, staring smile. When it moved it kind of jittered about, kinda like it was seizing, and its head kind of cocked to one side and its shoulders were slumped. I've always been terrified of it, since I was a child. When I started telling people about it, it started to touch my face or shoulder or hair and would wake me up at night for no reason and would scream you betrayed me loud enough for my parents to come downstairs though it would be long gone by the time they got there. I had figured it was just my imagination or that I was schizophrenic or something, until I saw this thread. As far as I know there was no impersonating of other people, but I was young and didn't pay much attention to that, I guess. Does this fit? Has anyone ever experienced anything like this? Not creepy, but just kinda weird. B5. In backyard of my aunt's house. See grandpa on the other side of the yard. I yell grandpa, and run to him. Grandpa leans down and says here take this. Gives me a dollar. Wow I'm rich. Thank grandpa and run back to tell mom. Tell mom that grandpa gave me a dollar. Open hand to show her. The dollar is gone. What? Mom tells me that grandpa is in heaven now. What? Turns out my grandpa had died a few days before this happened. Be a long time ago, back when Milkman still existed. Milkman comes every Sunday in the early morning to deliver the milk. One day everyone forgot and slept in late. Milk is on kitchen table. Everyone said they were asleep and didn't pick up the milk. Mom asks the milkman the next week. Says it was some old man. The one in that painting and points to painting of my grandfather in the living room. 
Mom tells him he died like two weeks ago. Face goes white as a sheet. Milkman never delivers milk to our house again. Living with my mom, house is empty besides her, me, two cats. Our bedtime routine is locking our doors when we go to bed, I sleep with the cats. Have seen freaky shit in house before, previous owners left a real skull in my brother's closet, became my room after he moved out. Drifting off to sleep, hear loud crash from living room. Think, it was the cats. Wake up in morning. Both cats are asleep next to me, door had been locked since I turned in. Mom went to sleep at 9, woke up after I did, said she didn't hear anything. Nothing missing or overturned, all doors and windows are secure. Go to live with dad 6 months later, something starts banging on my bedroom wall at least once a week. Give up. This shit is still happening to me. Sorry for taking a while to post, phone crapped out. Not scary, just weird, and what my father told me happened. Dad was a long haul trucker. Driving for days and such. Wakes up climbs from the sleeper and starts on his way again looks over in passenger seat and sees my grandfather. Grandfather points at the buckle. Dad buckles up for the first time since driving school. Hour later truck jackknifes and the engine winds up in the sleeper berth. His leg gets mangled and paramedics say if it weren't for the seat belt he'd be dead. B12-ish. Sneak out after curfew to play in the woods behind our house. Acting like a boss BC I'm breaking rules. Oh shit heard something. No worries I'm a badass it's probably just an animal. Hear someone whisper but I can't make out what it says. Who's there? Nothing, go back to walking around forgetting that I'm totally fucking lost. Hear voices, more than one person now. Getting creeped out more. Voices get louder until it's like a bunch of people chatting. Piss pants and run, realize I'm lost, voices seem to follow me. Finally make it out with parents shouting my name. Grounded for two weeks, holy shit at least I'm alive. Never went back into that stupid forest. I have one that is kind of weird. Me, small child. Age unknown, too small to remember. Have imaginary friend at my Nana's house, my grandmother. His name is Richard. He's a kind of bigger man, not fat, but hefty, and bald on top. He wears a tweed suit. Only memory of this figure is something I can't explain to you guys, forgive me. It seem as though I'm trying to explain a word that does not exist. Years later Nana tells me that it was my grandfather who passed away before I was born. I saw pics, and he wore a suit like that sometimes. It was one of those fashionable 60s or 70s suits with those long collars. Tweed with a light pink, peach colored undershirt that had this collar. I called him something. And I don't know what this word is and I don't know how it's properly spelled but I called him Richard the Hake, or something like that. My Nana told me it was something that meant spirit. I have no idea what the word I'm thinking of actually is. Sorry that it's generic her her my dead grandpa was my imaginary friend but it's true. Preforming necromantic summoning. Throw grave dirt into the flames. Wind picks up. Cemetery lighting goes out. I keep my cool for sake of group, we had a new coven member. Continue ritual. Everything normal. Choose my infernal name, it was a satanic slash necro cross. Windy as hell again. Newbie freaks and runs away. Lights come back on and wind drops. Freaky as hell, the most real experience I've had summoning the dead. Not terribly interesting, but... Staying at my mom's boyfriend's house. Me and my sister are hanging out in his daughter's room. Watching TV, when I hear something behind me. Turn around, realize it sounds like a wind-up doll. Go to investigate. See that it's coming from a toy box. Freak out. Go to turn it off. It's already off. Go to take out the batteries. There's no batteries in it. I would have been far more terrified if I was alone. I've had a couple paranormal experiences, 
but my mom has had a shitload, and they're more interesting anyways. Around 15 years ago, mom and aunt taking care of their mom, who has terminal cancer. One of the things they do is administer shots on her legs. Eventually grandma dies. Mom, who's legitimately crushed, notices marks on her legs within a week of the passing. Small dots. Exactly where she would give the shots to my grandma. Runs to the phone, calls her sister. You won't believe this. What? Do you have markings on your legs too? We've had some spooky shit happen, but I always liked this story. Pretty uplifting. Let's hear it. Also I don't know if this is relevant, I'm a Florida friend here and we have our own Bigfoot called the Skunk Ape. Not many people get a good look at it cause they usually pass out from the stench. I never had an encounter myself, but most skinwalker stories mention the horrible stench of decay accompanying the goat man. I'm just wondering if maybe they're somehow related? I mean, not many people get a good look cause the smell, and the few who do don't know how to describe it other than similar to Bigfoot in its size. But maybe its form is more like a skinwalker's as in skinnier and taller, just overall larger than a human being. Any other Florida friends who actually encountered skinwalkers or skunk apes? Maybe both even? If like to know more about any similarities between them. From what I've read in this thread, Skinwalkers can be anywhere from Canada and Appalachia to Afghanistan and Australia even. Unless I'm getting confused with another thread on slash x slash. Catching a skinwalker and showing it to the public would probably cause a worldwide nope and a great hunt to exterminate them all. I'm actually thinking of going camping soon. I live in West Yorkshire in the UK and I live close to some woodland, anyone got any tips if I decide to go? Regarding skinwalkers? Shelter. And TV would be nice, or a van. Even a car really. Anything to put something between you and the skinwalker. If you're bringing guns, hollow points. Anything to take chunks out of it. Chances are good you may find a hiker or camper who has had their skin taken, in which case hack and slash. Bring an axe or two, machetes, etc. Melee is very important as you can hack more away from it and that's the key. They're like zombies. I don't know if aiming for the head would help but it certainly wouldn't hurt. Also lights, bring spotlights, flashlights, floodlights, any kind of lights you can. Not to scare the best away but so you can see the damn thing. Dragon's breath might be nice, burn the bastard. Any other forms of fire might be effective as well. Also don't let your campfire burn out. I'd also recommend bringing a small group of friends, around 6 people. Make sure you all know each other in case a skinwalker tries to infiltrate. Also one more good idea, have a password or some other way to easily identify yourselves in case for some stupid reason you get split up and are suspicious that the goat man has assumed sometimes identity. Good luck. Be around 9. Sleep over with friends family. They live by the woods, BTW. Big ass property. That night we decide to sneak out of the house and look for the one ring. 1, 1, 11. Or elves or something. We were talking friends PLS don't judge. Barefoot, blanket capes, butter knives, flashlights. So legit right. So we're out there and actually have no idea where we were because we're deeply mentally challenged. Feels like an eternity, but eventually we start smelling this nosebleed smell. Like, a weird smell that kind of resembles when you get punched in the nose and your nose is about to start bleeding, to put it best. Now we're scared, she's crying, and I'm about to start crying too. All of a sudden, she screams. Startles me, I scream too. She points, I turn around. Something that looked like her mom was standing a good distance away holy shit. It was just watching us. Not moving, bent in some weird feral pose. Starts doing this like, gorilla fist on the ground run thing towards us. Usain bolt the hell out of there, make our way back home eventually. Her mom is livid, why are you out of bed at this hour? Try to sputter out that we just saw her out there, she doesn't believe us. Be me in the marines. 2010 time for my first deployment. 
stuck on a naval ship instead of something exciting like Afghanistan. I hate this boat. One month into deployment. Docs start giving out malaria pills. How the hell am I gonna get malaria in the middle of the ocean? Docs say they're mandatory. Ibeon has to take them. By the way Anon you might have some weird dreams. K, thanks doc. Few days later sleeping in my bunk. 300 other marines also in the room. Bunk beds up to the ceiling and shit. Guy starts screaming in the middle of the night. Get away from me. Get the hell off me. Other guys around him shake screaming bro. Guy is confused, didn't realize he was screaming in his sleep. That's weird. JPG. Week later marines and even some sailors start talking about weird dreams. Guy across the aisle from me starts kicking the wall each night while sleeping. Sounds like he's trying to run in his sleep. Couple days later. It's my turn. JPG. Sleeping when suddenly I'm standing up in the aisle. Look at my bunk and see myself sleeping. Okay WTF is this shit. Watch myself sleeping. Wait, who the hell is that? Someone else is watching me sleep. Suddenly back in bed. Well that fun let's never do that again. Try to sit up. Can't move. Shit I'm still asleep. JPG. Sleep paralysis. See the person that was watching me sleep. Shadow guy wearing a hat in the corner. Screw you pills. Huge waves of adrenaline and euphoria rushing through my body as try to move. Suddenly it's over. Wake up. The hell was that shit? And that's how my first shadow people experience happened. Kept happening occasionally even after they had us take different pills that didn't have the messed up acid dream effect. Even a few times when we went back to the US. And it was always one or three shadow figures. The lone one always sat in the corner with a hat and when it was the other three they always stood in the middle of the room. Every time. Well quite a few years ago I posted about hearing footsteps and whispering in my attic after someone I was close to Joey veered themselves. He did it in an attic, not mine though. Not going into detail, but I remember an anon saying how sad it was. A recent update on the situation. Be me Wednesday before last, 19th. Prepping dinner at about half 11 in the morning. Phone rings. Have had cold calls quite often so I ignore it. Phone rings three more times. Private number. FFS telemarketers. Answer it, the line is slightly static. Look, I'm busy so either start your spiel or take me off your database. A few more seconds, about to hang up. Very quiet voice begins to speak, not like whispering, but like the volume is turned down, ellipses represent short bursts of static. Hey, I'm on my way, can you remind me, shopping after? What? Wait that voice is familiar. Static gets louder. Anonymous help. Tone is different, louder, closer. Same voice. This person cannot possibly be calling me. Panic mode. Name. Embarrassing nickname only he called me when we were alone together. Static increases and phone dies. Shaking so bad I have to abandon my cooking and get my partner to come home from work. A little less freaked out but now I just feel cold and don't know what to think. Ended up coming back onto slash x slash for the first time in years. May as well post some drama. Be me. Hang out in woods with three other friends. They were LARPing whilst I slowly got more and more drunk. Bitter BC I wanted to have a good time and instead I have to spend time with these autistic fellas. Sorta wanna join in but too today bro. Mouthing off whenever someone casts a spell, read that as, throws a beanbag at another LARPer. Finally one of them, let's call him Dave, turns on me saying shit like why are you even here then. In 4 BC I have no other friends. Tell him to screw off anyway. Everyone else screws off after that whilst I stay on my tree branch getting more and more blattered. Starting to doze off. Hear my own voice saying shit like it's a sodding beanbag. Basically what I was yelling at my mates earlier. You were a missed opportunity for caught death you fat shit. 
In my drunken stupor I find this all very funny. Essentially fall off branch laughing. Suddenly smell period. Straight up period stench. Not laughing anymore, think I've landed in dead shit. Yes I have landed in dead shit. Have landed on sticky gummy red shit. Like in Hellboy 2 and the shit the tooth fairies leave behind. More annoyed that I got my pants wrecked that I am scared or nauseated. Hear my voice again. Damn you. Drunken haze clears as I feel a heavy sword attention descend into the clearing. Realize that I am hearing my own goddamn voice. Realize that I am sitting in bloody shit. Have weird brain fart moment when I realize what the actual hell is going on. Book it. Period smell in literally in my brain by now it smells so bad like a literal bloody vagina. Something is above me in the trees. Hear my own voice say in the deepest most guttural way caught death. I go ice cold, my stomach feels like an ice block. End up running for what feels like days. I swear I saw the sun rise and the sun set. I was in so much damn pain. All the while I keep hearing shit like grape yourself beanbag bitch being yelled at me. Shit would have been funny if I hadn't been caught in what felt like a time loop with goddamn Satan himself breathing down my neck. Finally, finally break out of the woods. Fall out of a hedge, down a bank and onto a side road. No one around. Vaguely recognize where I am. It took two hours to walk home and I didn't stop once, I was all torn and bloody from twigs and shit whipping at me and my legs felt like hell but I just kept on walking. When I got home I expected my sister to give me hell for being gone for so long nope turns out it had been four hours since I went out. To know what else happened. Be me in high school. That guy. Social anxiety makes me talk too much. Awkward as hell, constant word diarrhea. Still manage to have a few friends. Go camping with them one weekend. Late evening, go off to gather firewood as friends set up camp. Campsite is on a hill. While gathering wood find a perfect spot to view sunset. Sit and think. Think about my insignificance in the face of nature. What's the point of being so loud all the time? Decide to be more chill. Realize I've been gone for a few hours. Friends are probably worried. Grab some wood and head back. No sense of direction so it takes half an hour, end up walking through a ton of brush. Find friends at camp. Anon, where were you? We were worried. Remember plan to be more chill. Grunt and shrug. Anon, your clothes are all ripped and dirty, and you're covered in scratches. Oh shit, didn't even notice but walking through the brush sort of messed me up. Playing it cool though. Grunt and shrug. They keep asking me questions. I keep playing it cool. Ride home next morning is awkward. Friends must be odd by new cool me. Drop me off at my house and ignore me for weeks. Yesterday I finally manned up and confronted one of them. That feel when your friends ditch you because they think you're a skinwalker. Hell, I've shared this story three times. Bro and his friends hiking in woods. Getting dark. Turn back. Hear shit in bushes, but is wood so no big deal. Getting closer to home. Sound persists. Look around. See nothing. Book it back to house. Sound follows behind them at accelerated pace. We're not gonna make it get in the treehouse, friend's dad is a handyman and made like a room-sized treehouse in their backyard. They nope up the ladder. Sound apparently circled around tree for a while. Brother looks out. Sees nothing. Sound stops. Quite for minutes. Decide to make for the house. No more footsteps. Now, as much as I trust my brother on such matters that's still second person, but this one happened to me. Be in basement floor of building on campus, has classrooms. Also has big industrial doors in and out that have loud latches that echo. Also has a little nook with vending machines, which is why I'm down there. Considering my options. Pair of catches form walk past entrance to nook. Think nothing of it. Get my sugar bar and can of liquid sugar. Walk back down hall. Get to end. 
push door. Loud latch noise echoes down hall. That's when I realize I never heard another door open or close even though there was nobody else in the hallway when I walked out. Okay, so, this was when I was living in the Seattle area, more specifically Renton. This sighting occurred in late August of 2013. I was out on the back patio, smoking a cigarette, and there was light low cloud cover, and it was a very humid, but pleasant, evening. This was probably around 8 or 9 p.m. At this point I'd been living in the area long enough to be very familiar with the near constant commercial air traffic in the area, and having grown up near one of the nation's larger air force bases, Faye Warren in Cheyenne, WY, I was already pretty familiar with all types of aircraft, especially since my grandfather was a naval aviator and had taught me all sorts of stuff about planes. So, as I'm standing there enjoying my Nico treat, I happen to look up and see this orange, pulsing ball of light, low in the clouds and dipping out of cover from time to time. At first I just assumed what I was seeing was a commercial airliner with its landing lights on, but then I noticed how slowly the object was moving. I immediately felt really odd. I don't know how else to describe it other than a weird, ominous feeling, like a knot in my stomach. My mom and grandma had always told me as a kid, if something or someone makes you feel uncomfortable or weird, trust your instincts, so I called inside to my friend, we'll call him Connor for the sake of anonymity. Connor, assuming that I'd found a neat bug for us to look at, of which there are plenty in that part of the country, comes outside and freezes as soon as he looks up. Me, do you see that too? See. Yeah yeah what is it? Me, I'm not sure, man. The object, which appeared to be extremely large and spherical and seemed to be made of panels of glass which were at least semi-translucent, was moving from a generally northeastern direction, towards the south, and it paused very briefly before continuing its slow cruise. Given how close the highway was I couldn't make out any engine sounds or anything in the background noise of the city. My friend and I stared at whatever it was for a good 10 to 15 minutes before it basically just kind of disappeared. I had the impression at the time that it accelerated upwards through the cloud cover. I am absolutely certain that this wasn't any kind of commercial aircraft. My friend agreed with me and also said during the event that he felt weird, and we both admitted later that we were sort of frightened. It was one of those things that you just can't look away from. I've actually posted about this before, but the craft was very bright and very orange. So, 